Good evening, party people, and welcome back to basketball. Sports ball. It's sports ball time. You know, the game where you, it's its sports and it's a ball and, it, and it's orange. And it's, uh, it's uh, I got this basketball from work. I, for, I forgot whether we had it. It's its incredible. Um, it's time for basket beverage. What the, what the heck does that even mean? Um, so it's March. It's madness. It's cocktails. It's March mad drinks. See what we did there? I had an idea. It actually wasn't even my idea. I shouldn't even take credit for that. The community had the idea of March Madness drinks at the beginning of the month. And I was like, yeah, that sounds like a really good idea. How the heck do I act upon that? So literally while I was out at the bar last Friday, I asked a friend of mine who watches the sports ball. And I was like, yo, I'm trying to think of cocktails for March Madness. And he was like, oh my God, I got you. And so we got an idea. So apparently, for those who follow the bracket, I literally never do. This time I did because I needed to be informed. We needed to know what cocktails we were making. We had to have a decision criterion for the alcohol that we were putting into our body. And that decision criterion happens to be, out of all the teams that are playing, out of all the games and whatnot, I believe there's, if I'm doing the math correctly, 64 or 32 teams, I believe. Wait. 16 seats in each quarter. 64 different teams. We couldn't just do 64 different cocktails. I wouldn't have a liver to speak of afterwards. However, there are upsets in the league, a term that I have just become recently familiar with. And an upset, essentially, is one of the shittier teams beating one of the best teams. To give you a quick rundown of my own knowledge of March Madness thus far, there is a bracket. It kind of looks like this. Um, but it's significantly uh, less blue and has significantly more pieces to it. On each part of that bracket, let's take this part of the bracket and this part of the bracket. There are two teams who go up against each other. In the first round, you pit the best against the worst and make your way to the middle. If there are 16 players, if there are 16 different teams in each region, then you pair 16 against one or two against 15, so on and so forth until you get to, what is it, seven against six or seven against eight? Math is, math is difficult, you know? And then you see how that plans out and you just keep going into the bracket until there are two teams left remaining, which is not occurring yet. I believe at the time of this stream, we are at the end of the second round uh, as of my check the other day. And there have been quite a few upsets so far. And those upsets have dynamically determined what cocktails we are going to choose this evening, all inspired by the different teams, their areas and the game basketball itself. So strap in. It's b-ball time. Time to score a three pointer or something. I wore my jersey for this occasion. It's actually Anna's jersey, come to think of it. Who's ready? I didn't even think of that pun, right? Basket beverages? We prefer to call them lower seeds as opposed to shittier teams. This is probably a much, much more correct term to use. This is also mo the most engineering description of how this works. Also, I'm excited for the Furman and Princeton cocktails. I have prepared for all the major upsets. There were a couple times where there was a team of a higher number beating a team of a lower number, but the difference just wasn't great enough for me to really understand the the, the, the splendor there. So if the difference between teen, teen I've did this very, very mathematically. If the difference between teen numbers was greater than or equal to the number five, I believe. I'm double checking my math. Okay, in one case it was three, but it was in the second round, so I, I had to change things up a little bit. Then you were at play for a particular a particular cocktail to be made for you. And so We'll start things off. I don't exactly know what chronological order all the games occurred in. I was just kind of looking at the brackets. So I'm just going to go based off of whatever order I have in my notebook here to keep track of all the teams, what the scores were, this, that, and the other thing, and give a little bit of background for where we go from there. All in the fun and splendor that is basketball. I actually drew, I used a, this is just an orange piece of rubber. Um, I, uh, I drew the black lines on it with Sharpie because I'm an artist, of course. So let's get things started over here. The first, during the first round of bracketeering, I guess what we can call it, it was a couple of different games that were played. Again, what order they were played in is beyond me. I just know they all occurred in the first round. The first one, the first lineup that I have on my list was actually a game that I sat there and I watched. It was actually during, it was a whole cinematic moment. We were at the bar. We were playing pool. On the television, we saw Fairleigh Dickinson University against per Purdue, a 16 seat against a first seat. And we just kind of stood there in like disbelief during the last couple moments as the buddy of mine who gave me the idea of how to determine these um, 
determine these cocktails this evening, who is also an engineer. We sat there and we watched. They even got a video of us getting really excited and being like, wow, this is history. Like, we, this hasn't happened in a few years or whatever. I didn't have a lot of context on that. I was just like, yes, hype. Basketball, sports, this is important. Um, but then I was really happy to find out that apparently the winning team, Fairleigh Dickinson University, in a game of 63 versus 58 versus Purdue University, is based out of Madison, New Jersey. And I'm also a New Jerseyan. And so we'll start things off with whatever we think of when we think of Madison, New Jersey. And I did a little bit of research on that. And from what I can tell, there, it's, it's, it's not that exciting. <laughs> there isn't a lot that happens in Madison, New Jersey. Not from what I can find that seems to uh, point itself to a particular cocktail of choice. However, what we, I was able to find is they, all these teams also have mascots. So in the case where I couldn't find anything inspired by the particular university location, we went for the next best thing. And we went for the mascot. And the mascot of Fairleigh Dickinson University are the Knights. And if you look at the Knights, for Fairleigh Dickinson University, or FDU, as I will now prefer to call them, because that's just a that's just a mouthful, FDU. FDU, FD me. They look kind of look like knights from chess. And so that got me thinking, are there are like chess cocktails out there? I looked it up. I Googled it. There are indeed chess cocktails out there, although really not many of them. But I did find one that was pretty interesting, and it's called Wizard Chest. It's technically based off of Harry Potter. And it's technically a Harry Potter themed cocktail, but you know, wizard chess, it's chess, knights are on a chess board. We are, um, if, if you haven't, if you haven't caught on by now, we're uh, taking a little bit of, um, taking some liberties with the criterions over here to try to reach in for, reach in for straws and stuff. I'm reaching for my recipe over here. Wizard chess is a cocktail that comes from whimsysoul.com and it calls itself a Wizard Chess Whiskey Cherry Negroni. I've been a fan of Negronis these past couple, past couple weeks. It's like one of my favorite drinks to make. It's just, it's simple, you mix it in easy, in simple parts, equal parts, excuse me, and it's just all around a pleasant drink. And the Negroni is kind of like a formula. You can swap out, add in whatever you want to, so long as you're kind of filling the criterion of the vermouth, the Kimpari, and the gin, or some other spirit. You can do pretty much whatever. Um, this one calls itself a Whiskey Cherry Negroni. So you're swapping out your gin with your whiskey you're putting some cherry in there and uh, you've got a couple other things going on as well um but we'll get into that i'm gonna put my basketball over in my uh, over in my fruit basket over here there are fruits in here there are lemons specifically meyer lemons i just wanted to see how that was gonna go this evening and so it's called the wizard chest chest not the ch it's a chest <laughs> it's chest like in like you know doo -doo -doo. logic game and that's where we'll start inspired by fdu F D U. I don't know, I'll put some like things around that. Yeah. Wizard chest. There we go. Cause like the knight, you know, I'm gonna draw a little knight over here. At least I'm gonna try to. There we go. It's a little night chest boot, night night piece. You know what? You know what it is. You reach for the inspiration. I'll reach for the booze. That's a great idea. <laughs> now it's my turn to reach for the booze. So in a chess wizard, wizard chest, we have the following ingredients. We need whiskey. It can be whiskey, scotch, or bourbon. Just just something, just something that could potentially be from Scotland. The the inspiration for this is from Harry Potter, naturally, and also chess. Also, kinda. So it could, it's really whatever. It, it's Scotland. So Hogwarts is apparently in Scotland, according to this website. I'm not much of a Harry Potterer. I just just don't get around very much. We also have sweet vermouth, and we need some sort of cherry liqueur in there, specifically a maraschino in this in this case. I thought we were gonna go for like the cherry vodka or something. Nah. When we say cherry, in this case, we're talking classic cherry. We're talking maraschino. Maraschino? I don't know, but she does. Anyways, and we also we just puts we uh, garnish it very specially. I'll show you how to do it. I promise. I promise. So the first thing that we're gonna need is uh, how do we how do we mix this? I, I don't know how to mix this. I need to shake it in a shaker. That makes sense. I'm gonna take the shaker with the plaid on it, which I will say now going forward because it is beautiful looking. It is a particular shaker, but it is my favorite shaker. I only have two. If I were to reach for one, it would be the other. But this one comes out during special occasions, like like basketball occasions. So what do we start with first? We need to add some ice to our glass, naturally. I'm gonna get that last because I don't have the liberty of putting it in another container first. Um, I guess I could just get a glass for it. It doesn't really matter. 
whiskey, vermouth, and maraschino. So I'm gonna grab some of those things. Um, I don't really know what kind of whiskey to use, to be perfectly honest. None of my whiskeys that I have are from Scotland. That's okay. Um, however, I'm gonna try to think, if, it, if you could use a whiskey, a bourbon, or a scotch, when I think of scotches, I think of things that are a little more smoky, and I also don't have anything really smoky either, although that would be interesting. So I'm just gonna try to think of the most basketball-related, the most basketball Madison, New Jersey equivalent of whiskey bourbon scotch. And the one that I can think of is this shit show who came from New Jersey and mixed his own bourbon whiskey, whatever. So we're gonna use the, with an X house bourbon this time um, because I, I just couldn't reach for anything else. And that's fine. So we're essentially gonna mix each of these, one ounce at a time, equal parts into our cocktail shaker. Now, usually when I make my Negronis, I, I, I mix them up. And technically this is more of a, I think a boulevardier, but again, let's not get into the semantics. Those people are wizards, wizards on the court. You know what, wizard chest? Now that I think, now that I'm thinking about it, the gears are turning. It's really not that off from uh, from basketball, because isn't they like they're like the wizards of Harlem or something? Is that a thing? The something wizards in basketball? That's a thing. I know it's a thing. I know it is. Wizard basketball, wizards of the court. Yeah, I like that. It's all related. This was totally planned. This is not Harry Potter inspired at all. <laughs> so we're gonna mix everything together. Oh, hold up, hold up. I remember. There's another extra step to this. So as I'm reading the instructions, the first thing that we need to do is we need to mix a little bit of heavy cream, sugar, and cherry liqueur together with a whisk until it gets thick. I don't have a whisk, but I do have a bar spoon. I can do that. And then we need to actually, we're actually gonna rim our glass with this. So I'm thick, I'm gonna do that last because I feel like, no, 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 I can't do that last. Think about it. Gotta rim the glass first, then I can put the liquid in the glass. Maybe I shake it first and then I do the thing and then rim it. I never thought about the semantics of the order in which you do this. Like if you have a shaken drink or even a stirred drink, like do you rim the glass before you start building the rest of the cocktail or does it make sense to build the cocktail, like build the cocktail first, shake it up and then layer and then pour. I really have never, I've never thought of the semantics there. It's, there's never been this too many steps in a row. So I, I don't know. I'm gonna take the glass that I have over the side. I'm gonna get myself some of the heavy cream and uh, I need some sugar. Does it say what kind of sugar? No, just a little bit of sugar. Doesn't matter what kind of sugar. I got regular sugar. Sugar's what we got. I think it'd be better. I have a bunch of stuff over here, so. What do you think? Like the I think most drinks you prep the glassware first. Like the glass will keep, but the drink will dilute in the shaker. That's a good point. That's a good point. Let me move some of my bottles over here so I'm not like completely blocking my boom arm so I can get a nice view over here of what, what the heck we're doing. What what even are we doing? I don't even know. Still working on my cinematography skills. I'm getting a little bit better there. So I think, what what could we gonna put in this glass? I think this is gonna, it's an equal parts thing. We put an ice cube in it. So I'm just gonna take whatever glass I have. This is the glass that I'm gonna use. A nice uh, old fashioned glass just about. And I'm gonna take, I need a container with which to mix my cream, sugar, and cherry liqueur together. And then I need another container to put that stuff on top of after it's whipped to be able to rim the top of my glass with only the cream. There's nothing else that goes on there. Let me see if I have an extra plate around here somewhere. I thought I did. I might have, I might have misplaced that to be honest. Oh no, 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 I have a plate. This is great. I have a plate. This is wonderful. A spare plate over here. We'll use this to rim the glass. Naturally. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take heavy cream, sugar, and cherry liqueur, and uh, just put it all together and whip it up a little bit to make a nice like like maraschino cream type thing. I don't have exact amounts here, so uh, it says, oh, it says an ounce of maraschino liqueur or cherry juice for the cream. And a cup of heavy cream, that's a lot of cream. Dude, a lot of cream. We even are we? Be, we're doing our best. That's, that's what we're doing, we're doing our best. I got some heavy cream. I've been putting things in my cooler so it's just easier to get. Heavy cream. That's gonna that's gonna whip, dude, or something. Maybe I don't even know. Let's get our boom angle over here. Gonna make some maraschino maraschino whipped cream type stuff. That's what it's all about. Or at least that's that's what we're saying. At least let's get get in get in there. Get it get all up in there. How are we doing? There we go. That's how we're doing. That's how we're doing. All right. 
Okie dokie. So first we're gonna do, it says add an entire cup of heavy whipping cream. I don't think I'm gonna take things that far. Instead, I'm just gonna kinda add the ounce of maraschino that they say to use, and then I'm just gonna eyeball things from there. It's one cocktail, I think, I think it'll be just fine. At least that's my impression. So let's take our one ounce of maraschino. Pour that into my little thing. I'm just using this tinier glass here as my apparatus for the whisking. Um, I don't think, I, you know, I actually do have a whisk downstairs. And I completely forgot that I needed a whisk for this, so might as well run down and get, I think we have a tiny whisk. If I run downstairs and there's a tiny whisk, then this is all worth it. If not, I'm gonna get a comically large whisk and I'm gonna whisk it in this small container. Either way, it's gonna be totally worth it. I'm gonna leave my slippers up here. I'll be back in the hottest of seconds. Please enjoy Camera Boy the X, brought to you by this basketball in a stein glass. Oh. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Yo, y'all, it's amazing. I found the tiny whisk. Look at it. Here it is. It's a tiny whisk. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. That's a pretty nice Stein glass. Thanks. I bought it at the bar that I was at. It was this bar. Had, this, this Stein glass has history to it. You see, I bought it the night that FDU bitch slapped Purdue, and it was wonderful. Anyway, I found a tiny whisk. Look at this thing. It's so cute. This is gonna be perfect. And um. Now I'm gonna take some heavy whipping cream, which uh, has not been opened yet. I can't wait to figure out what they use this for so I don't wind up wasting it. That's some pretty pretty good trash talk. Oh, <laughs> oh, I got plenty of trash talk in me. I, I do sports, you see? All right, let's just pour some cream in there. We also need some sugar. How much cream exactly? I don't know. Um, hopefully not too much in the glass that we wind up making a mess, it seems. I'll put that away. We also need some sugar. Exactly how much sugar? I'm not exactly sure. So instead, I'm just gonna add some sugar to it. Well, eyeball it. We're gonna eyeball it. Get it? It's a ball joke, I guess. As much as ball jokes can be made about basketballs where it doesn't imply body parts, I suppose. In any case, so we're supposed to whisk this until it gets all nice and thick. We'll see how long that takes. <laughs> see, it's funny because sports have balls. You're right. I do not know what the best way to whip the cream is with a tiny whisk in a tiny little rocks glass. But uh, we're gonna see what happens. If I do this enough, oh, I'm gonna make a mess. Oh my God, I'm totally gonna make a mess. It's okay, that's just what it is. Maybe I have to use my fingers like this. I don't know if this is gonna work. It smells really good though. I do feel it starting to thicken. Oh, actually, I do feel a thickening. I totally feel the thickening. This is great. This is wonderful. So anyways, did anybody make like, does anybody actually watch sports? I'm sure that's a stupid question. <laughs> does anybody actually watch sports? I'm convinced nobody actually watches sports. People definitely watch sports. Dude, look at how that's thickening. Holy crap, it's totally working. That's awesome. So the, the people that do watch sports, do you do like tailgates and stuff like that? I'm not much of a sports person. I say realizing that I'm going to a hockey game tomorrow. So maybe I'm just lying. Maybe I don't even know how sportsy I really am. Because, like, I feel like it's a lot of fun to be able to really get up to go and bout your favorite teams and stuff and go to tailgates and make, like, themed pastries and stuff. Actually, a couple of the cocktails this evening, at least one of the cocktails this evening, I think two specifically, were actually cocktails based that were inspired directly by the teams that won. So, at least the universities or so. I don't really know. More Than Awesome says, he doesn't do the tailgates, but they go to the hockey because hockey is fun as a group experience. Yeah. Yeah, I think I uh, I informed one of my buddies that I'm not much of a sports person, and he's like, oh, but it's like hockey, right? And I was like, yeah, I watched the entirety of Letter Letterkenny. And he was like, oh yeah, you're gonna love hockey. Like, cool, so we're going to a hockey game tomorrow. It'll be great. It's the Flyers in Philadelphia versus the Wild in Minnesota, because we're representing our, not hometown, I'm not from Philadelphia, I'm from New Jersey, actually. But um, 
I identify with the Philadelphia spirit. So this is... This is a nice, like, whipped consistency to it. Take a look at that. Can we see that? I don't even know if we can. I don't know how much more whipped I can do. That's, like, lightly whipped. Okay. And it's also sort of kind of getting all over the bar. I'm going to do one last round of this and see how much thicker I can get it. And then we'll call it quits. Those are the softest of soft peaks. Is that a, is that a good thing? I don't know. Should they be soft? I don't know. It's a single cocktail. Why am I trying so hard? Dainty peaks. Dainty peaks, indeed. Anyway, those are our peaks. I'm going to taste this, because it's got a bit of maraschino liqueur in it. Ooh. Oh, that is so good. Wow, that is an amazing idea. Dude, put liquor in your whipped cream. That's an awesome idea. Holy crap, that tastes awesome. We're going to rim our glass with it. Does this one have an egg whites? Nope. Just heavy cream. A little bit of maraschino liqueur and some sugar in there. And we're actually just rimming the glass with it. Although this is an excellent cream. I want to use this on like brownies or whatever. I don't know. Um, whatever you use this stuff for. Essentially, all I'm going to do is rim the glass for it. You could do that with the ice with the cream left in the container. That's a good idea. I'm trying to find out the best ways to be able to like conserve the ingredients that we use on stream. Because I'm trying not to be wasteful. So now, as you can do with other glasses, just rim it. Just like uh, we're putting some of that maraschino cream on the tip of our glass. Pretty good. Got a little bit of a drip to it, but I think that's pretty good. I'm actually going to try to see if I can preserve that as best as possible. I'll put it in my cooler. It shall remain okay with the rest of the cream. I just got to make some space because I don't have a lot, of, a lot of space for cream in there. We'll make it work. Yeah, we'll make it work. There we go. Put that right there. Anyways, we've now rimmed our glass. What's next? Well, the next thing that we have to do for our wizard's chest cocktail... Oh my god, it's actually kind of sliding off the sides. That's so funny. Um, the next thing we have to do for our wizard chest... Wizards as in... Wizards like... Basketball wizards, of course. Chess as in... Knights. Knights as in... FDU. It's... It's all been planned ahead of time. Now we're just gonna make our cherry negroni by combining equal parts sweet vermouth, which is gonna be freshly snapped because I, uh, I ran out of vermouth the other day and just bought some more. Some maraschino liqueur and the most Madison, New Jersey whiskey that we could think of. And um, that, was, that was my own, so it'll be great. I admit, had some doubts, loving that drip. Also, I keep hearing, wi hearing wizard's chests. Yeah, it's because I, I, I don't know. I did Freudian slips, perhaps? I don't really know. I'm gonna grab myself some ice. I'm gonna do some quick pours here, so. I'm gonna take things a little lightly. One old big cube, I'm gonna crack it the inside of this. I'm working on my cracking skill, or at least I'm trying to. I'm gonna grab one of my bar spoons and try to see if I can crack this properly. Let's see. Has he gotten better at it? Nope, it's still falling on the ground. Okay, that was a big check. Okay, that was a good one. That was a good one. One more? Oh, that was my finger. You know what? That's beautiful. Just like you are. Crack your ice like you crack yourself up. I mean, haha, -ha, funny jokes. So first what we'll do is we'll add, let's see, what's the most expensive ingredient, uh, the most cheapest ingredients in order? I have no idea what's in this bourbon, but I don't, I don't have a lot of faith in myself, so I'm just going to assume this is the cheapest part of it. The recipe calls for whiskey, bourbon, or scotch, and some could say that this is at least two out of the three all at the same time. Not by any American law standards. As we covered a couple of weeks ago, I cannot legally call this bourbon, to my knowledge. I might be able to call it bourbon legally, but to my knowledge, I'm gonna safely say that it's not. We'll say. And he says, cheapest, but that bottle is so pretty. I picked it up at a thrift store for, I'm guessing only $5. I don't think I would have spent more for that. Next, we're gonna add, I don't know how much a bottle of maraschino is, but I feel like it's more expensive than the 20, the half bottle of vermouth that I bought. I don't really know. It's a Carpano Antica. And you know what I actually did? The other day, I read the little pamphlet that comes with the bottle that I can't, cannot seem to open right now. And it says in the inside that the recipe is a closely guarded secret of Fratelli Branca. Like that's the same people that do Fernet. Fernet Branca, Fratelli Branca, the Branca company. I didn't realize that they were both behind uh, Carpano Antica. Like, that's awesome. I actually need to, need to open this so it's fresh. So let me do this. It's an illegal bourbon. Luke's is way more the Antica. Very good to know. Love me some Fernet. Dude, Fernet is great. And apparently, it just keeps getting better. 
Oh, that was a lovely sound. Oh, it's so fresh. My God, I love me a nice fresh vermouth. Ever since I experienced it one time, and I don't think I will ever want to experience it any other way. Fresh, good vermouth. Making sure I get a nice pour out of that. And honestly, because I'm caring so much about my vermouth now, I'm going to take the vintner's path and put a little bit of inert gas in there so I can preserve it more and then put it right back in my fridge so just as it's fresh the day I opened it. Just as fresh as the day that I opened it. Or at least that is the plan. That is the plan. Um, this is a private reserve, 100% green. There's inert gas in here, and it forms a thin layer on top of the liquid to prevent any sort of oxidation that would happen into the wine or the fortified wine and the creams or whatever down below. It's a thing. Inert gas is a very, very, very satisfying. Indeed, the pop was great. Inert gas, like argon and um, other stuff. Nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and argon. The, it's an inert and harmless gas. Which the fact that they put that on the bottle kind of makes me doubt that. I don't really know. We, we don't need to look into that. And next we'll add our Luxardo Moroscano. It's a cherry liqueur. If not for any other reason, then this recipe is saying that it represents the cherry in the Whiskey Cherry Negroni. I mean, at that point, like, you've added whis you've added cherry to a Negroni, which is not usually in there unless you infuse the, like, this, get this, the Campari with it. You're not adding gin so you've already replaced the whiskey in that case too you might as well i mean it's, it's sure you can call it like a whiskey cherry negroni but it's like kind of like a whiskey cherry maraschino like and you, in, in equal parts in the like the negroni formula i suppose i don't know there's many 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 different ways wait would that stop my wine from tasting like vinegar yeah actually yeah no i actually for for uh, for realsies if you get some inert gas like this and you put it into your wine bottles when you close them back up, it will prevent it from oxidizing. I, I don't know if it's super, super good at its job, but for the most part, when I've used this, I'm not a huge wine drinker, but this has helped me prefer, preserve flavor. Not that I'm too much of a sommelier, but that's the idea. And I've still been using this, but this, um, this thing works for a while. Um, it actually does. It'll, I think I've been using the same can for like the past two years and I haven't run out yet. There's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of gas in that container. So it works pretty well. So now that I've added our whiskey, our maraschino and our, the other part of our Negroni, our sweet vermouth, we're going to shake it up and we're going to pour it into here over a large ice cube. And that's, that's, that's what it is. And that's our wizard chest cocktail inspired by sort of sort of sort of sort of kind of uh, basketball but also sort of kind of harry potter but also kind of also basketball it's just the way it be where can you get some inert gas amazon i got mine from amazon should really get myself some affiliate links make some money you know shake that up as opposed to a negroni when i usually i usually stir mine and then i strain it or i just take the lazy bit and i just build it in the glass this is how we do it i'm gonna shake it this time you can see my luxurious arms. This one is shaking, not scared. All right. Let's bring our beautiful cocktail angle back over. I go get myself another big ol' big ol' ice cube. Get a nice. Bring this down a little. Get, get the camera on our angle, you know? From what we uh, from what we want to see. This way. There we go. What a beautiful. What a beautiful, beautiful glass. Now it just needs a beautiful, beautiful big ice cube. I actually completely forgot to make ice since last week. So if I run out of significantly sized um, ices, then I apologize. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I have, do I have some of the circular? I'm gonna use the circular because basketballs are circular. So that makes sense, right? Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Circular ice spheres. <laughs> Oh my god, it is a mess in my freezer right now. Circular ice sphere. There we go. I put an ice sphere in there. Shaken, not stirred. Actually, that does that actually make a difference, or is James Bond just pretentious? So, like, if you shake your drink, there's a couple of things that happens when you you shake your drink, right? You're gonna add more dilution to it because you're breaking up the ice cubes. They have a chance to melt and add dilution to the to the glass in a more unpredictable way than if you were to shake it. Um, and it also imparts because you're thrashing things around in there, it imparts air bubbles. Which, if uh, soda has taught me anything, which is you know that's carbon dioxide, so it's technically a different thing. But if you add air bubbles to a drink, you kind of change the color 
error a little bit, you change up the flavor, maybe ever so slightly. If the air around you is, I guess, very flavorful, then yeah, say shaking can add a little bit more flavor to there. So you'll notice too, like this is significantly more, I mean, this is, this is not a clear drink. It's very, very opaque because of the shaking that we did to it. And I, I choose to believe that is exactly the reason why it is so opaque. It just got a bunch of bubbles in it, you know? A bunch of bubbles. Let me do a quick clean out of this because Maraschino, Maraschino is a very potent flavor. And I want to make sure that, I'll probably use the shaker one more time. I think we've got a, quite a few shaking drinks this evening. Clean as you go. Slow and steady. Wins that race. So they say. Put that back over here. What a beautiful cocktail photo. Indeed, indeed. Check those out in the Discord. No need to feel pressure. In case you feel pressured to take pictures and whatnot, don't you worry. Don't you worry, child. I uh, go back and I get screenshots and whatnot. This is the beauty of having the cocktail angle is that I can go back later and I can just take a screenshot. That's beautiful. But this does make the job easier, which I'm very, very thankful of. So thank you, folks. Shaking drinks are also much colder. That is also a very, very, very accurate observation. So this is our wizard chest. Our, our Excuse me. This is our wizard chest. If you are like me, and you have a chest, you could also consider it the wizard's chest. However, this is not holding of gold, it does not contain a booty or a bounty, uh, it does not contain pectorals either. This is all about the skill of the players on the field. Uh, we're talking about basketball, it's a basketball thing, it's March Mad Drinks, that's what it's all about. And this is in honor of the FDU Knights, the FDU Knights from Madison, New Jersey, who won 63-58 to 58 against Purdue University. They got what was coming to them. They got their Purdue's. Smells really good. Smells like smells like maraschino. That's a uh, that's that's beautiful. It's a very very tasty thing. Mmm. Wow, that is so sweet. So what we have around the rim is we have a maraschino in I guess a maraschino. Uh, whipped cream. We took some heavy cream, whipped it up, added a bit of sugar and some maraschino liqueur, and it is just. It's delightful. It's like it's like that butter creamy flavor, it's like a little bit of maraschino to it. I'm not a big fan of most cakes and stuff because I'm really not a fan of buttercream. And this is not technically buttercream, or maybe it is. I don't really know, but it tastes really really good. And actually, as I'm drinking it, there's a bit of the cream that's on the inside because I just straight up stuck the glass in there. I th thought maybe that was the case. Maybe that's what wizards do. Uh, and it's kind of mixing with the cocktail a little bit. There's a bit of a little stuff collecting on the bottom, but it's tasty. But I'm, that's a great, oh, good photos. Thank you all, thank you all. I'm a very photogenic person, naturally. And uh, these will be used for, I'm trying to think of what I can use those for. They're, they're good for they're good for thumbnails. They're good for, good for a lot of things, actually. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's really tasty. I like the way maraschino tastes. Cause it's like cherry adjacent. It's very much like, it's not like cherry that you'd get from like a Dum Dum Lollipop. It's a different type of cherry, but it's still a really good cherry. Cherry, like, I always describe this as like kind of the more pit of a cherry, like more, more a black cherry. Because I've tried Maraschino before, and you can also buy something called Kirschwasser, which is an eau de vie from cherries as well. And they taste similar to each other. The Luxardo Maraschino, though, is more sweet because it is a liqueur. And the Kirschwasser, on the other hand, is not a liqueur, does not have as much sugar in it. But it's kind of like that, but with more more sugar to it and it's very tasty fun fact purdue who lost to the knights are the boilermakers i know which would have been a too easy cocktail i saw that and i was like i my google search when i was researching the cocktails was reverse boilermaker and be, so a boilermaker to my knowledge is similar to a philadelphia citywide which is a shot of beer in a glass a shot of whiskey in a glass of beer and i didn't like the idea of doing a reverse boilermaker which would be an entire pint of whiskey with a single shot of beer that was this would have been the first cocktail this evening, and it definitely would have been the last. <laughs> At least we'd get to like drink two or three, and then I'd have to I'd have to cut the stream, bring it on the Discord or whatever, <laughs> which uh, would have been too easy. They're good for saying you're live on the server, lol. Otherwise, sometimes I miss it. I'm glad to hear that it serves at least some sort of purpose. Um, isn't their mascot a train too? Their mascot is a boiler. I don't know what a boiler maker is. Come to think of it, I didn't look at their picture, but we can Google that. Is it a train? Is that what it is? A Boilermaker? Purdue? Purdue Boilermaker. Boilermakers. That is a... A... I'm trying to find a picture. 
Mascot? It's a dude with a helmet. Oh, it's a train! It is a train. I'm guessing it's somebody who, like, maybe a train conductor or the person who's putting the railroad ties down. Mascot. It's definitely a dude with a helmet. It is Purdue Pete. Interesting. Why is Purdue called the Boilermakers? This is a mini locomotive known as the Boilermaker Special. Yeah. Anyways, that's that. That's for the, uh, the sports connoisseurs to go research. It is train related, though. In any case, this is a really good. This is a really nice cocktail. I love the way that the sweetness of the maraschino plays well with the base of the sweet vermouth, which is also providing its own sweet kind of spice forward. I say spice forward, not like a pepper. Spice forward like cinnamon. Spice forward like clove. Not specifically those, but a little bit of vanilla in there. And like, I found out the word for that the other day, and I think it's piquant, P-I-Q-U-A-N-T, and I think that's supposed to describe spiciness in terms of like kitchen spices, cabinet spices, although I might just be misquoting that, or I could just be wrong completely. But it's nice. It's got a nice, stable base to it with the sweetness that isn't super overpowering, and the whiskey just kind of floats on there. I'm not getting too much of the whiskey components. I don't think there's a lot of rye in this, in this whiskey blend. I think it's probably... I don't know, I'm not even gonna bother guessing. I don't know what's in that container, I will be perfectly honest. And I know it is either whiskey or bourbon, but not in the legal setting. But it's nice. Oh, I will say, actually, those little bits of cream that are popping off, it took me as a shock. But, um, kinda nice. They added, they're even more sweet. They added even more of a sweetness that I'm actually kinda glad of. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry I hear Purdue and I think of a prairie oyster strange egg cocktail. Ooh, ooh, Purdue egg, <laughs> prairie, prairie oyster. Yeah, no, that's a thing. I think they did a prairie oyster on. I, there's a there's a how to drink video out there that does the prairie oyster. And I think it's, it was supposed to be like based off of Cowboy Bebop, I think. Which I, I did watch both iterations of, of that anime. And it's, it's good. I like it. I put my sugar away. I need that right now. Do a little bit more cleanup and stuff. So that was... Wizard chess, not wizard chest. I'm gonna continue correcting myself lest I get corrected once again. He's my big old goblet over here. That's good. That is a really, really good cocktail. This is a little more on the sweeter side. It's not as spirit forward, although there is all spirit in there. And I'd say it tastes, it doesn't really taste like a Negroni. It doesn't really taste like a Boulevardier. You don't have your Campari in there. You don't have well, you don't have your Campari in there. There's nothing really bitter about this, except for, like, the, the, the slightest dryness, which isn't really bitterness from the sweet vermouth, but really that's... And then the, the maraschino, too, but that's not really prevalent at all. There is there's the other cream in there that might be just kind of completely negating all that other dryness that you would be getting. This is wonderful, and it's on the sweeter side. This is probably the sweetest Negroni that I've ever had, and I'm liking it. It's very tasty. I hear Purdue, says Annie, and I think of how I almost went there for college. Imagine how different life would have been, life would have been if you would have gone there. I don't think we would have ever met. Would it, would it, we would have never crossed paths. I considered for a moment going to Rutgers, but never Purdue. When I think of when I think of Purdue, I think of that dog food company. So when I saw Purdue University or Purdue any of this other stuff, I was like, dogs? And now this mascot is telling me trains. I don't I don't get it. I really don't get it. The drink sounds lovely. I really want one. You can make one yourself if you buy this big old bottle of maraschino liqueur, make your own bourbon, and get some sweet vermouth. This is not a very low budget cocktail. Also, I just noticed my um, I got the I started using my other gaming chair uh, because my back was hurting from the other one, and I keep forgetting that it blocks the view of the camera. So I'm sorry about that. I put that thing on its side so it doesn't block the view. I forgot about it. That's okay. That's why we have the second angle. It's our backup. In any case, we have to make our way down the bracket. As the round, the first game, at least the one that I watched of the season, came to a close, we were at a place called Craft Hall. We were drinking our beers. We were playing our pool. And we moved on with our lives. And my mind started thinking, my goodness, I have to start planning for cocktail stream. What comes next? And luckily, the boys who play basketball and those who watch gave me some pretty good ideas of where to go next. So the next cocktail is inspired by the upset that occurred between Penn State and Texas A&M. I don't know what the A&M stands for, but for the score of 60, 76 to 59, a 10 seat Penn State versus a seven seat Texas A&M won. And that's my, that's my, that's my, that's how it is. 
So that's what we'll move on to the, the next upset of the season. At least, again, I don't remember whether these were chronological or not. They're, they're definitely not chronological. I don't really know. Sports are anomaly to me. Allow me to take a little bit of a cleanup time. Put my bourbon away, put my Luxardo away. Move on to the next cocktail. I really like this. This is not at all what I think of when I think of Negroni. Mostly because it doesn't really follow like the Negroni formula of like something bitter, something vermouthy, something kind of fortified y, and then like some sort of base spirit. I know there's a more official like Negroni formula, but I'm not an expert on that, so I'm not even gonna pretend to try. I care not for sports, says Annie, but bracket drama is fun. I love knowing the seeds and seeing how things play out. Yeah, that was actually kind of entertaining, a piece of it, because when I checked the one night, the second round hadn't been decided yet, so I was like, well, let's see, I kind of want to do a cocktail for that university, and I kind of want to do it for that for that team, because I like their mascot, um, but I did not get to decide. I didn't place bets on any of this, but if anybody's going to get to the end, I, I don't know, I'll just say Princeton. And just and I just like I don't know I'll just I'll just accept the controversialness of that and I will and I will move on. So the next cocktail that we have is inspired by the win from Penn State against Texas A&M. The Penn State, the Nittany Lions from University Park, won the game. So the next cocktail that we have planned, I need to turn to the right page. It's actually called the Nittany Lion. It is a drink that was made as a, a as a um, as a kind of in, um, an ode. To the team it's got a nice blue coloring to it uses blue raspberry vodka or blue raspberry moonshine as i have and uh it's gonna it's gonna be good it's gonna be good this cocktail the nittany lion actually found on pinterest and or facebook and it came from windridge farm in dallas town pennsylvania so kind of close to home close by i'll update my board we'll move on to the next one and he says you should do a TikTok with the negroni sound that was trend that was a uh, trending a while ago oh like the is the negroni spagliato it's a negroni with with prosecco in it it's, i've had i had my prosecco the other day um i used it in whatever whatever cocktail it was i don't remember oh it was in the black the black velvet with the guinness i was not a fan i don't really like i, I don't know I, I so far haven't found a prosecco that i really really enjoy and i don't really know what it is about it I have to make sure I don't erase any of my decals on the board. Most, a lot of this, a lot of this stuff, it just doesn't get erased. It makes it easier on me. Although if I needed to, I could always redraw it. I actually changed the way that I draw things. It takes me significantly less time now, so I can focus on like making ingredients and stuff. I made three syrups last night. Three completely different types of syrups in less than an hour. It was so easy for all these cocktails. I was so proud. I was so proud of that. Because usually it would take me forever. Um, what was the cocktail? It's called the Nittany Lion. For Penn State. Penn State. Who was the winner? The Nittany Lions. Is it the Lions or the Lions? I think it's just a lion. Roar! I want to draw a lion. There's its little little thing there, its eyes, little nose, little thing. Little puppy tail, legs. Four legs there. Not five, I guarantee it. It's cute, damn it. It's a cute lion. Nittany lions, I did a little research. I don't exactly know what a nittany lion is, but I believe it's a species that's native to, I think, Pennsylvania. I think it's a type of mountain lion that lives up in the, uh, I guess, the Appalachian Mountains or somewhere over in the Lehigh Valley. I'm not so sure. Sounds cool, though. Blue raspberry moonshine, you say, or rasenberry, says Lil Wave. I don't know, man. I don't know. Let's let's take a look. See, what do I have in my little my little uh, bar of holding down here? Oh my god, <laughs> it's a old smoky moonshine, specifically sour rasenberry, which was a wonderful gift from a wonderful viewer and an even more wonderful friend. This wouldn't happen without your contribution. Thank you. I thank you for that. Hey, see, see, we know it's up here. And I've always, I've, I've literally been trying to find a use for this thing on the cocktail stream. At one point, I was this close to just doing a blue raspberry cocktail stream by just like taking drinks and just throwing like the blue stuff in it. But I didn't think that would be a good use of it. It just felt very, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it just, everything would taste the same. It all tastes like blue raspberry. So how do we make, oh, it's the Nittany line. Excuse me. There can only be one. And this one is the one. How do we make a Nittany Lion? Well, I'm, to be fair, I'm really glad that you asked. A Nittany Lion is made with the blue raspberry vodka, some blue raspberry simple syrup, 
I'm gonna get into that for a second. Fresh squeezed lemon juice, and some splashes of citrus soda, and Windridge Farm raspberry cider. I was not able to get raspberry cider specifically. Way too short notice. I wasn't about to drive all the way over to Dallas Town to go pick some up, so I got something equivalent. I got some, uh, I wanted to see how it would do. I bought me some. This is raspberry rose gut healthy prebiotic soda. We're gonna see how that pans out for us. It's, um, it's cultured. It's cultured, unlike me, I guess. We also, the, the, uh, the, the recipe also describes house-infused blue raspberry vodka and syrup. A blue raspberry isn't a thing. It's an artificial flavor. Like, blue raspberries, to my knowledge, do not exist out in nature. So how you infuse blue raspberry vodka or syrup is beyond me. My guess is that they took, like, blue raspberry candy and, like, stuck it in vodka and spun it around a little bit. That's my guess. And if that's the case, I guess I could have done that. Anna loves blue raspberry. I probably could have gotten some of those blue raspberry dum-dums. Pretty bit a good idea. But then I wouldn't have been able to use this. So I went for that instead. So in place of the blue raspberry simple syrup, I already got something pretty blue raspberry-y. I'm just gonna use some simple syrup that was freshly made last night because I'm trying to get on top of that whole freshness train. This is gonna be so sour, my goodness. Gut healthy probiotic soda is a phrase. It tastes like blue. We're putting a little bit of pink in it. I don't think this thing has any color to it, so we'll see. I'm actually, I, I picked this up specifically because I was just really curious about it. It had, there was a lot of things on this can. We'll go into it when we, we'll go into it when we use it. I, actually, there's a couple of different ingredients. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of take a look and see what all these things taste like and then combine them together. Cause some of these I just haven't used before aside from the simple syrup, which just tastes like simple syrup. But I have, um, and I also have Meyer lemons. Meyer lemon juice. So they're all like distinctly different things that I, I don't know what any of these taste like. So I think this would be a good opportunity to make sure we taste what goes into the drink so that we kind of know where everything's coming from. What was the other piece? Simple syrup? Let me grab that simple syrup. That is, that's honey syrup. Rich simple syrup. Um, I th this one didn't call for a rich simple syrup, but I made a rich simple syrup anyways. That's just what we went for. So we'll put things together. The instructions here are to... It literally doesn't say. It does not say whether you're supposed to shake this or or stir it or otherwise. I don't really know. It's a vodka drink. I feel like I don't want to shake something with soda and it's probably carbonated. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna build this. I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take take the the the, the easy way out. I'm just gonna build this, um, stir it with some ice. I like that idea. Yeah, I'll build that and I'll put a couple ice cubes in it. I think that's a good idea. I don't usually build drinks like that anyways. So that's what we'll do. Rich simple syrup? Sounds kind of complex. No, silly. It's not complex. It's simple. Duh. It's two parts of your sugar to one part of your water as opposed to one part to one part. I measured by volume this time, which essentially means for every gram of sugar, you utilize a single milliliter of water. So for this particular infusion here was, I think I put things in half. So it was 100 grams of sugar to 50 milliliters of water. It took a little bit to get things going because I did it in a saucepan, but I was able to heat things up pretty quickly. There's a bit of of, uh, residual sugar at the bottom because there probably wasn't enough water in there to keep all that sugar in solution so it precipitates out because did you know water and other solvents can only hold so much precipitate before it falls out of solution like sugar in water and syrup science in any case so we need we need more I want to try what all these things are. We're just going to, I'm the only, the way that I'm going to make this Nittany Lion is I'm just going to put it in a glass, put some ice cubes in it, make it simple and go for it. But being that we have three different ingredients here that I've never really tried before, I kind of want to explore them. And I'm going to see what they taste like first to see if we can kind of get a feel for what the drink is going to be at the end and whether, whether it was, whether the juice was worth the squeeze in the case of the lemon juice, at least. The cocktail recipe calls specifically for um, I actually don't have any proportions here, um, so we're going to make it on the spot. I think, actually, we'll, we'll determine it after we taste things, because if we can get an idea of what everything tastes like, then we can kind of determine what kind of, from my particular taste, how I want to mix this together to make a drink that is palatable to me. I know I'm not very into the sour stuff, so um, we'll just kind of see what happens. That Meyer lemon is looking gorgeous. Look at this thing! It's beautiful. And I was I was juicing some of it earlier because uh, we're making I'm making some London broil tomorrow and marinating it for 24 hours. Oh, it's gonna be so good. And the lemon juice I used was Meyer lemon juice. It smells so good. Oh my god, it's like a sweeter it's like a sweeter lemon, and it's so fragrant too. Oh my goodness. We'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. 
So what I'll do, I'll take a couple of cordial glasses. I really need, I really need more of these little cordial glasses. They are so freaking cute. And I'll put a couple of them in front of us and we'll take a look and see what all of these are going like. And I guess I have the cocktail angle. So let me see about, we've got, we've got like a game here. We got a whole lineup. So I want to see what the best way to like frame that lineup is. That's kind of what's happening here. Let me, I'm going to play around with that for a second. So bear with me. We have, let's see a little lineup here. I have, I can put one glass here. One glass here, one glass here. Yeah, all right, all right. Put that a little, little there, a little bit there. I'll take the simple syrup and I'll put it way, way over there. There we go. That's what we're tasting. I'll put the lemon in there. Why not? We'll put the lemon right up on top. It definitely kind of looks like an egg. <laughs> oh my god. So that's what we're gonna try. We're gonna try the Meyer lemon juice as opposed to regular lemon juice. We're gonna try some of this prebiotic soda, this raspberry rose, and then we'll work our way up to the alcohol, which is sour resin berry. Sour resin. It's gonna be really sour. At least that's how uh, that's how that's how I plan it to be. So I'm gonna take our Meyer lemon. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a, a roly-poly over here. The roly-polying is going to swish, squish some of the cells on the inside and release more of the juices. We are gonna get a lot more juice for our squeeze because we did this whole thing. At least that is that is the intention. And I'm gonna take my, oopsie, I'm not gonna knock over glasses or the muddler that just fell into my pint glass. I'm gonna do a little cut of this lemon. I'm just gonna do that off screen. That's a, uh, cutting lemons is not super exciting, but uh, it's cool nonetheless. Here's my proof, I did it. I cut the lemon. And now I'll juice it. Juice it inside. See how this goes. I'm trying to, I don't, uh, maybe I'll get a full cordial glass full of it. The recipe I think only calls for, there were some proportions given. And it says, I think a splash of, splashes of citrus soda and Windridge Farm. So I don't know what the, I don't know what the exact proportions are of the Meyer, of the lemon juice that goes in there. I also say too, these Meyer lemons are so much easier to squeeze. There's not a lot of um, thickness to the peel on here. So, put that down for just a moment while I juice the other one. I was this close to doing some actual movement towards composting this week. So maybe I'll get it next week at some point. Oh, baby. I will say, these Meyer lemons smell absolutely gorgeous. They, they really do. Oh, was that the right button? I don't think it was. There we go. These smell amazing. They are like lemon zest on steroids i would say that for the most part lemons like regular lemon squeezing lemon oils to me kind of taste kind of smell the way that lemon pledge smells but meyer lemons on the other hand have a different different tone it's almost orangey but not like orange like orange grove orange oil almost like the way that an oil that or freshly squeezed orange juice tastes is similar to the way that Meyer lemon oils smell with a little bit of lime, oh, le lemon in there, not lime. There actually, there is a little bit of like a, a liminess to it in the sense that like, it's kind of, I don't really know how else to describe it. It's kind of like the cross between orange, lemon, and lime scents together. Not really getting too much grapefruit there. But this is Meyer lemon juice, as opposed to usually using just regular lemon juice, this has a, a more opaque, more orangey hue to it. I guess, I mean, the lemon itself is more orangey. It's got a, it's very, very cool looking. It smells nice, not as astringent, not super sour, not very acidic. How does it taste though? Yeah. It's a more mellow a sour. It's still sour. It's still sour like a lemon, but it doesn't pack the same punch as a lemon does. It's almost like, it's, it's kind of like orange juice. It's got like the, the, the warmness and citrusy characteristics of orange juice, but if you added a bit of lemon juice to mostly orange juice, it kind of tastes almost like 75% orange juice and like 25% lemon juice because some of the lemon juices I've had are very, very potent. So that's kind of what our Meyer, Meyer lemon juice tastes like. It's a little more sweet than lemon juice, but I feel like would function in the cocktail same, like similarly to uh, a lemon would. So at least for me, I would usually dial back a little bit more on lemon juice because I'm not very into lemony stuff. It kind of makes me react. I have the esophageal stuff going on, so I don't usually go that route. 
So I'm gonna see what the other stuff uh, tastes like to try to see if we can determine what ratio would work best for me and how if this information serves you to be able to best cater this cocktail to you if you wanted to make it for yourself. So the next ingredient that we have over here is going to be our prebiotic raspberry rose soda. The recipe that I found called for raspberry cider. I was not able to find raspberry cider specifically, certainly not from Woodbridge Farms. I would not have been able to source it that fast, but I was able to find raspberry rose prebiotic soda and I was curious about that. Yo, Dom, what's good, my friend? Welcome to the bar. We're tasting stuff. Not no cocktail yet. We gotta figure out the cocktail first. So this prebiotic soda, as I'll share with everybody else, I don't know if anybody could see the see the can, says on the back, pop, cultured, facts. No one wants a basic drink, so make every hour happy with this bubbly, better for you, prebiotic soda that keeps your gut happy and gives your bod a boost. I thought that said bad. Give your bod a boost. Downright delicious with five grams of sugar or less, or less, you're unsure of yourself. These bubbles will, with benefits, will be your new BFF. At Drink Poppy. Poppy. Raspberry Rose. Prebiotics for a healthy gut infused with apple cider vinegar. Oh my goodness. Oh. Alrighty, that's where the prebiotic is coming from. Immunity sidekick. Okay, this side of the can says five grams of sugar or less, and this side of the can says four grams of sugar. I don't know, I think you gotta be gut happy, be gut healthy. Prebiotic soda contains 5% juice. That's interesting. Too many words on a can. And like, it's it's like white on pink, so it's kinda, it's kinda hard to read too. Let's give that can a pop. Nice. Oh my goodness, that smells effervescent. Oh, it's got a pinkness to it. Very cute. <laughs> Using that makes this a healthy drink, right? Yes. Who does that to soda? Apple cider vinegar in soda. I am unsure. So it's got a nice pinkish hue to it. it smells. It smells like raspberries. Honestly, it doesn't really smell like apple cider vinegar. I have apple cider vinegar downstairs, and my mother encourages it, encourages me to use it for my acne and my body health and my probiotic gut and stuff. One day, one day, mother, I will get there. But for now, yeah. however, I will say, be, being that I've actually drank, I've actually put through my lips and mouth and teeth apple cider vinegar before, I feel like this is going to be rather approachable for me. That's dry. Very, very dry. It tastes very, tastes very artificial to me. And and I know what I say when I mean that. This, I believe, has an artificial sweetener in it. I think it's either stevia, acesulfame, sucralose, or um, the other one. I see in here at the very bottom, stevia. Yeah, I knew it. Okay. So for some reason, I'm really good at piecing out artificial sweeteners in sodas and stuff like that for to some people diet soda does not taste different than regular soda but to me it does i find that those sort of sweeteners have a an almost like licorice tang to it i don't know really any other, other way to describe it it's it, it tastes i equivalent 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 just like the artificial sweetener stuff which i don't use artificial as a means to say that it's bad for you or anything it passes through your body it's it just doesn't provide the calories which is fine it just provides the flavor and they're really really sweet compared to like normal sugars like sucrose or glucose but they always have some sort of like a licorice taste to me and i'm getting that off the of soda it's not entirely unpleasant it's just um just kind of different got that rose gold look to it indeed my mom does that to dom because it's good for your acne there son i can't uh, can't do the artificial stuff it's kind of makes you feel sick yeah that's why i'm not a big fan of diet soda that'll probably kick me in the butt one day but like i can get past it a little bit some gums too do the same thing but aside from that it is raspberry -y. actually kind of like it it reminds me it reminds me of like this ice pop that i had when i was younger and i, I to, to me it just tastes Pink. He's pink to me. Almost kind of like a pink Kool-Aid or some sort of ice pop that I've had. It is definitely raspberry. And I guess there's another component to it too. It says raspberry rose, but I don't know what makes it very rosy. There might actually be some like rose extract or something in there. Sparkling water, organic apple cider vinegar, ACV, organic agave, inulin, inhusen, natural flavors stevia concentrate yeah i don't know there's nothing very rosy with me although it does have a nice rose color to it i like that honestly i wouldn't drink that upon my own accord 
But the fact that it's giving a bubbliness and it's giving a sweetness, I think will interplay with the Meyer lemon a bit more because one is a sour, not super duper sour, but one is a sour and one is a sweet. So I think if I were to do consequently with both of these, I would use more of the soda than I would have the lemon juice, which kind of makes sense. You don't want to add too much lemon juice or else it'll make the whole thing sour and kind of unpleasant. Diet soda leaves my mouth, says Dom. Just feeling wrong after drinking them. Yeah, the aftertaste, I find for the aftertaste of, I think for the most part, diet soda uses, I think, a sesylfame, I think? It's, there's acesulfame, aspartame, sucralose, and stevia, which are all like artificial sweeteners that like I can just like pick out of things. I can't necessarily tell the difference between each one of them, but if there's at least one in there, I can usually taste it. But that's getting past that though. And even still, it's not terrible. It's just noticeable. It's really noticeable for me. So we'll move on to the next ingredient. We have over here our old smoky rasin blue something or other. What do we got this? Sour Raspberry Moonshine, produced and bottled by Old Smokey from Gatlinburg, Gatlin, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Um, I've been told it's sour. It was a gift to me by some uh, by some friends of mine who like the show. So thank you, friends who like the show. You know who you are. I'm gonna give this guy a give this sucker a pop. Although um, I have opened it before, I have tried a little bit of it, but I really haven't used it much. It has a really nice smell to it. Ooh. It smells like somebody melted a blue raspberry ice pop. It's good. It's got a nice blue color to it, too. Excellent. Wow, look at this. Look at this beautiful array of colors we have here. That's beautiful. Wow. I like the way that looks. That's awesome. What a cute little what a cute little display we have here. Oh, it's beautiful. I love it. I love it. I had an apple one last year, says Dom, and that shit was so strong. Dude, was it Old Smoky? Because I think I actually have... I have more Old Smoky down here, don't I? Yeah, I've got the uh, I got the apple pie one as well. I have the apple pie one, and I have the uh, uh, fruit punch, hunch punch. I have hunch punch as well. I got a couple of these things. This stuff's good. This stuff's real good. So now, for our old smoky moonshine over here, it's got a nice blue hue to it. It smells like somebody quite literally melted some like sour raspberry, sour blue raspberry like ice pops. I just I think of ice pops for some reason. Not exactly sure where that's coming from. Just reminiscing. Looking forward to my summers in the sun. Let's sip it on an ice pop. Maybe a Negroni in the hot sun. No shirt on. Bathing suit. Playing basketball or something. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking of. Or something like that. It tastes like... Wow. That is... Wow, it's sour. Yeah. It's very sour. And there's a very, very sour thing there. So, mm, it's not as blue raspberry to me. Blue raspberry to me has like a um, like a certain sweetness to it. This is very, very sour. It's, it's puckery. It is very puckery. It reminds me a lot of, I have some pucker raspberry liqueur down here from De Kuiper. And it kind of reminds me of that same, that same, um, that same sweet sourness that uh, kind of hits. It's nice. Annie says it's really good with lemonade. It's uh, a say Jolly Rancher. I don't know. I, I guess I haven't had a blue Jolly Rancher in a while, but it's not striking me as super Jolly Rancher. Jolly Rancher. Well, I guess I don't really do sour stuff anyways. So if there's like a sour blue raspberry Jolly Rancher out there, this actually makes that actually makes a lot of sense. It feels like a nice shot to have. This would go really down. This is, I think all of these would probably go well. As shots one for one purpose one for another and one for the other if you took a shot of the Meyer lemon um, you like sour stuff and that's what you're doing you're all you're all sour pa Ooh, sour patch kids that's what it reminds me of it tastes to me like the sour part of a sour patch kid that's blue raspberry flavor I've definitely had that flavor before that's what it reminds me of and now I'm getting like um, those sour strips I don't know who does those airheads or something airhead sour strips we have a container of sour blue raspberry candy strips downstairs because Anna loves sour things. We picked that up at the local candy store. That's what it tastes like. I don't know where they are, and Anna's not here for me to ask her. That's what it tastes like. It's nice, although without the sweetness. So that's kind of what I'm going for. It's candy something, oh, for sure. So what I'm getting at is, so this is all going to go into a cocktail called the Nittany Lion, which is inspired by the win of Penn State versus uh, Texas A&M in the first round of March madness we're just making drinks off of it it's, uh, it's different it's basketball it's basketball 
basketball. Don't make a mess of your bar. So the Nittany Lion I found on Pinterest slash Facebook from a place called Windridge Farms. It doesn't provide any sort of ratios, so I thought it'd be fun to kind of figure out what the ratio, what ratio I'd like in my drink because I'm the one who's drinking it and give enough context for everyone else to determine their stuff. The only other ingredient that goes in this is uh, some rich, simple syrup. It's not specifically rich. The cocktail recipe does not call for rich. Rich just means instead of a one-to-one -one ratio by volume of sugar to water, I use a two-to-one ratio. And this is syrupy. Tastes like, um, tastes like candy. Tastes like, um, I'm gonna stick my finger in it again. A little caramelly. Just a teensy bit. Just a bit. Very, very vanilla-y. Very vanilla-y. Kind of, kind of caramelly. I don't like that. So, I don't know, what is, let's see. Let's see what I'm going to do here. I'm trying to think of the best ways to put everything together. Lil Lev says, when working with moonshine, you pour from the heart. I'm going to literally pour out all of my moonshine. I'm actually going to... Nah, just kidding. I'm not gonna take it from my heart. That would be disgusting and very, very, uh, very viscous. Um, I may not, I don't know if blood is more viscous than my two to one simple syrup here, but, uh, if it comes to the heart, it's gotta come from somebody's heart, right? The heart of. The heart of Gatlinburg, Tennessee! That's where it's coming from. Yeah, actually, that kinda looks like it's on the edge of Tennessee, so it's not really the heart of anywhere. It's like, it looks like it's the heart of the longitude of Tennessee from the look of that bottle. So, uh, Let's go for it. Let's make a cocktail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab an old fashioned glass from over here, just a, just a small one. I don't think we're gonna need too much for that. And I'm just gonna kind of put all these ingredients in here. I have literally no idea how much, how many ounces each one of these little cordial glasses hold. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my measuring majigger and I'm gonna take, I definitely gonna add more of the soda. So I'm gonna see how many, how many ounces of this I have in there. It looks like it's about an ounce. I didn't make it up to the one and a half mark on one side of my jigger. That kind of poured a little bit. It's like, I think this entire glass here, this entire cordial glass holds about an ounce of spirit in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab myself some ice cubes. I'll put it in my glass, I'll build over top, and I'll just kind of like adjust my ratio until I find something that I like. Let me go over here, grab a couple of small ice cubes. I'll grab like two or three of them. Three feels like a good number. Threes for three pointers. How many three pointers were made in the game? Let's see. If the score was between the two players, if the score was 76 to 59, how many three pointers were made? I don't know. Somebody else can answer that question. I literally have no idea. So I'll take right now, I'll, I'll measure this in tally marks on the board. We'll do this methodically. Let me grab a little thing. And we've got, let's see, we got blue. Blue, rasp, we have, what is it, lemon, I don't know, we have simple, simp, we have simps as well. Currently I have a single ounce of the raspberry in there, so I'll put a tally mark there, and I'll kind of build it from there and see what happens. So far, I'm sure it kind of tastes like the, uh, it kind of tastes like the soda there. So what I'm going to do is I know I want to take more of the sweetness to the mire, so I'm going to do about half of my cordial glass here, so about a half of a thing. Um, I'm gonna measure this in parts. So because I added half of the Meyer lemon, we're gonna add one tally mark to the raspberry and one tally mark to the lemon. Now each tally represents half ounces, just about, as we, as we continue onwards. Mix that up a little bit. That's got a nice, it's really nice actually. The, the bubbliness from the, from the prebiotic so soda so far goes well with the sourness of the lemon. However, it's still a little too sour for me. So I think what I'll do is in the background, I will add about a half an ounce of simple syrup to try to even that out a little bit for myself. I'll do half an ounce. I feel like I might be adding too much sweetness here, but we still have the moonshine to add. That's going to need a little bit of a stir because that is a viscous, viscous syrup. Ooh, hello there. Y'all want to see this on the second angle? Or this angle here as we're playing around with it. And we'll do the second angle. What we'll do. We'll get it up close and personal. See how things are building. There we go. As this thing wobbles around a little bit. Yeah, let's see. So we've added about a half an ounce of simple. So I add a single a single tally mark to simp. I don't think I can use that term on Twitch. Oh well. I'm using it properly, I'm sure. And I need me a bar spoon. Let's see. So far, Nittany Lion does not accurately represent the correct color. So, 
We'll work on it. We're gonna work on it. Keep it keep it going just a little bit more. I'm gonna add. I'm gonna make sure to add a full ounce of the the raspberry because I want this to take on more of a blue color, and I feel like this might do the trick. Perchance, I honestly didn't know what color the raspberry rose soda was uh, because the can the can was opaque, so I really didn't have a way of knowing exactly what this is gonna be, and I didn't feel like buying two because I wanted to try it authentically. So, um, well, this isn't super blue so far. So for color, probably add some uh, blue curacao out of that if you wanted to, or something else that's blue. The only other thing that I have blue down here would be some uh, butterfly pea flower infused gin. I'm not gonna go that route. So um, I think for the purposes of this, which just imagine it's blue for a moment for the Nittany Lions, um, if my blue raspberry were more blue, and if my prebiotic soda were less pink, we'll see. Pour from the heart, we'll just add blue food coloring. I actually took my food coloring downstairs. I have to run down and get it. Just doesn't feel worth it at this point. So I have added a full ounce of the blue. So right now we are at two parts blue raspberry moonshine to two parts raspberry soda to one part Meyer lemon juice into one part rich simple syrup. And we'll see how this tastes so far. Give it a little stir. Ooh, I like, wow, okay. I really like that now. But I think it needs a little more simple. Or maybe a little more, a little more raspberry soda, perhaps? Like maybe a little more, mm, it's, it's really good. It's really good right now. Let me, let me back up for a second. The sour is not overpowering. The sour lacks the power. Even though it was too sour at first, when I added the moonshine, it's not as sour as it was before. It was actually a little more sweet. I like the way that it is playing right now. It's playing very well on the court. It's dribbling the ball very well. I had to put it in basketball terms. That's good. That's a really that's really good. I actually kind of like the way that that is stirred, that it, uh, that is mixed right now. I would add just a little bit more sweetness, maybe. I kind of want to add more of the prebiotic soda, to be honest. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna add. That's a lot of soda in there, though. Yeah, I go for it. A little bit more. Let's do another half ounce of the prebiotic soda. I'll add another tally mark there. A boop to make it even more sweet for me. Or I could just add the simple. It is a double, it is a double simple. A rich simple. So, could probably add more dilution that way. Dribbling the bubbles <laughs> for, the, for the carbonation. There we go. Doing about a third of the total volume is the moonshine is the way to go in Lil Abe's opinion. A third of the volume. Well, let's see. So far, we have a total volume of, let's call it seven. And we have two in there. So we need to do more moonshine to follow that. That's good. So now it's not sour enough. I'm going to add the rest of the Meyer lemon juice in there. No, I don't want to do that. I'm going to add more blue moonshine. Do half an ounce more of that. I'm going to see if I can get it more blue. More blue, they say, for the beauty of Penn State. Yeah, that's pretty much what's happening there. I added the prebiotic soda, and it was not sour enough. I added the moonshine there. Now it's too sour. So I need a bit more simple syrup. So I'm gonna add a quarter of an ounce more of my syrup in there to bring that sweetness, or rather bring the sourness down a bit to a level that I am cool with. Also, I'll say the drink is cold, so the rich simple syrup is not incorporating the way it would if it were shaken, so I think I should have taken that into account. But for all intents and purposes, still a cocktail. Yeah. Yep. That's what it's all about. I like that a lot now. It is, for me at least, balanced now on the sour and the sweet. Very well so. And it pretty much, it tastes very blue raspberry -y. It tastes like a very mild sweeter version of the raspberry moonshine, which kind of makes the blue raspberry moonshine, right? It kind of makes sense. We're combining raspberry flavor with blue raspberry flavor. The two can't be too far apart with a little bit of lemon juice for extra sour. For extra sour. And uh, we got the simple syrup there too. That's good. 
Is a rim thing a garnish? Do you think this would be a well with a, a salt or sugar rim? I feel like it needs something on top, like a garnish. Is a rim thing a garnish? Actually, we do have a garnish plan. It's not quite done yet. I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup over here, but there is a garnish to round things out. It doesn't have the exact purple color that I exactly wanted from it because of the ingredients that we're using, but that's okay. No harm, no foul shot. It's gonna be okay. What I'm gonna do for the purposes of the coloring of this drink, I'm gonna add a bit of blue curacao in there until it forms the correct color, and then we're gonna garnish it appropriately. I'm gonna see whether or not it's gonna change the flavor of the drink a bit. I don't really think it will. I don't think it's gonna affect the flavor of the drink too much. Blue curacao really isn't that, um, really isn't that bad. Let's see, I'll grab some of that down here, and then I'll grab the components of our garnish, and that's the last thing we'll do. We'll go back to the other cocktail angle. Here we go. So what we're gonna do now, just for color, we're gonna add pretty much as little blue curacao as we want to. And we're also gonna garnish it with, I'm reaching for my other ingredient down here, blueberries. Blueberries, I'm gonna put that in the background. There we go, blueberries on a skewer. Let me give myself a nice, I know I have a nice blue bed of a skewer around here somewhere. Gotta find it. There we go, here's a, where are my bamboo skewers? I thought I had more of those things. Oh, maybe not. I have more bamboo skewers. Do I have swords? I think I have paper swords too, somewhere. I have paper swords? Oh my goodness. I'm searching. Here's a, here's a, here's a black one. There we go. That's what I'll do. I have bamboo skewers that are fighting to get out of my tackle box. That is my bar supply. Oh goodness. You guys are... There you go. Fighting a bit off camera over there. My goodness gracious. All right, blueberries, oh my goodness, blue, 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 blue. That's a beautiful blue color, we'll see at least. We're, we're hoping so, it's a beautiful blue color, oh my goodness. Fun fact, blue raspberries came from a lab mainly for artificial flavoring and is based off of a normal raspberry. Is that a joke? That is the fact, no, it was, it was lab engineered. It was. Are you gonna muddle the berries? Make it extra blue? We could totally muddle the berries. I wonder if the recipe, does the recipe call for muddled berries? It does not specifically, could make it more blue. I feel actually kind of bad that I didn't muddle them to begin with, but we've got so many extra blues, so. Actually, let's let's see if we add the blueberries. We'll add some blueberries there and we'll give it a muddle. It's not supposed to be a blueberry forward drink, but hey, we can do whatever we want to. We'll give that a bit of a, a strange muddle there to see if it adds any blue component to it. I like that idea, excellent idea. We'll see if we can add more of a blue, blue color by mushing up any bit of the blueberries we have. It's getting a little dirty in there. It's kind of purple now, actually. Kind of, kind of purple now. I don't know what that. I don't know if that did the thing that I wanted to. It's a very wet muddle. It made it kind of pink, actually. All right, we got to recover from this. Got to come in with the recover. So we'll add a little bit of curacao until it looks like we've reached our proper color. And we'll see if that changes the flavor of the drink. The drink is definitely going to taste a little bit different now because he added some blueberry in there. It's going to be a very dark blue color, if anything. It's actually going to be more purple. How much curacao do we need? There we go. Did that do it? Did that do it? Oh, that's purple now. That's blue now. It's very blue now. I'm sorry, that was a bad idea. Okay, I'm coming in with the rebound. <laughs> hey, oh. <sighs> Got him. Yeah, we recovered it. The recovery was great. Now we just need to garnish it. So let's do that. What a great idea. Who thought of that? <laughs> I don't know. The coach, coach did it. So what we're gonna do? We we'll take some blueberries. Just gonna gonna strain it. And we gotta we're gonna stab them. Imagine these all as little basketballs, and somebody is deflating the balls. That's a foul if I've ever seen it. That's breaking the rules of basketball. Let's see. How many points did they win by? <laughs> they, won, they won by <laughs> 17 points. I'm not putting 17 blueberries on there. However, you'll put it up on top. I'm gonna put these blueberries away. So we, we took a little bit of a, we, we took some, we took some liberties there, you know? Took a couple of liberties. We added some blueberries, tried to see if we could recover it that way. We added some, uh, added some blue curacao there to see if we could correct the color. Honestly, all things considered, I think it's fine. I think it's a, Good, 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 good thing. So now, I'm curious to see whether or not this drink changed flavor, being that we added some other things to it. I'm sure it did. We might have to ref reflect it appropriately. Yeah. 
slightly different now. Slightly. That blue curacao has a particular taste to it, and I can absolutely pick that out in the drink. I wouldn't say it tastes any less like raspberry. That it wouldn't, doesn't taste any less like the little bit of lemon that's in there. It's, it's pretty good. It's the new tanny lion. The new tanny lion. It's new. It's new. It's a new tanny lion. It's a new tanned lion. It's looking a little darker than usual. Oh my goodness. You should give this a whole new name. So far from the original, right? Yeah. Call it the new tanny. New tanny lion. Well, let's see. What else is there about Penn State, right? Well, it came from Penn State is located in University Park, PA. So let's see. Let me think of other uh, mountain lions. Call it the blue mountain lion. Not the Nittany Lion. What do we call it? Something else. It's so far from the original. Something lion-based. I feel like I gotta keep the lion there. How about Lion's Roar? I don't know. Call it the... I like Newtony Lion. Each blueberry is like an eye of the newt. Newt. Oh, newt. Newt. I dig it. I'll let you guys decide. You guys can come up with a name. My vote is on Mountain Roar. So that's what I go there. Celebrating using the moonshine. I'm amazing. We miss you guys guys. My goodness. I should have a bl uh, I should have a Party horn over here somewhere. I gotta have a party horn around here somewhere. I gotta reach for my my party box I gotta pull it to the foreground Oh, wait, no, it's gotta be blue. It's gotta be blue because it's it's Penn State. Yo, it's a blue party horn <coughs> I actually bit it too hard and it broke <coughs> Still works though. I'll take it Thank you all. Thank you all very much. I have to thank you all. No, no, really. The thank you is for the for the bottle. That's what it's all about. Yeah, it tastes good though. Also got a little bit of blueberry in my mouth there. That's wonderful. I love the way that tastes. My goodness, and I'm <laughs> I made a little bit of a mess on the side of the glass. I got a little got a little dirty with it. All things considered, that's um. <laughs> that's great. Now that's that's good. I really do like this. It's it's nice because we kind of we usually make cocktails, like like invent cocktails on the spot, and this was this was good. This was nice and a good use for the um, good use for the the blue raspberry moonshine too. That is nice. And for Meyer lemons and for raspberry prebiotic soda. That is a that is a new one. That's a new one indeed. I'm gonna definitely write that one down. Actually, I'm writing all these ones down. Uh, for those of you who may be joining us for new, all these recipes get categorized in the Discord server. So uh, if you're looking for literally any recipe that we've done since this iteration of the bar with an X has appeared, you can find them there in various different threads and stuff. I... Do I want the wizard chess one? Hmm. Maraschino? Mmm, a blue raspberry. Penn State or Fairleigh Dickinson? I don't know who's where they currently are in the bracket, if they've even been voted out or not. I like this stuff. Very good. In any case, so, move on. Move on to the next cocktail. So, what have we been doing this whole time? Well, if you're joining us late, we've been playing basketball for an hour and a half so far, just about. That's, that's what we've been doing. We've been playing basketball, and we've also been drinking cocktails. March Madness. Brackets of basketball games that are all maddeningly happening all at once. It's crazy. You can't catch all the games and stuff. The various different upsets that have occurred over the past 2023 season, so far we're at the end of round two, are what inspired tonight's cocktails. It gave me the opportunity to do a little bit more research, to look into some of these teams, to look into some particular areas that these teams are coming from, to figure out, like, what's exactly, wh wh where do these teams come from? Is there a cocktail that comes from their area? Is there a cocktail that's represented of their mascot? Something that represents the team itself? I don't really know. So far, we've created a cocktail called Wizard Chess, loosely based off of and inspired by the Wizard Chess, um, because knights, knights from like a chess game, wizards, like wizards on the court. It's a Harry Potter cocktail that we pulled from the internet, but I think it oddly fits for this occasion for Fairly Dickinson University. We've also done a variation on the Nittany Lion, which, name, name to be determined, is either the Newtony Lion, which I kind of like so far, and maybe the Lion's Roar. I don't know. Um, but that's for Penn State, off of their win against uh, Texas A&M. The next one that I have on our list is another one close to the Pennsylvania area. It seems that we're kind of working in this, uh, you know, East Coast uh, division over here so far, which I'm a fan of because I'm from New Jersey. Um, and the next team that I have, or the next matchup, the next upset that occurred was between Pittsburgh University and Iowa State, a seat 11 beating a seat 6. 
uh, the Panthers versus the Cyclones of a score of 59 to 41. Now, Pittsburgh, Pitt, if you will, is uh, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So I did a little bit of research to see what came from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We got a couple of cheers out there for Pittsburgh. Yay, woot. Score, don't fall. Um, but there is, there is actually, there actually is a history of cocktails from Pittsburgh. Actually, this is kind of cool. Our next recipe is called the Fuss Fungal, and I'll get into the history of where this cocktail comes from because this one, not as much of the others, has like a whole in-depth history behind it, and I'm actually really, really excited about it because uh, this is cool. This was a totally authentic find, and I did not realize it was on there. Go pit for the people who are pitting, I guess. Go 76ers, Philadelphia, I don't know. <laughs> I don't do the sports. Go fl go, f um, go Flyers, play hockey, go Gritty. Love that stuff. So this next one is for Pittsburgh and their win against Iowa State. I'll write that up on my board, update things appropriately. And then we move on to a cocktail called the Fuss Fungal. The bus fungal. The fuss fungal. The heck you may ask yourself is a fuss fungal. Next, you're going to start saying yins too. All yins guys, you don't even know what you're talking about. All using yins out there. Stop. Oh, Microsoft OneNote? Please don't open up on my computer. This thing's choking enough. So the fuss fungal uh, I found based off of an article that I found in the very lo very local.com for a cocktail called the fuss fungal. The fuss fungal itself, I need to find the whole history on it. There's a whole the whole thing here. I have it at the top of my list. Do I? It is from. Oh, I need to make sure I have all this stuff here. Actually, I'm just gonna I'm gonna pull my thing off and I'm just gonna read read the whole thing. The fuss fungal. Uh, most cocktail historians credit New York City and Los Angeles disseminating drinks to local cities, but the discovery of the Fuss Fungal, a sweeter, old-fashioned. It's sweeter, but it's got some other stuff going on. It's got like a burnt molasses syrup thing in there. There is... It came from a book called... Pittsburgh Drinks, A History of Cocktails, Nightlife, and Bartending Tradition. It is by... I'm trying to remember who it's by. I need to go to the link. Otherwise, I'm gonna I'm gonna completely mangle it. So you can actually buy it on Amazon. Pittsburgh Drinks Cocktail Life by Cody McDevitt and Sean Enright. Cody McDevitt, what I believe was the one who wrote the article, I believe. But it's actually kind of cool. It seems that there is a, there's a whole history of things that go on here. Um, and I'm trying to figure out the best way to summarize what I'm reading on this page. Well, it came from a website, and what I'll do is for your own reading pleasure at your own time is you can go to the website and read read uh, Cody McDevitt's. Resur like a description of where the fuss fungal came from. But despite to say, it came from and is inspired by a collection of different Pittsburgh cocktails out there. And it comes from the book wrote, written by McDevitt and Enright themselves, which is actually pretty cool. I don't know what a fuss fungal is. It sound, seems to me like it's like a term, an official term. And I'm going to ask the computer to define it in a moment. I'm going to go to a bar in PGH and order a fuss fungal. I will report back on if I laughed out of the, I was laughed out of the bar or not. We'll see. We'll see. Actually, it's funny that you mentioned a situation like that because there is another cocktail later in the stream that's pretty much exactly what would happen if you tried to do this where it was from. We'll get there. We'll get there. Alexa, define fuss fungal. As a noun, fossil is usually defined as... No, no. Alexa... Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. Alexa, no. Stop! Shut up! Alexa! Stop! I'm gonna Google it. Jeez. Hate that thing. Sorry to everybody else's Alexas out there. Define... It must be a word. Define fuss fungal. Fuss fungal. Fuss fungal. From a Fallout wiki. Interesting. Fuss fungal, a new reward, F-O-76? I don't even know. She was so insistent. She just wouldn't stop. They're very confident about the definition of a fossil. Well, evidently, the fuss fungal itself, it's not really a It's apparently a drink in Fallout 76, the pit update. And it apparently comes from, it's just, it's a Pittsburgh term. There is no definition to fuss fungal. I want to see where it came from. Let me see if I can like skim this real quick to see where it comes from. It's a sweeter old fashioned. 
Came from New York. Something about carrying elections. The Big Apple, McKee Sport, People, Snee Walker. It's a, oh, okay, okay. Here we go. Here we go. The drink, it's an academic term for a Snee Walker, which somebody, which the bartender makes there at the bar every single day. You crush a small piece of garlic in a bar glass, add a lump of sugar, put a squirt of water, and fill it up with Rhine wine. That's a small dose before going to work, and that's what you have to attend the funeral. Confuse the drink. Somebody in Honolulu confused the drink with a Boilermaker. Perhaps the most famous drink of all to have come from Pittsburgh. Apparently the Boilermaker also came from Pittsburgh. Very interesting. I don't see too much here, but it's the Fung the Lurga specifically. Oh! Said something here about the Slavic people. They were frugal and bought a liquor by the gallon. Drink was a pre-batched cocktail. Strongest set of legs. A few pints of detectable compound. Daily Eagle. It's just a new drink. The Slavic people invented the concoction, and it was highly alcoholic. Pure spirits, water, burned brown sugar, and molasses. The Fussfungal is a drink that was made originally by the Slavic people that utilizes pure spirits, water, burned brown sugar, and molasses. And apparently it caused f fights. They call it the Fussfungal. In this book, it is giving it a, a, a particular recipe that you could build it, because I don't have pure spirits, but I feel like that would mean you want to use like pure moonshine with it or something. It took a little bit, but we got there. Steel City! Makes sense that Boilermaker also came from there. Burnt brown sugar? I would fight whoever served me this. Indeed. Burnt brown sugar. So, enough talking about the cocktail itself. Let's dive into the cocktail. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna make a fuss fungal, and a fuss fungal is made just like this. We're gonna add, it's a little bit of a riff on an old fashioned. We're gonna use rye whiskey, like we would in like a Manhattan, burnt brown sugar molasses syrup, and it's a couple of dashes of orange bitters. It's basically an old fashioned, but you're changing up the sweetening agent, you're changing up the bitters, and you're making sure that you use rye whiskey specifically. And it's relatively simple. You just add some syrup in an ice filled glass, then whiskey, a dash or two orange vinegars and stir. You don't need to use, you don't need to strain this or anything. You just kind of build it in the glass, and it's beautiful like that. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna grab myself some rye whiskey, the burnt molasses syrup that I'll show y'all how to make that, as well as some orange bitters, and we'll move on. I need to clean up my measuring vinegar real quick. I did not clean it from the last cocktail. I shan't be, ugh, what is it? Contaminating flavors. I'll use that one, Cameron. I've been that one. Let me grab my rye whiskey. It's down here. I have my cooler to sit on, so down here. I know I got a rye whiskey down here somewhere. Rittenhouse rye is the way to go. Rittenhouse rye is the way to go. If I had to pick one rye, it'd be Rittenhouse. Although I've had Old Forester before, and Old Forester is very, very good. But before I learned really how to appreciate whiskey, so I was kind of wasted on a gent like me. We're also going to need our burnt molasses syrup, which I'll explain in a moment. I see that there's an ad going on right now. I'll wait till that ad ends. Burnt molasses syrup. And what else do we need? What was the other one? Orange bitters. We just need uh, orange bitters. I got some Angostura. Ango orange bitters. It's good stuff. This one, again, in celebration of the win from of Pittsburgh against Iowa. It's uh, it's great. It's wonderful. We like that. And I just made a mess of my fingers with a little syrup on there, so let me clean it up a little bit too. There we go. There we go, there we go, there we go. Alrighty then. So, there are three components in this drink. Kind of like an old fashioned. You're just gonna build it in the glass, you're gonna give it a stir, and that's it. The most interesting part about this particular cocktail is the fact that it uses burnt sugar, burnt molasses, burnt sugar molasses, burnt brown sugar molasses. It uses, you burn the sugar first, or sort of kind of burn it, and you add molasses to it as well. The process that I used to make this, and I'm gonna try to release a video on this later because this was actually kind of cool, was you would take your sugar first, and you would put that sugar into a pot or a pan, whichever the best way that you use to make sugar. I used a little pan because I was making only a small amount of sugar, which has a really cool dark color to it. I'll, I'll show you that as well. It's got a, it's like pitch black. The very, very dark thing, because I used some black strap molasses in it and a little bit of a, uh, wasn't specifically brown sugar. It was just regular sugar, but I cooked it till it was brown. You take the sugar, put it into your pan, and you wait till it completely melts in your pan. Wait till it melts, and wait till it starts to smoke just a little bit. The instructions that I saw in the book described that you were supposed to put sugar in the pot and wait until the sides begin to melt. I kind of waited till almost the whole thing melted, 
to see exactly how burnt that I could make this go without specifically burning it. And it started giving off a wonderful, wonderful caramelizing smell. Next, what I did after it started to really melt along the middle was I added the water to it. In this case, it was, I think, about, uh, I think a full, a full, a full jar's worth this jar's worth about two or three ounces of sugar so about th two or three ounces of water to like like half an, an ounce and a half or whatever that half part is in molasses um so then you add the water to it naturally more than awesome says fuss fungal sounds like a word to describe a fight at a bar over an old-fashioned yeah a fuss fungal or uh, or a kerfuffle it does say, it reminds me very much of the kerfuffle word or a quarrel quandary whatever it may be but so you would take what i did was i excuse me we melted the sugar first in the pot, then we poured the water on top of it. And it had a very, it had an effect that I probably should have seen coming, but actually didn't see coming. What happened was the water on top of the hot sugar that was melted and solidified it immediately. As soon as I poured the water into the pan, that layer of liquid sugar that I had solidified and stuck to the bottom of my pan. So what I had to do was continue to heat things up and stir it around and kind of wedge wedge the sugar, the now solidified sugar, off the bottom of the pan and incorporate it into the rest of the drink. As this continued to go on into the rest of the syrup, as this continued, the syrup was getting darker and darker and darker, darker more so than a regular simple syrup would have gotten, probably because the sugar was literally sitting there burning on the bottom of the pan for just a little bit longer than you would otherwise. And then after everything else was incorporated, all that solid sugar was dissolved into the rest of the hot water and now sugar sugar syrupy substance, we poured some molasses into it as well, which brought a whole new element to the flavor to it. A little more molassesy, much more caramelly, very potent almost metallic-y and the black strap molasses that i used but very tasty and i've never used molasses in a cocktail before and if you were going to do it you'd probably put it into syrup because just like honey which we also have some syrup for as well it's difficult to work with it doesn't want to stay in the glass if things get a little too cold it wants to come out of solution it wants to stick to the bottom it doesn't want to gel well with everything else so you can make pretty much anything like that into a syrup and you can mix it in your cocktails just like pretty much any other ingredient it'll have a shelf life though so just like watch out so this is a very, very simple cocktail to make, the Fuss Fungal. Aside from the preparation that you put into your burnt brown sugar, burnt sugar, burnt whatever sugar molasses syrup, you just kind of mix it in your glass like this. I'm going to grab myself a nice old-fashioned glass. I'm going to put a big old cube inside of it. I'm just going to build it right in the glass. The big cube. I had one from earlier. Excellent. Let's turn our cocktail angle and take a look-see. Hello, you beautiful, beautiful glass of wonder. Here you go. I gave it a little spin because I'm special. And we are going to mix things as such. Take two ounces or about 60 milliliters of your rye whiskey. In my case, I've got a Rittenhouse rye. That's the wrong side. Excuse me. Tiny little pinch extra for our, for our drinking buddies. For those who lost the game. Who's that for? For Iowa State. Pour one out for Iowa State. Oof. Oof. Next, we're going to add a single ounce of our burnt brown sugar, burnt sugar, burnt whatever. Sh you want to burn the sugar first and add some molasses to it. But we need a full ounce of that syrup combo. Mine uses regular cane sugar with molasses, and we burnt it. And it was good. And we added water to it, naturally. So we'll take that particular reagent and pour a single ounce of it. The molasses is not very viscous at all anymore. And it's got that cool, like, black color, too. It reminds me a lot of, I was going through some cocktail ideas that a buddy of mine uh, and I went through a few months ago, and I finally updated some thoughts on that uh, shared document that we have, and one of them is inspired by a video game, specifically that takes place on a planet that is really, really polluted, and I was trying to think of the best ways to make, like, a very polluted-looking drink, and I thought of, like, like activated charcoal, I thought of, like, other things that are really dark in color, like, like, let's say, like, a uh, black sambuca, or then I made this last night and i was like whoa what if you'd use a molasses syrup like a black strap molasses syrup that could be cool too and then the only other thing you do now is you uh top it off with a couple of orange bitters and that's it that's not nearly as thick as i thought it was gonna be i love the gradient of the cup it does have a nice thing there you gotta stir it up though so we gotta we gotta break that illusion at some point uh let me see if you're supposed to put the bitters over top of this let me see whiskey add the syrup Whiskey, a dash or two of orange bitters is optional. Stir until very chilled. Strain over a large... Oh, it said strain over a large ice cube. I think you said build it in the glass. You silly. I built it in the glass this time. That, uh, that is unfortunate for me. I was wrong about that. Oh, well. Win some, you lose some. One, two. Two dashes of that. It's optional. 
You don't have to use bitters if you don't wanna. But uh, I wanna. I wanna use the bitters. That was on me, y'all. I should have put it in the stirring glass first. That was that was totally on me. Anyways, give us there. Now pre uh, now a little bit later than uh, a little bit later than usual, but here we go. And this one doesn't get garnished at all. There is there it doesn't say anything about a garnish on here. I would be inclined to do like an orange peel or something like that because you added the orange bitters there, but you know what? Doesn't call for it, we don't need to do it. Because even adding a little bit of uh, um, expressed oils and dropping the peel into the glass can impart some of that flavor, some good, some bad, into the drink itself. That is dark. Does the building in the glass versus uh, does the building in the glass versus strainer matter really matter? What does it do? So what's gonna happen Previously, if you were to mix this in the glass itself, right? Or if you were to mix this in a mixing glass first, you are going to dilute it a very particular amount. You have full control just how diluted that drink is going to get, as opposed to shaking. When you shake things and you have a bunch of ice shards in there, it melts a little bit. You, the dilution level will vary when you shake things. When you stir them, you can control the dilution. It, the dilution really only goes up to a certain point, and it's essentially how long you stir the thing for up to a certain limit. There's math that goes into that in physics. But when you build it in the glass like this and you stir it a little bit i'm only i only have full control over the temperature of my drink as i'm stirring it and pretty much no control afterwards as time goes on this ice cube is going to melt it's going to transform the the uh the um, aspects of the drink over time and that's not much control that i have over it there are some drinks where you want to put it over an ice cube because that evolution is a whole part of the process I don't think this one's supposed to have that. So this is going to be a different drink an hour from now when stream ends or when we're at cocktail number whatever than it is right now. So um, what I'm gonna do in the meantime, actually, you know what I can do? Let's just, I've been talking so much about it. I'm basically arguing the importance. I'll take the ice cube out. This is not the way that I would do it if I was serving it to somebody else. But for the purposes of this, I'm at my own home bar. It's just me here. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stop complaining and I'm gonna think with my big brain, think with my human brain and not my lizard monkey brain. There we go. This is your fuss fungler. It's very, very dark. Ooh, that smells so interesting. Wow. So some people say that dark rum has a very molassesy smell to it, a very molassesy taste to it. I haven't even tasted this drink yet. This smells like molasses. It smells like a dark molasses, but it also smells like a rye whiskey that was just poured out of the glass. This is almost like you combined a dark rum, like a Myers or a dark Jamaican rum, and rye whiskey together. And that's not a smell that I'm familiar with, but it is really, it's, it's super unique. It's almost kind of like, um, I got a particular note there for a second, and I'm trying to remember what it is. Gosh, I don't know. It's almost almost pineapple-y. I don't know why. I'm getting like tropical vibes from it. Wow. That is so wonky. That is such a potently dark and sweet flavor. This is super sweet. Mola the molasses in there? There is a certain metallic component to it, even when I was making the syrup. I'm still getting a little bit of, that, bit of that on the back of my tongue. It is so sweet. There is only an ounce of syrup in there compared to the two ounces of the whiskey in there. The whiskey's not overpowering at all. There are certain oaky, spice-forward components of the rye that are still prevalent in there. This is metallic, like molasses, but really dark sweet. It is spice-ish like rye whiskey but not as dry and not as spirit forward i'd say for the most part if i had to give like a it, it's a very very cool combination and it changes the longer it's on my tongue for i'm gonna, I'm gonna taste it again actually i'm actually getting notes of like ripe banana on that for some reason it smells i'm getting a hint of uh, i'm getting a hint of smell on here and a hint of flavor that reminds me a lot of this cachaca that i have called leblon and it is a it's, a it's a fundamentally different type of spirit it's not rum but it's also based on sugar cachaca it's delicious and it smells like ripe bananas and this is almost giving me like a ripe banana note to it not like not the banana itself but like a ripe it's so ripe like if i had to liken that flavor to something in particular that isn't related to a particular fruit it is ripe it is a ripe flavor it's a ripe sweet spice-ish flavor 
and it's a bit sweet. It's very sweet, but I am getting some of that spiciness on my tongue. Quite sp actually, it is slightly spicy on my tongue. A little bit. That might be me getting confused with metallicness. It's wild. Wow. That's good. And you know, some of the bitterness there, I, I remember where there's also orange bitters in there, so that might be a component of the um, the bitter part that I'm just not accounting for. This is awesome. This is so good. That's really, really good. Holy cow. Yeah, wait a minute. If you're going to go to a bar and order a fuss fungal, I wonder if you'll get the same reaction as me on this. It's really good. This is not at all what I thought it was going to taste like. I tasted the molasses syrup already. I mean, I know what that tastes like. This is on a whole nother level. That's so good. Wow. I really like that. That is my favorite drink so far this evening. That is amazing. Fuss fungal. Straight out of Pittsburgh. Straight out of a Pittsburgh book. Thank you, Pittsburgh, for winning so I could do that one. That was cool. Way to see Pennsylvania represent. So how, how did we make this? It was a fuss fungal, right? Two ounces of 60 milliliters of whis rye whiskey. One ounce, about 30 milliliters of burnt brown sugar, burnt sugar, molasses syrup. And um, I do have some film. I did make some film material of that. So what I want to do is I want to try to release a video on like TikTok or YouTube or something of how to make that. And now, now I really got to do that because the world needs to know about this. That's so good. Okay. Good cocktail. Plus fungal. That's really good. It is very sweet. If you are not into sweet drinks, dial back on the syrup a little bit. It's a very potent syrup. Oh, my, my coaster comes from crossed water distilled spirits today. Very cool. Very cool indeed. <laughs> that was awesome. I think that is definitely my favorite so far. At this point, I want to know what else you can use that burnt sugar molasses syrup for. You know what? I am most definitely going to put that in my coffee in the morning. That is going to make for an excellent latte. My God. I'm looking forward to that one. Oh my gosh. Oh, what are we doing on time? We're at almost the two hour mark. I don't know if I'm gonna get through all these cocktails tonight, y'all. I gotta start moving a little quicker on that if I'm gonna do that. Oh my gosh. We've all, this is only cocktail number three so far. I cannot believe it. I gotta hop now, says Annie. Have a good rest of the stream. Oh, thank you, doll. You have a wonderful rest of your nights. Please be well out there. Drive safely. Not that you're driving anywhere. I mean, you're gonna drive the dreamland, right? So just drive safely, fly safely. I don't know what your mode of travel is, but um, whatever's mode of travel is good for you. Good for me. Good luck out there. Thanks so much for popping in. We got a couple, we got more cocktails this evening. I haven't even gotten through round one. There are still two more cocktails that I want to cover in round one of March Mad Drinks. And there were, oh my God, four more cocktails after that. I have six more cocktails. Two of them are shots though. We're going to be okay. We're gonna be okay. This deal will be okay. Two of them are shots. Shots are easy, right? Shots are easy, guys, right? Yeah. And uh, as it turns out, this next one is a shot. I'm gonna finish my AI final. Oh my God, go for it. So only driving you're doing is driving you crazy. Dude, good luck on that. Good luck on that. I can't wait to see how that that project turns out. It's gonna be great. You gotta make your shots and march. You gotta take your shots and march mad drinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at him go. Look at it. Look at it. Is he gonna make it? Is he gonna make it? Oh, he totally got it. Oh my God. Switch. <laughs> so the next game, the next upset that we'll be exploring is the upset that occurred between Furman University or college. I don't know if they're universities or college. So if I messed it up, I'm sorry. Versus Virginia, Virginia State, Virginia Tech. I'm honestly not so sure. Whichever to the Paladins versus the Cavaliers. The Paladins in this case came up on top. Furman is from Greenville, South Carolina. And so I thought of a couple things. I have some friends that live down in Greenville, South Carolina, and they're not much drinker people. Um, but I do know that the area is known for their, they've got breweries down there, they got distilleries down there. It's a wonderful town to be in. It's a, it's a great place. It's a very beautiful town as well. I've been there a couple of times now, Greenville, South Carolina, and it's nice down there. But I thought to myself, I looked far and wide for a Paladin drink, a Furman drink, and the closest thing I could find was from a book that I have from Mezcal and Tequila Cocktails called Fear Min. Fear Min? Like fur is in the fir tree and min is in like minimum. But that's not Fear Man. And that just felt like the wrong word to use. So instead, I thought, what is, what is green? 
You are in a Greenville. Think of the Rolling Greens. Think of South Carolina. What do you do in South Carolina? And I've been to uh, some pretty nice... I, I can imagine there's pretty good bars down in South Carolina. And what would you buy at a bar? Shot. What's a green shot? A green tea shot. I've never made a green tea shot before. So that's the shot we're going to take. A green tea shot. Up next, on the bar, with the next. It's simple, it's clean, I guess. Mostly because it's using the... Um, uses Irish whiskey. And Jameson, to me, is a very, very clean... If I had to pick a clean Irish whiskey, that is the one. I've always wanted to... I've never had a green tea shot that I've made before. I've never personally made a green tea shot. So I wanted to see how well I could do it, how well I could pull it off. And it's not difficult. It's, it's literally a couple ingredients, none of which are green tea, by the way. Not a single one of these ingredients is green tea. How do they do it? It's magic. Go man. Green. Ville. Tea shot. The Greenville tea shot. That's what I'm going with. How do we make it more Greenville? <laughs> I'd probably want to use whiskey made in Greenville, but I don't have access to that otherwise. So I'm just going to stick with the Irish whiskey for now. But if you had like moonshine from Greenville or whiskey from Greenville, you could probably use that. The only liquor bottle that I have from Greenville is um, Evangeline's Praline Liqueur. And uh, I, I don't think that that doesn't... Yeah, we'll see. Actually, there might be an ounce of truth in this. Oh my gosh. The story of this shot took me on a journey. What a, what a whole thing. I'm very glad that we stuck around to the very end. From court side to court side. That's what we had for that. So to make a green tea shot, usually, you would take some Irish whiskey, an ounce of it, half an ounce of peach schnapps, a splash of lemon, and a splash of Sprite. And you put it together. And that's your thing. Shake and strain that into a couple of shot glasses and enjoy with your friends. That's really, that's really all it is. So uh, that's really all there is. Let's grab our ingredients. Put some of my burnt molasses syrup away. That was good. My goodness, I love that. I need, what else from down here? Lemon and Sprite. I don't need anything else from my cooler. Put my dry whiskey away. We'll grab my Irish whiskey, which is right here up front because St. Patty's Day's drinks was last week. Peach schnapps. I got some of those back here somewhere. There you are. Peach schnappies. We got Faber. They were peach schnapps. It's good peach schnapps. Good peach schnapps. Splash of lemon. A lemon. I got my lemon. And then we also need Sprite. I played myself. I did need something from here. All right. So what we're going to need is we're going to put things together into a shaker glass. And then we're going to pour it out in some shot glasses. Exactly how many shot glasses? I don't know. So we're going to figure it out. I'm only going to do the, um, the proportions that they have here, so um, it's an ounce, half an ounce, and some splashes of each, so that's not going to fill up too many of them. Well, actually, I don't think about it. I should get my measurements correctly. This is the shot glass that I'm be pouring things into. It's a square. It's a rectangle. This is my rectangular shot glass. They're beautiful. I want to know exactly how much liquid this thing holds, so I'm going to test it. Let's see it. I'm going to pour all the way up to the top of my shot glass and then pour that into my jigger as a means to measure how much is on the inside. There's the one. Here's my measuring my jigger. Let's see. Go on a journey with me. Let's see. Let's see how much this thing fills up. This shot glass has a little over two ounces in it. So if I have something that is two ounces, it will fill up this shot glass. And this is a splash of lemon, quarter of an ounce, or a half an ounce of peach schnapps. I'll make a couple of these. That makes sense. These are, these are heaping shot glasses. This is just water, so... Go into my water glass. That makes sense. Alrighty. So let's see. If we were to make this in a number of shots, we can do it in a number of shots, right? If I want to fill up three shots of these... Take my three shots over here. I'm not taking every single one of them. I will only take one. The rest will be for uh, display or for me to enjoy tomorrow or any other day afterwards. We'll do, if it's 1.5 ounces with splashes only, I can take 1.5 of the 0.5 of the peach schnapps and then one, well actually each of these holds like two ounces. 
Hmm. I'm trying to do math. Let's go for it. I need a sh I need a shaker. Let me grab this shaker from earlier. Put an ice cube in it. Get things all nice and cool. Get things cool, dude. It's all about coolness. We're cool around here. I think we are. I like to believe we are. Let me grab um grab a couple of small ice cubes. I don't need that many. I'm gonna have three three small ice cubes from my freezer. Put them in the glass. There we go. They're gonna sit in there for a little while. If we have three glasses here, each holding two each, and we have a total of 1.5 regular ounces, that's divided by 1.5, we have four. We multiply the recipe by four. So I'm gonna take four ounces of Jameson, shy, just a little bit, because we need to have room for the splash of Sprite in there and the splash of lemon juice in there. I'll do about, let's do, Three and a half ounces, or about, let's see, that's like 90 plus 15, about 105-ish milliliters of, um, of whatever there. Three and a half, that's what I said. 1.5 plus two. 1.5 plus two, uh, uh, Irish whiskey. Making green tea shots, dude. This is how you, I guess this is how you do it at a bar. Um, I've never actually watched my bartender specifically make for me green tea shots. I have not had them in a long while, so I forgot to put my orange bitters away. Let me do that. And we'll do two full ounces of our peach schnapps. Multiply everything by four. So four times 0. 0.5 is 0. 0.2. About two. It's going to be about 60, 59-ish milliliters of peach schnapps. This is for three rectangle shots. Three rectangle shots of it. Now we're going to need a splash of lemon juice and a splash of Sprite. Here's my Sprite. There we go. We'll add a splash in there. It's a pretty... This is a pretty uh, heap and splash, if I'm being honest there. And I'll take my lemon, my Meyer lemon over here, and I'll just kind of, I'll give it a, I'll give it a hefty pump. That's what I'll do. Because I don't know the best way of splashing my lemon juice, so instead what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a nice, one big splash. One big splash, and also get a little bit of lemon juice in places where I didn't want lemon juice. I'm going to save that. Put that on my freezer for now. All right. Oh, I need to have a piece of the lemon. We're showcasing recipes. There we go. A little bit of lemon. Little bit of lemon. That's what it's all about. Now what we'll do is we'll shake that up and we're gonna strain it into our shot glasses. Can I do it properly? I'm not gonna chance myself with that. I'm not gonna chance it. This one isn't the special like skill-based strainer that um, after after whatever week I tried to do that on, I tried to practice a little bit and I didn't do very well. Green tea shots coming right up. One for each point. Oh my god, it's leaking. It's leaking. Yep, it's leaking. I can feel the bottom of this wanting to come off. I don't know why. I don't like this so far. Ooh. This is not keeping a seal like I thought it would. I also feel like the bottom is coming off of it. Oh my goodness. Alright. Before this thing literally pops open, it's supposed that the pressure is supposed to be in the opposite direction. Just like... Just like get, just like there we go. That is, that is wet. I don't even know why that is. Take a look at these shots. I make some shots, bro. Taking shots, bro. Green tea shots, bro, bro, brother, sister. Shots, yeah. I'm gonna put them right up against each other. Let's see if I can do these all at once. I'm working on my flare tending. Let's see it. One green tea shot. I take a shot. Let's have a party. We're playing sports ball. Green heen tea shot. I take the shot. There's still more in here. Oh my goodness. I'll top you off. Top you off, bartender. Yeah. Yeah, you want some more? That's okay. I'm not trying to cheat you. That's okay. You paid full price for these green tea shots, which was all, all in fairness, not much. There we go. There's nothing else in there. There you go. Green tea shots. Dibosia. Enjoy that. For you and all your friends. Green tea shots. They're delicious, aren't they? How do they smell like? Bartender, why are you putting your nose in my drinks? I don't know, man. I want to enjoy the shots, too. This is all, it's a game about, it's a game of community. It's a game of togetherness. How's it smell? Smelly. Peachy. 
It's got a very peachy, got very peachy notes to them. Your green tea shots contain Irish whiskey, peach schnapps, a little bit of Sprite, and a little bit of lemon juice. Good stuff. And that's how we do it. Now, it is a shot after all. And what do we do with shots? We do so. This was inspired by Greenville, South Carolina. Furman, university, college, I don't know. I don't do sports. But whatever excuse it is that I have to take a little bit of shot every once in a while, I'm down with that. Here's to a next good game. I don't know if Furman's still in the round or whatever. I guess my vote's on Princeton. Why not? Cheers, y'all. Skull. Prost. See, the thing about a green tea shot, it doesn't taste like green tea. It's sweet. The Irish whiskey goes down smoothly to me. There's a nice almost cotton candiness from the peach schnapps in there. The Meyer lemon? The lemon juice is not super prevalent in here, like, at all. It's very sweet. It's nicely balanced. It's got a little bit of a burn <clears throat> I'm getting, but I think it's just I swallowed it. There was, there was two whole ounces of stuff in here. This is a big shot glass, so there was a, there was a heaping amount of liquor in there. I'm gonna wash that down with some of my water over here. Good stuff. I'm gonna need to fill up on that in a little bit. So that was a good sip. So that's how to make a green tea shot. If you were trying to root for a green team, like um, like the Greenville Paladins, this might be your way to go. I don't know. I got a one or two. If anybody out there is really, really into sports and stuff, like, do, are, do you drink cocktails for your tailgates and stuff? I assume it's mostly beer. That would be my assumption. But again, not much of a sports baller, so I might just be projecting based off of the stereotypes that I'm aware of. Um, but it's all about learning around here. I want to learn, says the guy drinking alcohol. We'll see how he feels after a couple more drinks, naturally. Ooh. All right. So we did Furman. We did another upset. This was a 13 seat versus a fourth seat. Virginia was the one who lost. Good for them, we got to take green tea shots. We're almost to the end of the round one significant upsets. One more cocktail, one more matchup that we're going to explore. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to take a moment to, re to see where we've come so far. We've made a couple of drinks this evening so far, and we'll just do a little bit of a review session. So the first cocktail that we made was one called Wizard Chest. Ba Wizard Chess, not chest. Not these things, chest like king me baby and it was com it was it used it's kind of like a it's kind of like a negroni in the sense that you're mixing equal parts um not campari it's uh, sweet vermouth uh we're using maraschino liqueur and we also used in this case uh just just whatever whiskey you could get um i use the blend of whiskey that i have we mix that together pour it into a glass and we rim the side of the glass you can see there's a little the white rim here of maraschino cream we took some heavy cream whipped it up with a little bit of maraschino in it and some extra sugar and we rim the glass with it and it's very good very tasty probably the sweetest um negroni that i've ever had although you can sort of you can't really i don't know if you can really call it a negroni they called it a cherry whiskey negroni or whiskey cherry negroni but to be fair the only piece in there that isn't similar to the original negroni is the maraschino so it's a whiskey cherry vermouth i guess because that's just that's just exactly what goes into it the cherry just a whiskey maraschino vermouth negroni style in terms of your proportions it was pretty good it was all right the next cocktail that we made was this off of a recipe I found for the Nittany Lions from Penn State. It's, a, it's their mascot or something. And so what we were supposed to get there was a kind of blue raspberry cocktail with some blue raspberry vodka, blue raspberry simple syrup. We also had um, some lemon juice in there as well as a raspberry soda. A little bit of raspberry cider from, I think it was Winbridge Farm, the place that I got the cocktail recipe from, who are probably very good Penn State fans. Uh, I couldn't find raspberry cider. Uh, I didn't have specifically lemon juice, so we got some Meyer lemons today. Uh, and I didn't, wasn't able to find specifically blue raspberry vodka or blue raspberry simple syrup. So we tried, to, we kind of made our own cocktail there. We used some rich simple syrup. We used some blue raspberry moonshine from Old Smoky, and we also used some Meyer lemon juice as well as what was the other component in there? I found some prebiotic raspberry soda 
that I found at the store. And we mixed that together in a ratio of three parts blue raspberry moonshine to three parts raspberry prebiotic soda, to one part Meyer lemon syrup juice to two parts rich simple syrup. And we got something that was rather rather tasty, nice and balanced. A little bit, a little bit of sourness there, a little bit of sweetness there, but very raspberry forward flavor. Didn't come out the right color, so we muddled some blueberries in there. That didn't really work. We put some more blue curacao in there, so we added like let's say like a part or two of blue curacao out just for color um, because the prebiotic soda we used was a bit pink and threw the color off a little bit and that's fine that's okay garnished it with a couple of blueberries which i'm gonna bite one right now sour i'm gonna have sour blueberry very sour blueberry it's good we like that from there, we moved on to a cocktail from Pittsburgh called the Fuss Fungler, which is essentially an old fashioned with rye whiskey, burnt sugar, molasses syrup, which you take some sugar, burn it a bit in a pan, dissolve that in water and add some molasses to it. And it created a very, and some orange bitters as well to the final cocktail. And it created probably the sweetest old fashioned that I've ever had. It was really, really tasty. It reminded me a lot of the funkiness of like a Jamaican rum, although there's no rum in it. It's all coming from those molasses notes because there's actually blackstrap molasses in there. It was really, really sweet. If you're a spirit forward kind of person, change the two ounces of whiskey to half, one full ounce of syrup to probably two ounces of whiskey to a half an ounce of that syrup, which was a lot, but it was still great. Even using a bottled and bond Rittenhouse rye, ooh, Super duper tasty. And then finally, bringing our way back here to Greenville, South Carolina, we've made some green tea shots because Greenville, green tea, I couldn't really find too much else out there. I haven't been there in a while. Holla to the folks out in Greenville. I know, you know who you are. In any case, took a shot at one of those green tea shots and we'll leave the rest of them off to the side a little bit. I am not gonna have any more of that. There are more cocktails this evening. So, we move on to the next upset of the first round that was greater than like a single seat difference. Um, but first I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup, so please bear with me, and then we'll move on to the next cocktail featuring Princeton versus Arizona. I just remembered that one of the cocktails that we made well, used a little, it was the, the whipping cream. So we whipped up a little bit of whipped cream, and he used a tiny little whisk. I've got a tiny whisk, kind of like Babish does. It was so cute, oh my god. I didn't think I was gonna be able to find it. I was um, looking through some of the drawers downstairs because um, Anna and I coexist in a place, and we reorganize every once in a while. So I was, uh, was looking downstairs. I had found in one of, the one of the cabinets that we store our containers in, that there was a bunch of stuff down there, like actual tools for cooking. I was like, when did these get here? She's like, oh, I knew that all of them were there. She's a different type of memory than I do. So I had a hard time, I have a hard time remembering where things are if they're not specifically in plain sight, kind of where I left them. And she will leave things, for lack of a better term, all over the place and still be able to know where they are. If, she, if you move them, she will lose track of them. So she had them all like below a bunch of other plastic containers in a drawer, in the back of a drawer where you couldn't see them, but she knew exactly where all those were, including a tiny whisk, a really interesting like cleaver knife type thing, a couple of bottle openers and what have you. I was like, uh, what else could be down there? And I ran downstairs to try to find the tiny whisk. And lo and behold, it was in the back little cabinet area where all those plastic containers were. So I was able to find the tiny whisk. I was really happy that I did, because I was able to do this little motion with it inside of a little uh, rocks glass to be able to whip up that cream to some not very stiff peaks, some uh, soft peaks, as some people would call them. And it was pretty good. I still have a bit of that cream left over. And I think that combined with the black burnt molasses syrup, I think is gonna make for a really, really nice homemade latte in the morning. If anybody out there does like Starbucks lattes, you don't have to pay that much money for a latte. Literally get some simple, literally make some maple syrup, make some coffee, get some whipping cream, just put it into a glass, add some ice to it. You've got a nice coffee that is on par with, if not better than the stuff that you can buy out of Starbucks. And um, I, I had the motivation to do that because I do mixology and also because like, I feel like I've spent too much money on Starbucks and like they don't make them the same every single time because it's always a different barista and that's, that's no fault on the, on the chain itself. You got a bunch of people that you gotta keep employed, I understand that, but like, hey, it's not the same every time. I don't like that. I can make my own coffee, and I can make better coffee with it, too. Because I have the power, and you have the power, too. If you're curious about that, we'll do more coffee cocktails. I'd love to do Starbucks thing if that's something that's interesting. In any case, we move on to the next matchup, the final matchup that I have prepared for round one of March Mad Drinks starring Basketball. And that was Princeton University versus Arizona. The Tigers versus the Wildcats. I was very happy to see that Princeton won. 
in this round and also in the second round because I'm from New Jersey. I hail from Hunterdon County around the Clinton area. That's where my roots are. And that's, uh, that's where I, a lot of my friends are from as well. And where I went to high school and middle school and good times. Got a lot of good times in New Jersey. And uh, although this is not the university that was close to around there, it's, it's cl Princeton's close enough. It's a, it's a big place in New Jersey. And I've been to Princeton a couple of times. But it was actually interesting as I was looking through cocktails for Princeton, New Jersey, Princeton University, there were actually a couple cocktails that came up, one of which is called Princeton. The cocktail is just called Princeton. And there's a couple of different cocktails out there called Princeton. And there's a bit of a history behind that too. I'm going to pull up the one that I have here from, this one is coming from Difford's Guide, I believe. Nope, not that one. It is come, it is a different one. I need to go back in my recipe book. It's not the Princeton number one. It's just the Princeton cocktail. There's a Princeton cocktail. There's a Princeton number one cocktail. There's a Princeton number two cocktail. There are many different Princetons, but because Princeton got through round one, we'll do one Princeton. And because evidently they got through round two, we'll do a Princeton cocktail two ways. So uh, I was gonna do that separated from each other but we'll do both princeton's cock both pr both princeton cocktails this time around so this first recipe comes from Difford's guides which a calls for it calls an homage to the original appearance of the princeton cocktail which appears in kapler's uh old cocktail book um from 1895 i don't exactly remember what the name of that book is but this cocktail is also the or, the um the origin of uh, other like named location cocktails such as alaska which i've never tried but i think uses lille blanc in it which i don't currently have in my collection otherwise probably would have tried it for myself um, but it calls specifically for a certain type of gin. I read an article the other day distinguishing various different types of gin from each other, which includes a London dry gin, or an American dry gin, or an Old Tom gin, or like, um, what was the other one? It was, um, Jennifer, which is not technically gin, but also a juniper esque spirit. Um, honestly, the only gin, I, I would consider gin to be one of my favorite spirits, although apparently there's a lot more to gin than I ever thought that there was, including this whole aspect of an old Tom gin, which apparently is more on the sweeter side than other gins that you would get usually get around this time. Like an American dry, London dry, they all have dry in their name for a reason. And I think it's because comparatively to old Tom gin, which is, you know, old Tom, older gin, the exact semantics of it are a little beyond my understanding and beyond the scope of this particular bar stream, is uh, it used to be sweeter. It used to be a sweeter libation, which I think a little more heavier on the juniper notes, I think. Um, but somebody out there who knows it better than I would should share their knowledge, because I know not of it. But essentially, the original recipe called for some old, Tom's gin, old Tom gin, some orange bitter, stirring with ice, and a little bit of port down the side to create like a little bowling effect at the bottom of this glass they're using. This kind of looks like a coupe glass from the picture that I have over here, which is cool. Now, apparently, as we move forward by many, many years, the, the combination that Difford came across kind of skips the whole like layering process there. You don't have the port floating on the bottom anymore. You kind of mix everything together and get this cocktail that's just like, it's a little more homogenous. There's no other laying, or or laying effects going on there. And I don't have an old Tom Jim. I could not find it at the liquor store. I discovered this cocktail on Tuesday and i wasn't able to find it at the store tuesday night unfortunately so i don't have that but you can kind of equivalent an old tom gin with other gins that you have like an american dry or london dry but adding a little bit of simple syrup to your solution i don't know if it's worth going through that i do have a little bit of it but um you know it's whatever whatever suits your fancy if you've had an old tom gin before i'm curious to see what kind of what brand that you've had because i want to see if i can find that and maybe order it and incorporate it maybe do a whole stream on old tom gin versus other types of gins i only have I think a botanist gin and a Faber gin, and I have a strawberry gin as well. Those are the only gins I have right now. So it's not as expansive a collection as I have, let's say, the whiskeys that I acquired recently. But I want to explore that at some point in time. <laughs> Excuse me. So we'll move on with the first iteration of the Princeton, and I'll compare it real quick to the second iteration of the Princeton cocktail. My recipe keeper over here is acting really, really weird. Very, very slow today, unfortunately. So I have to wait for it. Okay, there we go. Another website, Ivy Style, says that there are multiple different Princeton types of cocktails. Obviously, I've just explained two of them already. Here's one that they call the Princeton Cocktail Number 1 from ivystyle.com. Bartender, I'll have a Princeton article. Um, 
by somebody. I don't remember what their name is. Essentially, you pour gin and bitters into a glass and stir it for a two-tone effect. This one specifically calls for that layering effect that you get. For the Differds one that will make the first technical Princeton cocktail, although it's, I guess in this case it would be the Princeton number zero, we kind of mix things together. We don't allow for that layering to occur, but we will for this Princeton number one. And all of these have a commonality to them. They all use Old Tom Gin, if you have it. If not, you can kind of sweeten your gin a little bit with some simple syrup. It calls for bitters. I think in both cases it's uh, orange bitters, and it calls for ruby or tawny port. One case calls for tawny, one port calls for ruby. Uh, the tawny port at the store, I was on a budget this week, so I only bought the ruby port. It was like 12 bucks. The tawny port was like 30. So uh, I went for the more economic approach. Plus, if I was trying to do this in like a in, a in a game fashion with all my friends playing like, let's say basketball or whatever, I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't, if I'm mixing this drink, I don't need to go for the more expensive bottle. I'll just get uh, whatever's available. And you combine things together. Um, and that's that. And um, I've lost my... I use this app called Recipe Keeper and they have a Windows version of it. And for some reason, if you click it in just the wrong ways, the arrows to flip pages disappear. So um, if you make this app, fix it. I am left frustrated. In any case, we'll start with the Princeton number one. They all both call for gin, orange bitters, some sort of port, and some ways to sweeten things and um, level things out if you need to, either with chilled water or for some simple syrup. So that's what I'll do. I'll grab my reagents. The first ingredient that I'll grab, which is if you want to sweeten up your old Tom gin, is some rich. Oh, this I is the principal it. syrup. I found it. My shirt. My shirt? Yeah, I did. I did find the shirt. Dearest. Dearest has returned. The pizza is in the oven. It has been sitting there for a while. I apologize. Oh, there is pizza. Okay. Indeed. Thanks. Grab some of my rich maple. It's not maple. It's simple. Rich simple syrup. One recipe, the one from Difford's Guide, specifically calls for rich simple syrup as a means to sweeten up the old tom. The other one from ivystyle.com does not say anything about simple syrup. It doesn't use anything with chilled water. I think what Difford's tries to do is utilize the drink in a more balanced fashion from like kind of tries to modernize the Princeton drink since it came from 1895. Long, long time ago, back in the old days when Princeton was maybe still a college i don't know how old princeton is and the other one just kind of ignores all of that you just kind of put a twist on top of it but we do get that layering effect so i'm gonna kind of make both cocktails the same way both at the same time and i will um well we'll try to we'll just try to see how we do it so both of these first start with it looks like stirring gin and bitters together old tom gin if you have it or we use the um whatever other one, uh, sweetened up with simple syrup, and your orange bitters and combine them together in a stirring glass, right? It says, gin and orange bitters, stir with ice and then strain into a glass. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. I'm gonna take my simple syrup, I'm gonna grab the closest thing I had to an old Tom gin, which is none of these actually. I'm just gonna grab some Faber gin. It's cheap and it's affordable. And I'm also gonna need some orange bitters, so my Angostura is gonna come out again. And I'll also grab some of this ruby port that I picked up the other day. That'll, that'll come last. But I haven't tried this yet, and I haven't even cracked open the bottle. The other day, I made myself a Boulevardier with whiskey and Campari and sweet vermouth, but I had no sweet vermouth. So instead, I swapped out the sweet vermouth with some just regular Taylor port that I had. It was wonderful. I never had that combo on drink before. It was very sweet and nicely balanced. I very much enjoyed myself during my Super Mario 64 stream on Monday. It was good. So this is what we'll do. I'm going to get a coupe glass for one and kind of a martini glass for the other. And just going off of the pictures that I see, and I think there'll be a nice contrast there. One holds more liquid than the other, I think. Um, we'll actually see. I've never compared both of my martini glasses before with my coupe glasses. So we'll do the Princeton number one over on this side are technically the number zero on this side and the number one over on this side. And so that's what we'll do first. I'll position these things over here. I'll grab myself a mixing glass. I'll put a big old cube in there. We will mix up the gin and the bitters together. And for one, I'm going to add without the rich simple syrup. There's going to be no rich simple syrup for the Princeton number one as opposed to the Princeton number zero. Um, but I'll add it in afterwards for the next one. You'll see. We'll get there. First, I need a big old, big old ice cube. I actually forgot to completely prepare all my ice cubes, so I got a little bit left. I'm trying to be a little, uh, little um, conservative with my ice cubes. I also got some pineapple fronds from a stream a couple of weeks ago, and I'm running out of them. They're slowly but surely falling out of my freezer, unfortunately. It's unfortunate. So um, I actually might have just stuck some ice under my finger. That was painful. 
put an ice cube in your mixing glass. And we're gonna take two ounces for both of these recipes. Actually, I will have one recipe up on my screen and one recipe out on my phone. I'll make it a little bit easier for me. So I don't keep having to swap back and forth. Please excuse me for the technical difficulties. Where are you? March Mad Drinks. Princeton, number zero, number one. Both of them calls for two ounces of Old Tom Gin or some Old Tom equivalent. I'm gonna take two ounces of our gin. In this case, we just have a easy drinking Faber gin. It does not say whether it's American dry, it doesn't say London dry, it doesn't say old time. I have no idea what kind of type of gin it is. For So for the purposes of this stream, it will be just fine. I'm making two of these, so I'll add two full ounces because I'm making two of these cocktails. Two for, two for each of them, about 60 milliliters each for a grand total of about 118 milliliters. Add my mixing glass. Because I'm, ax I'm adding double the spirit, the dilution is not quite going to be the same, but it's more like it's an approximation anyway, so I think we'll be okay. Next, I'll add one calls for three dashes of orange bitters, one calls for two dashes. So, being that I am combining the orange bitters for, let's say, the Princeton number one first, no, Princeton number zero first, no, number one, because it doesn't have the simple syrup in it specifically, I will add, let's say, two we'll do three dashes one two three of my orange bitters at first and i'll give that a stir with my trident spoon and then i'll pour that into one of my glasses i'll do in my coupe glass over here and i'll pour i'm gonna pour out two ounces of it i'm just gonna pour it back into my measuring majigger and then pour it out because i want to make sure i keep the ratios at least as close as possible so I'll say that's adequately chilled. I see, a, I hear a helicopter outside. So what I'll do is I'll pour a bit of that into my measuring majigger. I've only had gin here so far anyway, so I think we'll be okay, so as long as I don't spill the ice cube. Into Princeton cocktail number zero glass. And now I'll add a couple more dashes to the rest of the equivalent of the old tom-ish gin and we don't know what kind of gin it is just flying on the seat of our pants over here and we're going to add a sixth of an ounce according to Difford's guide of rich simple syrup which calls for a two to one ratio of sugar to uh, solvent in this case water as opposed to a regular simple syrup which would be like a one to one again this is supposed to sweeten other gins like a london dry america dry or some other gin that does not give any inkling of what kind of gin it is like faber in this case to a level of an old tom which supposedly was a little more sweeter a sixth of an ounce let's see if a regular ounce is 30 milliliters a sixth of an ounce is going to be about five milliliters so like a bar spoon ish full of rich simple syrup and i think i'm just going to do that anyways because i'm just going to i'm just going to mix it with the thing here the idea in both cases is you're going to take your gin bitters equivalent and you're going to mix that first in a mixing glass and then you're going to pour it into the cocktail and then you'll add the other components on top of it so i have like a full bar spoons worth of this rich simple syrup that we used earlier i'm just going to kind of mix that in there's no there's no significant ch color change going on here it's a very clear liquid so far so i'm not going to go to the second angle just yet I'll wait till we add the port on there. I think that'll be a more entertaining, a more beautiful experience. Alrighty then. Let's take that. I'll put that off to the side. It's a very sticky bottle. Every time I pour syrups and stuff, it gets a little sticky on the bar. So I'll try to keep things on my little rubber mat here to hopefully not ruin this beautiful, beautiful piece of wood. Which is my bar. That's what I'm referring to. I'm referring to my bar, naturally. So now I'll take the rest of this liquor and stuff and i'm going to strain it into our other glass our princeton number zero glass technically i don't know i'm getting the two mixed up this one this martini glass is using the difference one this coupe glass is doing the ivy ivy style one i'm gonna grab myself a uh there's no like significant ice chunks in here so i'm just gonna use this really cheap stern of mine i guess for the purposes of this we will illustrate in the second angle this is i can i can prepare it for when we start pouring the ruby into it let's do that we have one cocktail. Gotta play around with this for a little bit. I'm gonna top view. Oh, I feel like a side view would be even better for that. Let's see if I can play that up real nice. Because I really want to see if I can get a nice dynamic going on between both of these glasses so we can see the layering effect for one. And we'll destroy the layering effect for one of them, but not the other one. 
So this one is going in our martini glass. Just a little bit of a strain. A little strain there. That's because we don't want that big ice cube in there. That is failing up a significant portion of the glass, but I think we're going to be all right. Lo and behold, the top of your martini glass and coupe glass are going to hold most of the liquid anyway. It's a very, very relatively high volume of liquid as opposed to the bottom half of the glass because, like, I don't know, geometry or something, you know? So the other part of both of these... Um, according to Difford's Guide, we're supposed to add a little bit of chilled water in there, so I th if a third of an ounce. So I think I'm going to add, add a little bit of a little bit of dilution in the form of my water here. I'm not going to add too much of it. There we go. Oh, I got some of it in my green tea shot. There we go. That's enough water in there. I think that does the job of, again, it's supposed to emulate an old Tom Gin in the best way that it can. And um, I guess that kind of gets the job done. Um, I'm not exactly... I've never had an old Tom Gin before, so I wouldn't really know, but they describe it as being a little more sweet. So the other part of both of them is we're going to add some port at the very end of it, and we're going to create this layering effect that the port is on the bottom of the glass. We're going to try to pour the port in such a way that it sticks to the side of the glass and sinks to the bottom for this interesting layering effect that should happen. The port should sit at the bottom. It's a more sugary, it's a more high sugar. It should be a relatively denser drink, so it should fall to the bottom according to... Uh, physics and stuff so for the princeton cocktail number one according to ivy which is on the right hand side over here or the left hand side from your perspective we had three quarters of an ounce and on the other side for the princeton number zero for differed we had a half an ounce so one is about 22 milliliters the first one and one is about 15 milliliters for the other one if you want to be specific about it like i am follow these exactly but um if you don't really care pick one of these cocktails and just go for it just just live your life live your life to the maximum so I'll take some of my ruby port. I haven't had any of this yet, so I'm actually curious to see how this tastes. And I know, like, we're kind of getting close to almost at the two and a half hour mark here. And I have... Technically, there's only three more cocktails left. And one of them is a shot. I think we'll be able to make it. We will make it to the end of this. I, I am sure of that. So it might be a little longer this time, y'all. So stick around. I will open up this port here. Use a little bit of a knifing action. Um, it does look like there's a little thing that I can pull off here, but I haven't been able to do that for literally any of these bottles so far. Let's see if this has a nice satisfying sound effect. Okay, that is a piece of plastic. Eh, I don't need that. Here we go. Nice. I actually kind of want to see how this tastes. I have one more cordial glass over here. Let's see how my ruby port tastes. I've never had ruby port. I've had just regular port. Never had tawny port either. It smells like wine. grapey dry kind of kind of almost apple in a way apple-ish a little bit of like cream going on there like a like a heavy cream very sugary it's got it's a very potent potent alcohol flavor to it I like it i don't i don't really know i don't i haven't had ports too often so it doesn't really this ruby port doesn't taste much different than the port that i had the other day uh, one's a little more Concord, the, the Taylor port was a little more Concord grape, and this one's a little more raisin, if that makes any sense at all. So for our Difford's version, we we're going to add half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of our Ruby or Tawny port. I think the other one doesn't really matter as much. Uh, Difford says specifically, no. Yes, Difford says specifically Tawny Port. I wasn't going to spend the money on Tawny Port. Ivy Style is a little less, uh, a little less uh, aggressive about which one to use. A little less specific. So we'll add half an ounce of, in this case, is our Ruby Port. I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to pour it down the side of the glass in such a way that it is going to snake to the bottom. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to use my bar spoon here as a means to snake the liquid downwards. I hope this works. We'll see. Oh, yeah. Do this very, very slowly. There's a helicopter flying overhead. Don't know why that is. And it looks like we were able to get that layering effect that we were looking for. That's actually pretty cool. Wow! Look at that! I'm gonna adjust the angle a little bit, because I think it's not as pronounced as it would be if we adjust just a tad. Give me a little bit more at eye level. Coolio! That's a cocktail! 
That's really cool. And then we're gonna add three quarters of an ounce of our ruby port to our different, specifically Princeton numero zero, or about 22 milliliters, and we're gonna do the same exact thing. I feel like it's gonna look cooler in the martini glass as opposed to the other one, as opposed to the coupe glass. I'm try to see if I can angle it very similarly. You can use straws or your bar spoon back like this to kind of snake the liquid down to the bottom of the cocktail. I don't really like the um, the angle here, but it should hopefully work. There we go. Oh, I'm kind of pouring it. I don't like that. Can I, can I make it happen? Oh, I got to be a little quicker about that. Nope, that's not working at all. What if I try it like this, a little bit lower down? It is really pouring down the side of my glass here. Actually, kind of pouring out. I'm losing a bit of the port there. Well, the first one got it. That actually kind of worked. You know what? That totally worked. I'm cool with that. I think I just wasn't, I was being a little unsure of myself. I wasn't pouring as fast as I could. That could probably use a little bit more port in it. But uh, I don't want to screw things up. I like that. I'll be bold. Make screw ups, make mistakes. That's cool looking. I don't think I've ever had a combo that resulted in a nice, like, red to white gradient like that. Now, I gotta ask myself, too, what are the Princeton colors? Princeton University. Because if they are this color, no, no, it's kind of like orange and black. So, like, it's not quite orange and black. It's red and white, which uh, I think is the wrong university colors. But, alas, this is our... This is our... Princeton cocktail. Both Princeton cocktails. There's the Princeton, I guess what I'm calling numero zero, and there's Princeton number one according to Ivy Styles. Ivy Styles. Um, there's the Princeton, the Princeton number zero, just from Difford's Guide, which kind of it, Difford's Guide encourages us to combine everything together. We don't want it to stay layered like this. We want to mix everything up so we can taste everything together. So that's kind of what Difford wants us to do. Uh, either case, there's a really cool layering effect going on here that I really that I, I didn't think was going to work out super uh, super well, but it did, and I'm happy about that. I'm cool with it. So what I'll do is I'm going to mix one of them. The difference one before we go into it but i do want to see how they smell one's gonna be a little more sweeter than the other i can actually see some legs coming off of coming off of the the difference one there's more syrup in it i can tell smells very ginny other one also smells very ginny this one here calls for mixing it up together so i'm gonna give it a mix combine those other combine all the components together to give it a nice darker red color to it it's a very very nice ruby red i'll put the other angle back on for just a second so we can see now that they've combined the colors together very 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 ruby red I like the way that looks how does it taste though this has gin in it an old tom equivalent so it's got orange bitters as well as some port wine in there so it, it feels similar to other cocktails as well in the sense that you've got your bitters you've got your spirit you've got your sweetening agent so, well, let's see how it goes. Hmm. It's nice. It really makes the gin pop. It makes the gin smooth. There is a wonderful sweetness that I'm getting with the gin right now. It's, it's very, very nice. I think sometimes gin is a little astringent to people. I feel like it's sometimes very, very botanical. It's very, very bitter. It's very like, oh, what's going on in there? This, I feel like, makes it a little more approachable. You did add some syrup in there, which obviously helps with that. You also have the port in there, which to me is very raisiny. It's very grapey. It's very sweet as well, um, with a little bit of dryness to it. And I feel like that pairs really, really well with the gin. I'm still getting the gin notes, though. Yeah, honestly, it still very much tastes like gin. It is still a very, very gin cocktail, and I'm I'm totally cool with that. I, for one, do like my gin. I like the um, the tasting experience that I usually get with it. I eventually want to be able to piece apart the different botanicals that are in gin, and I'm currently not at that point, so I can't appreciate it as much as, let's say, people who have a little more of a trained tongue. But this particular iteration, the Princeton, what I'm calling numero zero, from Difford's Guide is very good so far. The next one I will try, the Princeton number one, according to Ivy Styles. I sip the gin first, 
and the gin is um it's all right it's a little bit sweeter there is because we added bitters to the gin so there is a bitters gin float up on top of some port and it's approachable i think it's kind of it's not as chilled as it could be i probably should have stirred it up a little bit more but it is nice and approachable it still very much tastes like gin though it's kind of just like tasting a little bit warm gin so now what i want to do is i want to see if i take a bigger sip of this with the port on the bottom whether or not it combines more aggressively perhaps not Still very ginny. Actually, tasted even more ginny than before. So I'm gonna mix things up. I'm gonna combine things together. I don't have this original book from 1895 that apparently Difford is referencing and from apparently other cocktails have come from as well. But I wonder whether or not, I think it was, um, oh, who was the guy? Kappa, Kappa something or other? Kappa, Kepenler? Kappeler, Kappeler, whether they say to like drink the whole thing straight, like let the layering just like, combine like hit you all at once or whether you need to mix things up and really combine them together first i'm not really sure i don't really know combined together though much more approachable honestly this is a lot more porty than the other one and i'm trying to figure out exactly why what do you have in the fridge wait what do i have in the fridge what It's London Broil marinating. Okay. Oh, you scared me. Oh. It's it's marinating. It's okay. It's just meat. Okay. I got so scared for a moment. I thought like something terrible happened. Oh my goodness. I'm marinating for context. I'm marinating some London Broil steak in a in a special sauce recipe that I found online, and it's in a plastic bag, and it is thawing. and it is marinating overnight. For 24 hours and i'm gonna cook it tomorrow and it's gonna be amazing and it's gonna taste great probably maybe we'll see i've never done this before i thought it'd be special and it's finishing up her clinical this week i wanted to make it special for her in any case the princeton number one that has the um that has i guess less of a call to the old tom gin flavor modernization that Difford was adding to it i think it's more sweet it's definitely more porty than it is the other one which is a lot more gin y and i kind of appreciate that a little bit more there is the gin itself is a little more botanical and i feel like i can't piece those things apart but what i can say for sure about the one that has less dilution and less sweetness added to it is i can piece it i can piece it apart a little bit more i can i know that there's gin in there i know that there's an orangey component i know there's a bitter component and i know that there's port in there as well whereas with the other one the one from different i feel like it actually the modernization of it kind of pulled it backwards a little bit and it almost wasn't as balanced it might be because i poured out a little more of the um the ruby port because i was pouring it in there and i'm gonna take a wild gander that that's probably the reason why the one from different is not as sweet as the other one because the one from different two had i think what is it as opposed to a half an ounce actually had more three quarters of an ounce of port in it hmm. so maybe the, that there i've never tasted a tawny port before so i wonder if that is a really really big difference for this particular cocktail especially when you mix it the way that different has done in this case but in any case both of these with Princeton cocktails, inspired by not only Princeton's game against Arizona, a 15 seat against a two seat. Um, oh, I didn't actually write it on the board. How unfortunate of me. It was the Princeton. There's no point in writing it now. There were two different Princeton. One was a game of 59 versus 55, Tigers versus the Wildcats, Princeton NJ, Princeton, naturally. And then in round two, it was the Tigers versus the Tigers from Missouri. And it was 78 versus 63, a 15th seat versus a 7th seat. Again, the Princeton coming out on top. I think they're still valid right now. They're still playing in the round two. So if I had to put a gander on any cocktail here that is going to make it to the finish line, to the, to the final the final four, I'm going to say it's on the Princeton. Um, definitely not my favorite cocktail so far. I like the, I like the, uh, what was the Fuss Fungal. That's been great so far. I really, really like that one. But alas, I have three more cocktails this evening, and I plan on trying to make it through every single one of them because I want to. I want to get through this whole thing that I've set up for myself. Taking a bit of a big old water break there. 
I'm starting to feel a, bit, feel a little bit hot now, so I gotta make sure that I keep myself hydrated. So, I made quite a few cocktails so far. I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup before we move on to. We are now officially in the second round of upsets. When I last checked the March Madness brackets, I saw that there were indeed um, games completed up to the second round. So I tried to see which ones had the up upsets and base cocktails off of them. We've pretty much covered everything that I could find from the East Coast. Like we've covered, we've got a couple of different parts of New Jersey so far, a couple of different parts of Pennsylvania so far. We had one from South Carolina, very East. Now we move into different parts of the world. We have our next cocktail, beginning of round two, at least for me, that's the way that I have it written in my book, is a game between Creighton University, I believe, and Baylor, a sixth seat, versus a three seat, 85 versus 76, the Blue Jays versus the Bears, with Creighton being from Omaha, Nebraska. I don't know much about Nebraska. Nebraska is a state that just, I feel like doesn't come up in conversation very much in my particular situations. I don't know many people from Nebraska. I'm sure there's a wealth of culture out there. I'm no doubt that there is among all the other 50 states as well and various other parts of the world. However, I don't know too much about it. I tried to look up to see if there was a cocktail specifically from Omaha, even one called the Omaha. I feel like the Omaha is a cocktail, but I couldn't seem to find any record of it out there, at least from not my Google searching and such. So I figure, what do we got here? We have a mascot, mascot called the Blue Jay, Blue Jay cocktail. And so I tried to see whether we have a Blue Jay cocktail out there. And evidently, um, Absolute, the website, you know, the, the, the vodka company has a solution for that. Absolute drink describes a Blue Jay cocktail, which has an average rating of two stars it's a shot as well as having equal parts absolute vodka i have regular vodka blue curacao lovely it's blue and milk together so that's the next cocktail that we'll be doing so and it's a shot as well hey let me do some cleaning up and then we'll move into that i need some vodka blue curacao and milk and the milk that i prepared for this occasion is heavy cream so yee we'll see how that works i don't know i feel like it could be good maybe i don't know it's gonna be in shot form so if at the very least it will be over quickly which this game didn't look like it was that was 85 to 76 i don't know exactly how long basketball games go but i feel like to get to that score on both sides I had to be fighting for a little bit longer those blue days were going up against the what was it bears we're just pecking away at the big like mammalian creature in this case being the bear so i did open up my ruby port so because it is a wine it's a fortified wine i'm gonna i'm gonna make sure this is nice and preserved i think i'm officially reaching almost the bottom of my inert gas container i'm getting very very low on it this is a, like the gas inside of it is lighter than air so when the can feels empty it's actually got stuff in it but i really have no way of knowing whether or not it's still got stuff in it so i'm kind of i'm kind of just testing out the waters as best as i can i'll take these other two drinks here the two little variations of the princeton and move them off to the side a couple different coasters for them we'll do these two i'm gonna put on display everything that we make here cocktails all evening all evening bro sports ballers I actually did, I, I watched, I think, the last time I was really into sport, again, I'm going to see a hockey game tomorrow, but the last time I was really into sport was actually during the Super Bowl this year because I, we were over at a friend's house, and they actually took the time to kind of, I had a lot of questions about how football works, and they accurately, they described them to me. They were describing to me exactly how, what, like, what was happening in the game and what calls were controversial and otherwise. And it was a lot, it was a lot of, a lot of nice context to have in a game. I feel like there is this culture, like, of people not being into sports or not knowing much about sports where it's kind of, it, you kind of look down upon. You're like, oh, well, you don't know how to play a big game of football. Like, what's wrong with you, man? Like, nobody's ever opened up the world of football to me like it happened that night and on a couple other years ago um another super bowl night as well with another friend of mine and like you don't you don't know about this stuff until somebody intros you to you i mean like takes the time to really explain what's going on because i've never played like football before for the most part like professionally or a little bit in high school i guess in middle school but like you don't really appreciate it unless you really know what's going on i did do marching band though Ooh, my phone phone was slow. i did do marching band though so i was able to go to a lot of the football games <laughs> however 
I didn't really know what was going on. I was there for my music and my trumpet playing. So, the next cocktail that I have for y'all this evening is called Blue Jay from Absolute Vodka's website. And uh, it uses milk. So let's put some milk in it. It doesn't clarify it or anything like that. It's nothing special, but it's called a Blue Jay. And this one's for, again, last cocktails were Princeton. This one's for Cretan. Good, God, good job, Cretan, on your win. Not that it means very much coming from me, but you can have it nonetheless. The Blue Jay. The absolute Blue Jay, I guess. I suppose so. It looks like it's supposed to be taken in shot form. It only has, it only measures in parts. Half, it's funny. The website for Absolute Vodka specifically says half part vodka, half part blue curacao, and half part milk. Three halves don't make a whole. So I am like a little confused here. If I'm gonna take a shot of this, I'm gonna use good vodka. I like Tito's. I honestly, I don't really know. I, I say good vodka I say, as if I know what I'm talking about. Sure. My father likes Tito's, so I'm gonna like Tito's by uh, by association. Let's grab this blue caracao, blue caracao, caracao, and uh, I need milk. In this case, my standard for milk is going to be half and half. I'm oh, sorry, heavy whipping cream. That's what I have available to me. And we're just gonna combine those in equal parts together. It says fill a shaker with ice cubes. Add all our ingredients. Shake and strain. So I am going to shake everything together. Evidently, that's just how it's gonna happen. Um, the way I'm going to do this to try to get the most out of my shake is I'm going to take a small side of my sugar tin. I'm going to take a pint glass. And I'm going to put a couple of ice cubes in here. I'm not going to go crazy with these. They're just like, just regular shots. Although I'm like a green tea shot. Maybe I should put exactly the amount of effort that I did in the green tea shot, which was significantly more, I think, relatively speaking. I'll take a big cube, take a couple little cubes, put them in my cocktail shaker. I'm going to break up the big cube. Um, as best as I can. It's a bit of practice. I'm not super duper good at that. Still working on all my flare tending. Uh, we'll mix things together. So uh, in one side of my glass, I'll go the, 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 pint, the pint side, the glass side. I will take a couple of my cubes, put them inside. I'll take my big cube and I will... I'm getting better at this. I swear. Okay, well I said I was getting better at it. Thought I was. There we go. That's a piece. That's a piece. There we go. That's... Well, I thought that was pretty good. Still practicing. That's what it's all about. Practice makes perfect. Put all my ice shards in there. Not that that's necessarily the best way to go about doing it. There's probably some other techniques there. I'm learning. I'm learning how to play mixology. That's what it's all about. And then the other side, I'm going to mix together enough for three shots of this stuff. I am only taking one in this case but I want enough for all of them. Each one of these shot glasses holds just about, let's see, how much how much water? I'm gonna do a little bit of a measure. I'm gonna see, cause I really don't know. I don't know exactly how many ounces each of these shot glasses hold. I think it's about two ounces each, but I'm not sure. Let's see, this jigger here is about 50 milliliters and it fills just about up to the top. So that's about 50 milliliters metrically, about metric two, in, two ounces of, um, of spirit in there. So essentially I'm just going to add about two ounces, 50 milliliters of each of these reagents to my cocktail shaker. We'll get a little bit more volume in there because we're slightly diluting it with the ice. Shake it around and pour it into each of these glasses. And I think it's gonna be, I guess, as best as it possibly can be. I realized that using Hepi whipping cream might result in a more, um, I guess a more thicker drink because I might whip the cream in there a little bit. We'll see what happens. So first we're gonna add one half part, I'm quoting this directly from the Absolute website, half a part of vodka to our cocktail shaker. Then we'll add an additional half, and then we'll have one more half afterwards. Again, ripped straight off the website. I didn't write this. Then we're gonna add half an ounce, half a part. In this case, I'm using two full ounces, because I'm trying to get a shot out of each of these. So, half a part of blue curacao I'm sure Absolute Vodka makes an Absolute Vodka to put into this, but I don't have it. I didn't go out of my way to get Absolute for this stream. It's okay. It's going to be fine. And then half a part, again, three halves for this, holes, for this hole, of milk or milk equivalent. I have heavy whipping cream up here. I could go downstairs and get some more milk. I only have oat milk and almond milk in this house, but I kind of want to see what happens with the cream. I want to see if I can actually whip it by putting it in the shaker. We'll see. I am genuinely curious about this, which is why I'm going through the trouble of doing it. Because I am very, very curious. 
clean out one of my measuring reminders, put it back, and I'll give this thing a shake. I'll take any water that is collected at the bottom of the shaker and pour it out. There's actually quite a bit of it. That doesn't usually happen with the metal shakers. And I will combine liquid into solid. And apparently I used the wrong side of the shaker. <laughs> That's funny. I'm gonna clean that up then. That was on me. I haven't used this in a while. I haven't used the um, the glass pint glass shaker method in a while. I thought maybe I'd conserve some stuff, but nah. So I use this side instead. Also, this pint glass has a bit of a crack in it, so I don't know how much longer this pint glass is gonna last me, but we'll try it. Flip it over and give that a shake. This is the Blue Jay, inspired by the Blue Jays. Cretan, congrats, guys. Coolio. I have a very, very nasty looking... <clears throat> that pint glass is very... That is very, very opaque. Extremely opaque. I'm gonna put that away. I don't plan on using that again this soon. That's fine. That is okay. And now I'm gonna strain that into each of our shot glasses. I, I don't know. What's the best... Is there a particular orientation for Blue Jay that feels right? I don't know. I feel like... Uh, let me orient this camera a little bit. Get a good view of these shots. Bring him in. Bring in the birds. Bring in the Blue Jays. How about the Blue Jays this time? Oh, that's not very... Perspective. Perspective. Move him back a little bit. Back a little bit of Tad. Playing around with this. There we go. And I'll strain it out. I, uh, I have some ice shards in there. I don't know if I want that in my cocktail itself, so I'm going to use my Hawthorn strainer to finally strain things out of this as best as I can. Here we go. There's one blue jay. That is actually a beautiful color. I actually love the way that looks. It's such a nice light blue. Probably because of the, you guessed it, the cream and the blue curacao. Does it taste good though? I don't know. I don't really know. Again, this was half a part vodka, half a part blue curacao, and half a part milk or milk equivalent. Took it from the website. Don't blame me. That math doesn't work out to me. But if it tastes good, I think it's worth um, forgiving. We'll see. So that's what we have. Blue Jay shots. Beautiful, beautiful Blue Jay shots. And we'll see whether or not they taste all right. Let's see. I gotta think. If it's got cream in it, it's gonna taste creamy. If it's got blue curacao in it, it might taste maybe a little orangey, and it's got vodka in it. So I don't know if there'll be too much flavor aside from like kind of almost like an orange cream. I give it a smell, and there's not much of a smell coming off of it. Nah, maybe a little curacao-y, but for the most part, not much at all. Cheers! Go Blue Jays! I feel like I had ice cream that tasted like this once. Does not taste like orange, really. Tastes a little bit like curacao. A little creamy. A little vanilla-y. Goes down smoothly. Sort of, kind of. I think there's a little bit of tinge. Of, there's a, there's a, an alcoholicness from the vodka there that is obvious. You would taste this. This is, this is an alcohol forward shot. But it's good. And it goes down quickly and smoothly. That's all right. That's like like mild i feel like i definitely have had like a vanilla ice cream-esque thing that tasted like this once i feel like i was once at a dairy queen and they had blue colored ice cream and i was like i want that ice cream and they're like you could have that ice cream and then i took this ice cream and i took a bite of it and i was like how my teeth hurt that's cold but it tastes like vanilla kind of and that's where i'm at here it's kind of vanilla but also kind of not not super fruity. There's a fruit is there's a fruitiness to it that like could be cotton candy-ish, but I think it's just general sugar. And then vodka. So it's a it's a shot. It goes down quickly. It goes down really easily too. I can definitely take more of those shots though. The cream makes it very smooth. Proper. Blue Jays, I feel like I don't know much about the bird, but I feel like blue jays are fast. You know? The bird, the animal, maybe also the basketball players. I'm not exactly sure. 
I don't really know. Um, somebody who's more familiar with the team than I, potentially from Omaha, Omaha Nebraska, should tell me more. Because I genuinely, genuinely don't know. In any case, there are two more cocktails that I plan on covering this evening, and we'll just roll on to the next one. I feel like it's getting, oh, it's getting late over here, but um, I had a specific, I had a particular plan, and I have to get all the way through the bracket. At least that's what I'm telling myself. So we'll continue forwards. We just made the Blue Jay shot, which is vodka, blue curacao, and milk or cream or whatever. It's actually not that bad. Uh, definitely not the worst thing that I've ever had. Pretty good. All things considered, this is not the worst drink that we've made this evening. Or maybe it is by comparison. I don't know. I'll think about that at the end. How things rank against each other. How things um, stack rank in terms of goodness. And I'll put all my, whoa, put all my ingredients away. Hopefully without spilling a glass or anything. God, there's so much happening back here. When I went to the liquor store the other day, as I clean up over here, I will describe my journeys. When I went to the liquor store the other day, I was looking to see if I could find Old Tom Gin, which I was not able to find. I was trying to look for Averna or Kynar or Chainar for, I believe it's, it might be the next cocktail. And I think it's the next cocktail that we're making, which I also unfortunately could not find either. Um, and then I was also trying to find, I, I went to the store and I tried to find like something gingery, either ginger root or ginger powder. And I went to the liquor store and I didn't see, I found ginger liqueur, but I got ginger at the store. So I didn't, I didn't spend more monies on it, but I did find something else as well. Yo, Rich, what do you do with the extra shots you're making? So what I'm going to do with these ones, are these are very shootable things. I'm going to try to figure out the best way to preserve them. I think what I'm probably going to do is just kind of keep them in my fridge and see when they're uh, necessary to make. For the most part, what happens with most of these cocktails afterwards is I'll kind of, the ones that I'm not really into, I'll just kind of dump, toss them down the drain. Not really much else you can do. I wouldn't drink anything that I wouldn't really like. Um, but a lot of these ones have been really, really nice this evening. The green tea shots are nice. I feel like I kind of want to see what happens. I drink a lot of tea, so I'm going to try to take these green tea shots and put them into green tea and see if see if there's some sort of synergy there. Sounds crazy. That's what I'll do with those. With the Blue Jay shots, I feel like those would just go nice in. Anything that's got cream in it, I feel like it just goes well in a latte. You can mix a little bit of coffee together, a little bit of syrup, a little bit of cream, and you've basically made your own like Starbucks latte that can be any flavor that you want to with a little bit of a kick to it because you got some alcohol in there. As for the other stuff, there are a lot of cocktails this evening, so I don't think every single one of them is going to make it. Um, We'll see. We'll see. I appreciate the question. Though. I actually had that same question too of other people out there who make cocktails. Like when you when you do like cocktail shows and stuff. Like how do you, what do you do with the excess cocktail stuff? It's still a question that I'm trying to answer because I don't really like the idea of wasting them all. And because I do this every single week, I don't think my doctor would be very happy to hear that. Oh yeah, you drank all these drinks over the course of a week. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Or maybe. In any case. We move on to the next one. The next upset that occurred in March Mad Drinks. Again, it's, uh, it's, it's basketball. It's a game about ball and baskets. There was a game that occurred between Michigan State and Marquette University, perhaps. The Spartans versus the Golden Eyes. A seven seat versus a two seat. 69 to he versus 60. And the Spartans came out up on top. And they are from East Lansing, Michigan. And I actually went into my cocktail book, my recipe guide, and I found a cocktail specifically mentioning the state of Michigan called the Michigander. And it's actually a pretty cute story, I think, where this cocktail comes from. It's it's kind of about a, um, it's about a bar, it's from a bartender who came out of Michigan, who moved to, I think it was South Carolina or it's kind of like some, some Car California, not South Carolina, some California area. They moved west down towards a little more warm down to where there wasn't as much winter as there was up in Mis Michigan. I have some friends who I know are from the like, it's greater Michigan area, I think over on the Western side, but they moved all the way over to California. Not my friends. The, the person who made this cocktail. And I think the story goes, people were asking this bartender about like, oh man, like you're all the way from Michigan. Like, what do you miss most about um, about Michigan? And I think he was saying, I think the, the quote goes something along the lines of like, the thing that I miss most about Michigan is the winter or rather the seasons itself. When Anna and I were over in San Diego the other day, it was rainy, it was wet, it was cold, it was disgusting over there. And every single San Diego in, I guess, San Diegan, was saying, oh, it's never like this over here. It's always sunny. It's always warm. It's perfectly human. It's the perfect weather over here in SoCal. 
And I had my doubts because it clearly was not the perfect weather when I was over there. But to the point of somebody who might be moving there from, let's say, a much colder climate somewhere up north to somewhere down south, I'm considering maybe California one day. I don't really know. And I think one of the things that I, would, I too would miss was the concept of just the seasons. At least from a particular article I read online, because I don't have that much of a perspective, it's just like, it's always, it's always that like perfect weather, which means it's always on the warmer side. It's always on the sunnier side. Uh, at least, I'm sure this is a gross representation for somebody who might actually live over there. Again, you have better perspective than I do. I'm just working off of stereotypes that I got from the internet and will continue to abide by those for the purposes of this cocktail stream. But if you don't experience anything else than that, it's almost like the seasons don't matter anymore. It's almost like there is no real summer. There is no real winter. Here in Philadelphia, I feel like there is no real summer. I feel like it's always some bitter, weird bastardization of winter or fall, and things don't get super warm out here. Even when the sun does shine on a day like today, there was still this odd wind chill, depending on what block you were walking upon, and that was just annoying. And I don't like that. I want to move somewhere warmer, but to somebody who's coming from somewhere very, very north, like Michigan, down to somewhere south, or at least much more westerner because you have the sea in there, like California, California, I can understand how you might miss home. And this bartender, uh, who is, I, I wonder if they have their name here. I don't remember if they do. Jason Schiffer was the bartender who made this drink, originally from Michigan, who I believe moved to California. And there's a whole, there's a beautiful article in here on the Rob Report, robreport.com for the Michigander. And it's a wonderful read. And all of these things I will link in the Discord as well for all of the, I feel like I've been taking time to go through a lot of these cocktail articles and not just rip the recipes from them, but also, also try to get a little bit of context of where the recipe's coming from. And there's a lot of like really, Really nice stories here. And this one in particular is a really nice one. This next cocktail, in celebration of Michigan State's conquer over Marquette for East Lansing, Michigan, is called Michigander. Fall in a glass. In honor of, what was it? It was a Michigan State. Mich, Michigan. 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 This will take me a little while to write on the board. Mich, uh... Dan Gur Coleman. I need more I need more ink in this thing. I need uh there's a piece of cardboard. Oh, here's my board. These chalk markers are running a little dry. Fall in a glass. In case you're missing the fall behind you, bring it with you in a cocktail. In a yeah, this this um oh this thing is really struggling. That's okay. I buy my chalk markers online, Amazon, and um, I'm going through them very very quickly. So the Michigander, I'll admit I am a little I'm a little disappointed. I tried to go to the store to call f to grab some Kynar. Kynar is a particular Amaro spirit that has a big old artichoke on the front of it, and I I don't have it. I have not been able to come across it here in Philadelphia and come up with a reason to go out and buy it and have it in my collection, so I don't have that. I'm still getting a little more familiar with the world of Amaros and whatnot, so my, my collection is not as full as I would like it to be. The Amaros that I have is some Mr. Black Coffee Amaro, which has like a, an orange flavor to it. I've got some Vigo Amaro, which seems to be made here in Pennsylvania. I've got... What else I have here? I got Amaro Nonino and technically other like bitter spirits like Fernet or Campari and stuff like that. Uh, and when I was doing a little bit of my research on whether or not, uh, if there was any stand-ins for Kynar, um, one of the options that came up was Amaro Averna. Never tasted that before, but I think it's got a similar profile, but maybe a little more on the sweeter side. I don't know. I've never tried it. And I couldn't find it at the store either. Actually, when I went to the liquor store last night to go pick up reagents for this, specifically looking for, I, I wanted to come out with at least one thing, and that was Kynar or Averna, or something, and I couldn't find it. Um, so another particular stand-in for Kynar in this case is going to be Armaro Nonino, which I actually have to happen to have in my collection. So I'll grab that real quick, kind of in the back over here. Amaro Nonino, I've seen, I, I don't really know what else to do with this. It's a kind of grapefruity Amaro that goes really, really nicely with whiskey and bourbons. I think the most popular cocktail that you will find Amaro Nonino in is a paper plane. And I've seen at least one creator on the internet saying, the only reason you have Amaro Nonino is for paper planes, nothing else. And that just seems really disappointing to me. So I actually kind of, I took this as an opportunity to see like, okay, well, what if this does go into a cocktail like the Michiganer in this case, as a stand-in for another Amaro to see whether it fits in there. And I want to believe as, as I'm sure the fans of Michigan State believed in that 69 Teehee to 60 game against Marquette. 
I want to believe. And so that's what we'll go with. I, I want to believe in that. So I'm actually, instead of Kynar for this recipe, I'm going to use Amaro Nonino instead. It also calls for apple brandy, honey syrup, and some fresh lemon juice. I don't have regular lemons. I've got some Meyer lemons for this stream today because I'm trying to play around with them a little bit more. Also, a buddy of mine loves Meyer lemons. So I've gotten a couple of extra for him. So I'm also going to grab some apple brandy. The only apple brandy that I have is Laird's, Applejack. Um, apparently the photo on this website on the Rob Report was from, from the Laird company anyways, so I'm inclined to think if you're going to pick an, uh, an apple brandy, you might as well go with an Applejack. And to be fair, this Applejack has lived in my collection for quite a while now, but I haven't touched it in the longest time because I'm kind of running low on it. I have been running low on Applejack for the longest time because I didn't want to get to the bottom of this bottle. To be fair, I bought this a while ago. I am at a completely different level of cocktails now than I was previously when I first got it. So I need to I need to spend a little bit more time with Applejack and apparently I should go to the store and I should get myself another bottle. One of the things that I've learned over the past couple of years with trying to do more mixology and stuff is just like each of these spirits they can be like the same base spirit. They can have the same constituents. They can have a similar mash bill if you cut something like a whiskey or whatever, but like they all have something slightly different to it. And it's those connoisseurs, it's those sommeliers out there who are able to pick out the difference between each of the, these cocktails, each of these spirits is actually something that I'm a little jealous of. But over time, experience will provide the growth to get to that level. Maybe one day. It'd be cool. It'd be cool to be at that level one day. I love it. I have these illusions of grandeur. It'd be really cool to like judge a cocktail contest one day, or maybe like enter in one of my own cocktails in a cocktail contest. It sounds kind of cool. You know, I I'm young. I got my, I got, I got 25 years young. I got my life ahead of me. So we'll see where that takes me. So we also need honey syrup and some lemon juice. I pulled up my Meyer lemon already. And I also made some honey syrup last night. Let me grab a little bit of that. Honey syrup, beautiful. This is using some, uh, it's not local honey. Uh, I don't think it is. It's just 100% honey, great value from Walmart. So uh, you can use any kind of honey. It's kind of what you got. Rich says, love a paper plane, but Nonino can also kind of be nice along with alone with a cube. Curious to see how it works in other non-paper plane cocktails. Exactly. Yeah, and another point that Rich brings up excellently is that every single one of these spirits that you have, put it in a glass, drink it straight, put some rocks on it, dilute it a little bit, bloom it with a little bit of water. Every single one of these spirits take on more characteristics the closer you look, like the closer that you look at it. And you know, that's just like, if you're curious about that kind of stuff, I feel like the best place to start is just take whatever you have. Just, just start with whatever you have. Take a bottle of something, pour it into a glass and try to see if you can approach it straight. If you can't, that's okay. Add a little bit of dilution to it. Add an ice cube to it. Let it sit for a little while. Let it warm up, let it cool down. Play with them. Play with your spirits. Play with your food. Play with your drinks. That's how we learn. Anyways, I think I've got on enough. I, I was so inspired by the Michigander story. I was like, this is, oh, I felt so, I felt so compelled. In any case, to make a Michigander, add every single ingredient to a cocktail shaker, add some ice, shake straight into a rocks glass over some fresh ice, garnish with a grapefruit peel. I don't have a grapefruit peel. peel. I didn't go to the store to buy a grapefruit peel. But again, I'm using a Meyer lemon, so I felt inspired to use what I have in my local area as the Michigander used, I think, for uh, their own particular cocktail. Maybe. I'm not, I'm not a Mr. and or Mrs. Schiffer. Jason Schiffer. Mr. Schiffer. I'm not. Or... Move on. So I need a cocktail shaker. Uh, I need to I need to clean out one of my shakers over here. So allow me a moment, real quick, to uh, mix things up a little bit, clean things up a little bit. Um, as, a, as a as a person who is making quite a few cocktails, I gotta make sure things are cleaned up over here. Otherwise, yuck. I need more shakers. I will admit that. I definitely need to go out there and get more shakers. But I want each of these shakers to have a different meaning to them. I've got my own sob story of why I don't have more shakers on me. Um, those are my demons. Those are my demons to wrestle with. So, put a little more water in this glass. That's why I always have a whole decanter of water over here. It's mostly, it's not just for me to drink water, it's mostly for me to be able to clean off all my uh, constituents here. It makes the cleanup job a little bit easier when you have less glasses you need to stick um, in the dish, or washer, or sink. It just uh, makes it a little bit easier. Honestly, it's harder in the long run because I spend more time during the streams and I mean, I like to I like to spend more time actually making cocktails on the stream more so than cleaning things up. But hey, you know what? If this bar with an X is to emulate an actual bar that you walk in on the street, you're gonna have to watch the bartender taking a break eventually, cleaning some things up. Um, if there's only one person working there, and in this case, I am the one person at this bar tonight. So this is 
you know, sent the authentic basketball bar experience. So let's put these ingredients off to the side. Make a little bit more space for us to move around. Honey syrup, got our shaker glass. I'm gonna grab a couple of cubes. I'm gonna put them into one side of the glass. Let it kind of warm up just a little bit. See if we get any extra water there. And then we'll add our constituents. I'll admit, I am running low on ice. I did not prepare my ice ahead of time this time. But luckily there's only two cocktails left, so we're almost there. Oh, you are empty. You are empty. Empty. Get a couple of little cubes as well. One cube. Two cube, red cube, blue cube? No. Not in this case. Big cube, two little cubes into one side of my shaker glass, the big side. I like to put all the liquid components into the other side. And we mix things up from there. We are going to need for our Michigander one ounce or about 30 milliliters of apple brandy. There is this Laird's Apple Jack that I've heard some really, really good things about. It's pretty good apple brandy, all things considered. And you can do that if you want to. Oh, there is ooh, there's liquid in this side of my majigger. Let me clean right out. That's ugh. not prepared for that. Ugh. Ugh. It's creaming all over my bar. Disgusting. Disgusting. So I'll take an ounce, or about 30 milliliters. I'm using a metric jigger, so it's about 25 milliliters actually, into the not so icy side of my shaker. I think supposedly technique wise, you're supposed to take your liquid reagents and put them in the one side, put your ice in the other side, specifically in the smaller side for your liquid reagents, depending on how much liquid you have in there. Wait for the ice to come to temperature, pour out the excess water, then combine waters in the solids, shake that up, strain appropriately. Did you get all that? It'll be able to test later. After your apple brandy, you are going to add an ounce or about 30 milliliters of Kynar. Kynar is an Amaro type spirit. I see a big old artichoke on the front of it. I don't have it, unfortunately. So in place of that, I wasn't able to find an, uh, an Amaro Averna, but I really, really wanted to try this cocktail with Amaro Mononino, because at least one source on the internet said, you can sub in a Kynar with Amaro Nonino. So I want to see how it works. I've only ever had this in a paper plane before. Um, I made one for myself, and I've also subbed it out for um, Campari and an Agroni, and it was it was nice. It was a little bit sweeter, a lot more fruit forward than a uh, and then Negroni is on its own. I subbed out the Campari with the Amaro Nonino. Campari is a little more bitter orange, has a sweetness to it, but I think the Amaro Nonino is a little more grapefruit forward, so it's kind of adjacent, but a little more a little more bitter, but bitter in a different way, comparing an orange to a grapefruit in this case. So I have in the glass now is some apple brandy, some Laird's apple jack, some Kynar equivalent, in this case, some Maronino. Nonino. We're also going to add three quarters of an ounce of honey syrup, or just about, what was it, 22 milliliters or so. I have my honey syrup up here, made fresh last night. I'm trying to do better on my fresh syrups. I have to eyeball it for this one, two thirds of an ounce, because there's no markings on the inside of my measuring majigger. There we go. Honey syrup, made from Walmart honey. I had some local honey too, but... I went with this one. It's just what was available. And we also need quarter, three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of lemon juice. I got a Meyer lemon. I'm gonna squeeze out just about half an ounce of it. And I actually just remembered, I still have an extra Meyer lemon in my cooler. So I'm gonna reuse each of those guys instead. There might be a little bit left over from what we had before. I'm gonna try to push out about three quarters of an ounce of these guys. There's the rest of that dude. There you go. Toss you in the bucket. Still trying to look into composting in the greater Philadelphia area. If anybody has suggestions, I'm open to them. I've just been lazy and busy at work to do my research. And the rest of this Meyer lemon, we're about at a three quarters of an ounce mark. So there's a little, there's a little bit left. Worth saving. Worth saving every last drop of those beautiful lemons. A buddy of mine, Lyco Slore, Glenny Boy, who was on two weeks ago, eats lemons whole lemons and he loves Meyer lemons so about two thirds uh two is it, three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of your lemon juice Meyer lemon otherwise we use Meyer lemon we're changing things up a little bit it's my own answer to the Michiganer in this case it's attempting to emulate something of a more homely personal experience and that's it add everything to a shaker glass shake it up and then pour it over ice into a, uh, into a cocktail glass so I am gonna grab what else is personal to me I have... Oh, I'll get to that in a second. We'll shake it first. We'll shake it first. Put all these things off to the side. Make a little more space. Um, there's no more water. Is there any water coming out of my other side? No. There's no water produced in the metal shaker. 
But when you use the glass one, there is more. It's probably got to do with the physics of the thermal conductivity of glass versus, uh, I, I guess, steel or aluminum. I don't really know. Give that a shake. And in the background, if you're confident, play with basketballs too. This feels dangerous. Oh, yeah, a little dangerous. And now what we'll do, as this thing is making sounds in the background, I will grab myself a glass that is personally important to me. I like this glass with the uh, with the little dice on it. I'm a big tabletop gamer. I love to play with my fiance. I've been playing tabletop like D and D and whatnot with my friends since high school, which has been God almost like eight years at this point. It's incredible. Wow. So it holds a special place in my heart. It was also a close friend of mine. So this is a very I don't know. This is a very personal cocktail. It feels. I don't know why. I'm having like an emotional connection to this cocktail. It's wonderful, actually. It's so cute. I love it. Pour that over ice. I need to grab an ice cube. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use an ice sphere because once upon a time when we were still just an itty bitty weensy, 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 teensy streamer, um, I had a I had a pal of mine who I used to work with who was like, "You need cylindrical ice spheres," and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'll get it eventually." And I found it in Target one day, and I was so stoked to have it on stream. He was like, "Yo, you got them," and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I got them." So I was really happy about that. All right, we'll strain it over the top, and uh, that's it. Shake and strain over ice. We have our Michigander. And it says to garnish it with a grapefruit peel. In this case, I'm not going to use a grapefruit peel. Instead, what I will use, Meyer lemon peel, because that's just what I got. Here's my Meyer lemon. Let's get a nice peel off of it. It's got a very like orangey color to it. There we go. It says nothing about whether you express it or not, so I kind of want to express it. I just like the smell of Meyer lemons. I'll just kind of like rim it, I guess. Just like a, I don't know. I'll give it a little, a little flattening to it. Maybe a twist. Maybe a little bit of twist. I don't know much about Michigan. I'm thinking kayaks. I don't know why. Kayaks come to mind for some reason. This is our Michigander. And a beautiful Michigander she is, I think at least. And there, ooh. I haven't expressed the lemon, uh, I haven't expressed the mild, uh, Meyer lemon peels at all yet. This is very, very delightful. Let's see. So how does it smell? Oh God, I love the smell of Meyer lemon. It's so good. It's like a cross between like, I don't know, like lemon and orange. I don't know the best way to, it's almost, it's almost like, it strikes me as a rustic smell. Like, and when I think of rusticness, I think of log cabin. When I think of log cabin, I think of oak. When I think of oak, I think of vanilla. When I think of vanilla, I think of spice. So, if you follow that train of thought, it's a kind of vanilla-y, maybe. It smells so good. Oh my god. Oh, that's so interesting. Honey. First thing I get is honey. That honey syrup is so good with the the Meyer lemon juice in there. It, it's honey and it's a little bit of sourness. I'm getting a tinge of the Amaro in there. I must be because the lemon sourness that I'm tasting, there's a tinge of bitterness there too, is not specifically the Meyer lemon juice because we tried a little bit of that earlier and it's not the same type of sour. So I believe there's a fruitier citrus component coming from, it could be the Applejack, could be the honey, could be the Amaro Nonino, and I want to say it's the Amaro Nonino because when I've tried it on its own, it's a little grapefruity, and actually, I'm going to try a little bit of that just on its own because I want to see whether or not that is what I'm getting there. Teeny bit of the Nonino, a little, yeah, oh my gosh, it's like, um, it's sweet, it's sweet, it's grapefruity. It's almost clove, like almost Christmas spicy. I need to take a little water. Cleanse my palate a little bit. Before I go back into that Michigander. A little bit of sourness. Just a little bit. Balanced out 
wonderfully with the Amaro Nonino. The Laird's, I think, is a bit lost on me. The Apple Brandy in this case. There is not much characteristic that I'm getting from the Laird's Applejack. That's either because it's kind of being muted out by the more bombastic flavors of the Nonino and the Meyer lemon juice and the honey syrup, or uh, this bottle's kind of old. So I'm, they, those those um, those components might have kind of muted over time with the just the liquor in the bottle oxidizing over time. It's not completely lost. Um, I say that with relative confidence, but I kind of want to... I can taste that anyways. Let's see, who's the rest of the Nonino? Good stuff. Let's see what the apple drink. I haven't touched this in a while, so I'm really curious about it. Hmm. Yeah. Not getting too much of that. The more vanilla -y components I'm getting from that might be the way that it's aged. I don't remember how Applejack is aged. I don't remember if it's like an oak barrels or something. It feels like it is. It's got a nice brownish color to it. Um, again, beyond the scope of this stream in particular. Maybe one day we'll do an Applejack one. That'd be a cool exploration. Um, however, <clears throat> if the vanilla is coming from the Applejack, I get that. If the spicier components are coming from that, there is a sort of like almost cinnamon spice, clove spice, that I think is coming from the Nonino. I definitely taste honey. Honey right off the bat. There's a sourness that can only be coming from the Meyer lemon. But it's also kind of a sweetness too, because Meyer lemon juice is not as potently sour as regular lemon juice. And that's good. That doesn't hit the same way as like, let's say, like a well-balanced Manhattan or like a well-balanced Negroni, mostly because there's a presence of that sour Meyer lemon in there, which is not something that I'm super, I, I, I'll be honest with it, I'm not super comfortable with it. Mostly because I'm not a big fan of things that are sour, but there've been a couple of drinks this stream that are sour, but also sweet. I think tangy, tangy I think would be the right word to describe it. This is a very, the tangy cocktail but it's got spice components to it. It's almost like you put some cinnamon in there. It's complex. I'm having a hard time breaking that down, but I taste a lot of things happening. There's a little, like a little bit of bitterness, a little bit of tartness, a little bit of tanginess, a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of oakiness. Ah, there's, there's a lot in there. That's cool. Is it full on a glass though? Because it's called the Michigan, you're full on a glass. It's probably, it's probably a little lost on me. It feels kind of folly, I will admit. Sugar and spice and everything nice reminds me of fall. It reminds me of holiday season. It reminds me of almost winter time. And I get that. Is it falling a glass for me? Not sure. It's also interesting too because the photo that I have over here from the article has like a it has like a head on top of it. Not really seen that well. It kind of has like a head on top of it. I don't have that head with mine. Although I have a little bit of a head. There's a little bit of a headiness on here. Just discoloration, but like ever, ever so slightly. And I don't know. I don't know where that's coming from or where it's not coming from, I guess. But alas, that's cool. All in all, I do like that. It does remind me a lot of the flavors that I got from my last paper plane that I actually drank at an Applebee's at an airport. So I think the, the Armando Nino is not super lost on that. I think it'd be a different cocktail if you use Kynar in it or Chinar, however you pronounce that, Kinar. I don't know, but uh, it's good for now. I like that. A little more sour for my taste, but complex and fall adjacent. I like that. That's cool. Some of these cocktails this evening, I'll admit, there have been, there have been a couple of cocktails this evening that I've kind of been blown away by. This one is one of them. It's, it, it's, it's cool. I don't know what else to say. It's a really cool cocktail. The other one was the who's the fuzz fuggler? What was it called? Oh my god, the fuss fungal. The fuss fungal from uh, um, this was from Pittsburgh because of the Pittsburgh win. That was cool. We got one more cocktail list this, left this evening. This has been this has been a very long bar stream. I planned a lot for this one, and I'm feeling okay for now. So I think we have time for one one more cocktail. I want to get through the whole thing, but this has been nice so far. That was pretty cool. All things considered. I still don't want to pick a favorite yet, because there's still there's still one more. There's still one more. I think this one's gonna be a bit of a shit show, but we'll walk into it anyway. Save the most interesting things for last, I suppose. I'll put my things over here. Put away my honey syrup as well. 
a little bit of cleanup as we move on to the final cocktail of the evening. What else I have? Oh, the Anonino. Thank you, Nonino. Quintessentia, product of Italy. That is cool. I really want to find out more to do with the Amaro Nonino now that I have it. I had, a, I had a decision to make when I was buying my liquor, and it was Amaro Nonino or Amaro Montenegro. And I picked the Nonino because I was more confused by it. Because I was like, oh, I don't know what else to use this thing in. And aside from a paper plane, and I'm kind of glad that I got it because it allowed an opportunity to explore it a little bit more. Rich says, the Michigan Dura looks interesting. I'm going to give it a shot soon. Ooh, do tell. Do tell me how that goes for you if you're willing to share. I'm interested to see, like, if you have if you have Kynar at home or if you have some other reagents, if you do it a little bit differently. I'm very curious to know what your thoughts are because this, this is a good one. I feel like for me... I want to add more sweetness to it. I want to add like simple syrup or something, but like there's something holding me back from it. Hmm. Sounds good though. In any case, there is one more cocktail for this evening and it is on the final, the final upset that I observed as I was looking at the March Madness bracket, you know, in the spirit of the spirit of basketball, sports ball, sports ball with the orange ball, fun stuff was a game against from Arkansas, Arkansas, versus Kansas, your Kansas versus their Kansas, seat eight versus seat one, a score of 72 to 71, a very, very close game. The Razorbacks versus the Jayhawks. And the Arkansas, the Arkansas Razorbacks are from Janesboro, Arkansas. So I was doing a real little bit of research for this cocktail. Again, I've tried to base them off of either mascots, locations, names of the teams, colors, I realize now, looking back on the green tee shots from Greenville, I wanted to try to see if I can make them purple. Completely forgot to do that. It's it's okay. It's, we'll do it another time, I guess, if the Furmans come up again. But the Razorbacks had me genuinely confused. And I will take you on a little bit of a creative journey as we when we get to that in just a moment after I change up the board a little bit and turn to the appropriate recipe. If you can even say that there is a recipe, I was confused, so you can be confused too for a little bit. Let me update this a little bit. Again, this is in this is inspired by the Arkansas Razorbacks and their titillating game against Kansas City. And maybe maybe just Kansas. Kansas something or other. Go Razorbacks. Sui, as the internet has told me to say. Sui mama! Arkansas! Arkansas. Arkansas, what is it called? It's it's called the Razorback, I think. Oh, that was not how you spell razor. You need an R. Razor back. This thing's red. Back. All right, it's best we're getting. It's all you get. So the Razorback cocktail is confusing. When I first looked up Razorback Arkansas, the cocktail that I came across was something called Razorback. And a Razorback, according to multiple websites, I'm talking almost half a dozen websites that I looked at that all had the same recipe. And that recipe was vodka, amaretto, coffee liqueur, and rum, either spiced rum or otherwise. And one such place was haveacocktail.com, the Arkansas Razorback. This place was saying specifically that the Arkansas Razorback cocktail is made with these four ingredients and I believe about equal parts. But a piece of that just didn't seem right because there was another website that said 50 cocktails, one from every single state. And the one that they said for Arkansas specifically, named after the Razorbacks, the team was something that used raspberries and fruit punch. And I was like, this doesn't seem right. That doesn't that doesn't seem right at all. How, how does raspberry have anything to do with vodka, amaretto, coffee, and rum? I, I don't understand it. So I looked a little bit deeper. I found another article of an Arkansas newspaper saying, this rum stuff, this coffee stuff is bullshit. We've never heard of an Arkansas Razorback. We Razorbacks are sueys. We've never heard of this combo before. I don't know where you guys are getting this from. 
And then I looked at another website, and it was specifically from a company called Liber & Co. Liber & Co. They make syrups and stuff, and they made their own Fury Rasperback cocktail utilizing their Fury Ginger Syrup, because they're from Minnesota, which is closer, I believe, to um, Arkansas in this case, I think. I don't know. I think they're right up. I think Minnesota is right above, right above Arkansas, I believe, if I have that correct. And I'm going to double check that real quick. They are from... They are from, they are from, this is not the right, wait, this is not the right link. Okay. I, I quoted this wrong in my book. Anyway, I won't go into the semantics of that. So from what I can tell, there were a lot of different people saying what this Razorback cocktail is supposed to be. Some people have served it at can't tailgate. The people from Twitter apparently have taken to the stage to say that if there was a Razorback cocktail, it would either be bagged wine or the cheapest beer that you could find in a cooler. And so there's a bit of a challenge ahead of us. I really wanted to make a cocktail for the Arkansas Razorback, but there's a lot of pieces to what people claim to be an Arkansas Razorback cocktail. So I thought, you know what? I'm from Philadelphia, and I'm gonna give my own take on what a Razorback cocktail, having absolutely no context on what the hell is going on. So that's what we're gonna go for. In one recipe, it calls for cheap beer. If you're gonna go for a cheap beer, and you're in Arkansas, you probably want to go for an Anheuser-Busch. I could not find those big bush cans. So I got my Philadelphia equivalent of a lager. In this case, a Love City lager. It was the only one at the store. So I grabbed for it. It's a nice little can. I'll showcase it for the peoples to see. And it's, um, there's a little brewery up the road. Love City, specifically. And they make this nice little fine lager. I don't think I've ever actually tasted it before. Um, I will taste a little bit before we move into it to see whether or not it would be good in the cocktail. We'll explore a little bit. Another website says that you utilize, what is it, vodka, amaretto, coffee liqueur, and rum? So, spiced or otherwise. So, we have to ask ourselves, do we add... Let's see, I know I have spiced rum down here somewhere. I know you're around here, cat. There you are. Just a piece of gumbo. I don't think I've had Captain Morgan on here in such a long time. I make my, if I needed to make my own rum, or if I needed a spice rum, I would make my own. I wouldn't go with this stuff. But it called for a spice rum. It also called for coffee liqueur. And I have this really weird bottle of Kahlua Mudslide. So we've got Kahlua on the table. We've got vodka on the table. We've got Tito's. We've also got Amaretto on the table. I've got some Lazzaroni that I love very much. It's a very good amaretto to have. But there's also more things. What are those other more things you may be asking? I'm so glad you, you ask. You took, they said, mentioned ginger. I have ginger powder. They mentioned raspberries. I have ras like actual raspberries that we can muddle in a container. There was, and what else was there? Was there anything else? They mentioned, they mentioned bagged wine. I did not buy a whole bag of wine just for an experiment. They also mentioned olives. I don't have olives. I didn't go to the store specifically to put olives in. Raspberry juice? I just didn't want to do that. It just didn't feel, it didn't feel right. It felt like the mockery. So I didn't go for mockery. What else was there? Anything else? That was all. What you see before you. Oh, oh, oh fruit punch? and turbinado sugar specifically. And I've been looking for an excuse to get turbinado sugar. So I got turbinado sugar. <laughs> and we also got fruit punch. I, ordered, I, got a, I got a little thing, thing of fruit punch at Whole Foods. I'm gonna take out one of them and put it on the table. This is, for lack of a better term, a bit of a clusterfuck. I have no idea what the heck is going on, and I don't know anybody from Arkansas to give me any sort of idea of what the heck I'm supposed to be doing here. So I'm gonna take my best Philadelphia guess at what the heck is happening in Arkansas for the Razorbacks. I don't even know. This is gonna be, I don't even know. So that's the, that's the game. The final cocktail of the evening is to try to make our own Razorback cocktail. If anybody's from Arkansas and can offer a little bit of solace of where I should go with this, your input would be greatly appreciated. However, doubting that we have found that particular location, we're gonna fly via the seat of our pants and the, the air in our ball that I'm sure is deflating by now, and just see what we can find.
There are a couple of things that I definitely do want to include in this cocktail. I don't really care too much for vodka. Vodka is just an excuse to make things more alcoholic. And all of these reagents here, aside from the ginger and the fruit punch of the raspberries, all have alcohol in them. I don't think I need to include vodka in there. Unless something else needs to be the forefront of flavor. I really would like to use the Love, Love City Lager because I like the idea of being able to take a beer and putting it into a cocktail. Something I haven't explored with very much. Ginger... I like ginger. Ginger's good. I don't know whether ginger is going to play well with lager flavor, but we can always try it anyway. At the very least, it is the most generic spice that we have on the table here. If I were going to go with any of these other things, I feel like if I were at a tailgate and I were thinking of the most the most common things that I would have access to, I could definitely have sugar. I could have access to sugar. Maybe somebody I know has like a raspberry farm, right? Or something close by. I could imagine that there'd be raspberry there. Maybe the one thing out of the ordinary would be like the ginger there. I don't know if fruit punch would be a place here. It's just a piece of it does, doesn't feel like it'd be necessary. Maybe. Maybe. Well, I keep that as like a maybe on the back. Coffee does not... I don't know. I, this mudslice stuff is terrible anyways. And although I want to use the rest of it, I don't want to waste it. I've had this bottle for way too long. Yeah, I'm just waiting for an excuse to get rid of it, but but not to it. I don't want to insult the people of Arkansas, so I'm not going to use it for this. I feel like spiced rum, Captain Morgan. You can go to the store and buy Captain Morgan. It's so easy to get your hands on. I feel like it would make sense. If you were trying to go for the cheapest beer, why not go for like the most approachable rum? Approachable from like a consumer standpoint. You're like, uh, yeah, I don't know what Jamaican rum is. I don't know what this other stuff is. Captain Morgan's a classic. Captain Morgan is a classic. So we'll keep that on the table. Amaretto, I feel like of all the things here, aside from maybe the fruit punch, is not going to offer any ounce of sweetness aside from the sugar itself. So I'm going to keep that on the table as well. So I've taken off a couple of things so far. And I'm trying to think of where to go with this next. I know what Captain Morgan tastes like, and I'm not a big fan of it. I know what this Lazaroni tastes like, and it's very tasty. This fruit crunch I haven't tried yet. I know what ginger tastes like, raspberries are de facto, and I've never tried carbonado sugar before. The place that I want to start, actually, is this Love City Lager. I don't know what it tastes like. I think what I want to do is, if the people of Arkansas say a chilled beer like Anheuser-Busch is the place to start, then the Philadelphia equivalent, the Philadelphia answer would be, take a local beer, take a local lager, and try to make something more with it. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go into my collection, being inspired by that as a concept, is I'll go into my recipe book for a cocktail that I found that I was actually drinking at a golf course with a couple of fraternity brothers of mine because we needed something we needed something like on the I say on the course as if that's a legal thing it was not we were playing golf see there was alcohol see no more questions asked and we needed a cocktail naturally and so what i found was this random cocktail online called edna's lunchbox that combined orange juice amaretto and a coors light so amaretto and lager feel like they're actually going to go really really well together adding spice rum to that feels approachable these other these other reagents here we'll see how they add to it or detract from it because I don't think that this is going to be as bad as I think. I think what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this other recipe as a base for the the ratios for the the ratio for the cocktail that we're going to try to make here based off of whatever we have interpreted to be the Razorback of Arkansas. We'll take a look there. So first thing I want to do is I want to try this. I want to try this lager. I, I've never I've never tried it before. It's a Love City it Love City lager. I'm not a big fan of light lagers or lagers in general, but if I'm here in Philly. Might as well try it. And I will pour it into a pint glass, as we will do. I have a nice little uh, Guinness glass over here. And I'll try to see, like, I don't really do beer pour as much. I don't drink a lot of beer in general. But I kind of want to see if I can get that in a nice cocktail angle. So let's let's see if I can, right? Put this off to the side. And this here will angle it just a tad. Can I get a full view? Yeah, that's all right. And I'll take this Love City Lager. I'm going to give it a pour. I was told in a beer class I took once upon a time, pour at a 45 degree angle, you know, let's see you get about up to the top, then you slowly but surely make your way toward the middle. This is not the perfect way to pour a beer. Other people would argue against that. Some people say just fucking go for it. Get all the bubbles out because that way you have less bubbles in your tummy afterwards. I don't really know. 
This is our Love City Logger. The phone camera over here does not do the colors justice. To me, this is a very hay-like color. From the camera over here, it looks very, very amber. Um, if we were to look at the other angle, it's it's um, on the white background. Kind of more. Uh, it's kind of more hay-like. It smells very much like like a PBR or something. It's, it's a logger. It's a logger. Um, what other components there are in that? I don't know. We'll find out. Reminds me of my fraternity days. Kind of, kind of OE. Very, very much almost like a, uh, probably something, so I, when I was taking my beer course, they mentioned something about a, a cereal mash to, to, you, to use in like certain beers and such. And I want to say that this almost tastes like, like oat -E cereal, like a Kellogg's Special K cereal or something. And if that's what they mean, so I was behind this amaretto bottle. If that's what they mean by cereal mash, like cereals and like cereal oats, then I get that. Totally. Right off the bat. And not, not too much sweetness to it. Not a lot of bitterness to it either. It's a very, from what I can tell, it tastes a lot like other lagers I've had. Like a PBR. Or like a Bud Light. Although it's not a light beer. It's not, um, I guess it doesn't use as, I don't remember exactly what the distinction for light beers versus other beers are again not as familiar on my beer logic there but i think one uses a bit more of a cereal mash as compared to let's say a non-light lager or it uses some other techniques beyond the scope of this stream but i think it tastes tastes all right friends as, as far as a lager goes i think it's a very approachable lager and i am okay with that love city lager from love city brewery basically a couple blocks away from me actually here in philadelphia this I have found, in terms of the cheap beers that you would be able to find, the cheapest beer that you can find, stick it in your cooler and call it a day, goes really well with Amaretto. In this cocktail that I made previously, you can combine half a shot of orange juice with one shot of Amaretto and a full beer of Coors Light. So, my intention is to take a shot of this Amaretto and add it to this beer, give it a mix, and see where I get with that. I'm not adding orange juice. I want to see, like, incrementally how we can build this cocktail specifically. Again, very loosely based off of the Arkansas Razorbacks. If anybody out there from Arkansas is appreciable of this or is okay with it, I really want to know your thoughts on it. I'm very, very curious. I can utilize the aspects of the internet to reach out to the people across the world and see what happens. So what they say here is to take a shot of Amaretto and add it to a full beer or your lager. What this math lines up working out to, I don't really know. We'll leave to the scientists that aren't six or seven drinks in and see what happens. I will take an entire shot, which was about two ounces or about 60 milliliters, and add it to my lager beer. Just pour it right on the inside. I remember looking back on the golf course as I made my lunchbox for Edna that I did, in fact, just kind of pour a disproportionate amount of amaretto into a beer with orange juice from like a container of orange juice. It was like Tropicana or something. And we saw what happened. And um, I don't think I made any holes in one that day. I don't know if I did very well at all. Um, I don't know, I don't really know, remember much about the day anyways. There was a lot of other stuff that happened. But again, beyond the scope of the screen, the stream, the stream we, don't, we don't need to talk about it. Some of it may or may not have been judiciarily uncouth. So how does that taste with a shot or two of amaretto in it? That's good. Like a bubbly amaretto. Got a little bit of that cerealness to it. A lot of stuff happening outside. I think someone else might got hit by a car. Somebody screaming outside. That's just Philadelphia. If if my answer to an Arkansas drink doesn't involve at least the rowdy folks of Philadelphia, I don't I don't know how we were supposed to get there to begin with. Anyway, amaretto and your beer. It's great. Tastes really, really good. I like that. So another piece of that. How do we get further than that? We have to take it further. We have only used beer. Sorry. Beer and amaretto. If adding the amaretto adds the sweetness level to this that we thought it would, I feel like another component that we need to add is raspberries. I feel like I saw in at least two different cases raspberries used specifically. And so I want to explore that a little bit. The Antonio, 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 yo, welcome. Thanks for popping in. This is mixology experiment time. So I appreciate you taking a seat at this, at the bar with an X. So if we take 
we have this amaretto beer in front of you. It's good. I would say if you have a really shitty beer in front of you and you want to make it taste better, ask for a shot or so of amaretto. Pop it inside. It will make it taste better because amaretto tastes wonderful. And beer, even if it doesn't taste as good, even if it's a lager like this that you're not really a fan of, will taste good with a little bit of amaretto in it. But I want to elevate it more. I want, to, I want more than that. Every single one of these called for raspberry, or at least two of them did. Two of my four sources that I pulled this Razorback recipe from called for raspberries. Whether that be muddled, or whether that be for something else. I, I don't know whether you're supposed to like muddle fruit in beer, but if there is any time to experiment with it, the time is now. I want to take a couple of these raspberries, and I'm just going to put it in the bottom of my beer, and I'm just going to see what happens. I'm very curious to see what happens, actually, so I'm actually going to pull my, I'll pull my cocktail angle out a little bit. A little bit in the way of everything else, because I want to see if I can get a nice shot of... I feel like this is going to change color. So I want to see that happen. Let's see. Was that okay? That yeah, was pretty good. Nice angle, Cam. Nice one. We'll take, in this case, a bit of our, bit of our raspberries. How many raspberries? One. It's going to start fizzing a little bit because raspberries are a little acidic. Two. They're actually floating. All right. That's not working. They're actually floating at the top. Hmm. Well, if I add enough raspberries, then I can push them to the bottom. Maybe I need to add ice to this thing. I don't know what I'm doing. I just want to make sure. I think a raspberry syrup probably would have been better in this particular case, but we're going to make our own like impromptu raspberry syrup by going crazy on these raspberries in here. I'm going to grab an ice cube because I feel like that's going to make the whole muddling job that we have here a little bit easier. I'm actually out of most of my ice cubes. Wow. What a time for me to run out. Let's grab these last remaining spherical cubes of mine. Here is one. Goodness gracious. Um, I don't really want the other one. I'm not, I'm not feeling it. I'm really not feeling it. And I'm gonna see if I can muddle that somehow. Maybe I muddle it on the sides of the glass, right? I just kind of get up there and just like, yeesh. I'm gonna try to like mortar and pestle it on the side of the glass and see what happens. It is totally working. Holy crap, it's working. It is totally working. Holy crap. I am actually kind of surprised. It's a very fizzy beer now. It's a very fizzy beer. Let me back it up a tad. Back it up a tad. You see the fizziness. Please don't fall over. Thank you so much, Angle, for not falling over. I built my own angle out of wood and stuff, and the fact that it hasn't fallen over by now is very, very interesting. So I want to see, by adding raspberries to this... Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm Yep. That's raspberry -y. I need more raspberries. I'm gonna, wind up, I'm gonna wind up straining this. I feel like this needs more raspberry. So I'm gonna add more raspberries to it. We'll say what we're dozing about, we're adding like a dozen raspberries to this. I think, all things considered. That actually tastes really nice. It's almost like a sour like a sour ale now and i like sour ales i'm not very much into sour drinks in general but a sour eel like a, an eel a sour ale i can really get behind all right let's see let's see how much more damage i can do on these raspberries this may seem a little wild honestly but it's this type of stuff that i feel like distinguishes some mixologists from the from the innovators so the ones who just kind of go with what they know. And this is a, this is unexplored territory for me. So it's beer, it's a new cocktail. So this is this is a learning experience at the very least. Exploratory work. So I have done quite a number on this beer here with a bunch of freshly muddled raspberries. So right now this is raspberries, lager beer. In this case, a Love City Lager, if you were from Arkansas, maybe an Anheuser-Busch. And Amaretto. See how it tastes now. Wow, that's, that's good. I like that so far. I like that a lot. Let me think. At this point in time, with everything else that I have at this bar here, 
of what we determined it for. There was vodka, there was vodka, there was coffee, oh, let me switch the angle. There was vodka, there was coffee, there was, oh my God. Whoa, what, have, what else was even supposed to be in this drink based off of the 40,000 different locations that we tried to find a Razorback cocktail? And technically wine as well. There was a lot in this. This tastes really good for now. For now, all things considered, this is a nicely balanced beer cocktail with a bit of amaretto and basically some raspberry syrup in it. This could be sweeter, but I feel like you can add another angle to it. Like, if you added wine to this, like, I feel like this would go nice with a Prosecco. I don't really like Prosecco though, so I'm not gonna add Prosecco. Like sparkling wine or champagne or something. You could probably add the fruit punch to this, but I think it would make it too sweet. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ignore that for now. I don't want the fruit punch. If you added ginger to this, to be fair, the ginger came out of nowhere. Um, I think only one of them mentioned ginger. Let's see, I'm going back to the Razorback. One called for fruit punch and turbinado sugar. So only one of them called for ginger. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna put it elsewhere. It doesn't really seem to be a popular addition in this case. Multiple of them mentioned raspberry. At least one from Arkansas mentioned beer. Many of them mentioned our, our um, amaretto, um, and only one of them mentioned added sugar in general. So I'm even inclined to say like the turbinado sugar doesn't need to be here either. But the one that is the most common, which is the vodka, amaretto, coffee liqueur, and spiced rum seems to be like the one that is most prolific out there. So if we are going to combine the most common representation of an Arkansas Razorback and the at-home representation of an Arkansas Ra Razorback, I feel like it is melding the combo of the stereotypical representation with the native representation. And I think the native representation of the people of Arkansas is beer and raspberries. I don't know where the raspberry parts come from, but I've seen it in two articles so far out of the many others. So. Feels like it tracks with at least half of the other one. So I'm inclined to think the final ingredient will be this spiced rum over here. I'm glad that I had turbinado sugar though, because that'll probably make its way into another stream. Cause I've seen that, I've seen that a couple as a couple of things so far. So, so far we have the, ra the, um, the raspberries, we have the lager beer, we have the Lazzaroni amaretto. Take my angle and put it over there. I'm gonna add a shot of, I'm gonna add like an ounce of spiced rum and see if that ruins things. I, I don't think it will, but I'm trying. So a single ounce of your Captain Morgan spiced rum. I feel like these recipe, this recipe here would probably go better as a batched cocktail because you can mash up a bunch of raspberries. You could add a bunch of amaretto, add a couple of different beers to it. And we just kind of see what happens at the end. So it could be, it could be, uh, it's almost kind of like a, it's almost like a punch even because we have all that other fruit and stuff in there. So now that everything is together with a bit of, uh, with a bit of spiced rum to really bring things together, I suppose, we're going to see what the Razorback becomes. And I'm actually curious, uh, again, Razorback, it's a, it's a, it's a team. So I'm going to see what colors the Arkansas Razorback are. It looks like it's red and red and white. So if that is the case, then we'll keep it this color. Yep. Looks like red and white is the way to go. If you could have like a white layering effect going on here, that could probably be uh, that could probably be beneficial. Um, I guess whatever foam that you have collecting on top could be good. Actually, the addition of the beer, now that I think about it, kind of gels well with the color of the, of the team there. There's like a red and there's a white. If you pour a fresh beer, if, like if you muddle up the raspberries first and then add your spiced rum and your amaretto, which again, I haven't tasted yet with the spiced rum, so I'm gonna try that in a second, and then pour the beer right on top of it, it'll mix everything together, it'll fizz up, and there will be a heady white foam at the top that represents the color between the white and the red. So this feels like a pretty good homage so far. And with the spiced rum in there, right off the head, Nice fruity smell to it. I think I smell the amaretto. A lot of the uh, the beer components are kind of lost on me. It's but it's fizzy. I can smell a bit of fizziness there. I guess if you can describe it that way. I'm satisfied with that. I can taste. I can taste the beer. I think it's the raspberry. The raspberry and the beer. That's actually quite nice. The raspberry and the beer is pretty good with the amaretto as well. And he's just popping back in and we're still live. I was determined to get through these cocktails and I'm kind of glad that we stuck it out to the end. And we invented a cocktail. Right off, the, right, inspired by Arkansas. 
and there are Razorback pigs out there. And it's, um, it's not that bad. Is this the last one? This is the final cocktail of the evening. I don't think I can go any further than this. So, we'll break that down. We looked at a couple of different types of Arkansas Razorback cocktails. Some, according to the internet at large, combining vodka and coffee liqueur and amaretto and spiced rum or otherwise rum together. And apparently Arkansas, everybody in Arkansas stood up and hated that. They all disliked it on Twitter. Even an Arkansas news source said, nope, we've never heard of that Razorback cocktail. Take it back. Give us another one. And if the, if the state of Arkansas is still pining for a new Razorback cocktail, this is the one that I would offer. This is my, my solution to, the, to the, the Razorback. I call it the red and blue Razorback. Whoa, whoa, the red and blue, whoa. The red and white Razorback for Arkansas. And it combines lager beer, an entire lager beer, together with two ounces of amaretto, a single ounce of spiced rum, and like a dozen or so mashed muddled up raspberries. It's got a nice red color to it. If you mix in the beer last, I think you'll have that nice foam up on top that gives a nice contrast from the white to the red. And I think it tastes pretty good. You can taste the beer in there if you're a big fan of the beer flavor, like you're at home Anheuser-Busch, you'll like this. You'll, you'll still taste that in there. You have the raspberry with just like, it's it's a light sweetness. It, it gels really well. You can definitely taste the raspberry in there. But the amaretto offers your full sweetness and your spiced rum is just like, it, it appeals to, I think, the wider crowd. I think the wider crowd, the wider crowd would be like, oh yeah, that's spice rum at home. I can make this cocktail. And you can. You have the power to. And that's what I'll call the red and white razorback. So I will I will modify this a little bit. Red and white. And I guess I'll double check to make sure that I got those colors correct. Let's see. Mm, razorbacks. Arkansas Razorback colors. Give me officially the colors. White and Cardinal. Excuse me. Cardinal. <laughs> I'm writing that really, really late. Cardinal. When I'm when I'm detailing these cocktails and writing them down the, in the Discord later, hopefully I write that down correctly with my reminders. And that was made with Love City Brewery beer from here in Philadelphia. That's my Philadelphia answer to it. Lazzaroni Amaretto, about two ounces or about 60 milliliters of that. We have a single ounce of our spiced spiced, spiced rum. Um, we're about 30 milliliters or so. I'm gonna put that back behind the other rums. Where it belongs, out of sight, out of mind. Do not touch that. We also added fresh raspberries. It was good. I don't know what the significance about raspberry and Arkansas is, um, but I'll leave that for the people to tell me. If this is If this is a hit, I don't know. That's what it's all about. And that's what we got. And it's good. And I guess it's your choice whether you want to strain out the raspberries or not. I actually think they're quite drinkable, so I, I, I keep them in there. That's not that bad. That's not that bad at all. And so, that is my last cocktail this evening. That is the end of, finally, we've gotten through every upset that I could properly identify for March Mad Drinks. March Madness. This was actually really, really fun. I have not been tasked with this creative task before of really going out to try to find cocktails for a very abstract theme. In this case, it was all the different teams. The criterion was upset and upsets in March Madness. And there were a couple of places that came up there. We've covered um, the, the teams that won and the cocktails that all of these are kind of loosely based off of are from the beginning to the end was Fairleigh Dickinson University Knights for the Wizard, che the Wizard Chess Cocktail, which was modified a little bit um, to, just, just for, actually it wasn't modified in our case. Um, if I were to modify it, I'd make it a little more blue because the knights are a blue color, uh, but it was fun. Uh, the, um, they made the wizard chest cocktail, which had, if I'm correct in saying, it's kind of like a, a they could describe it as a whiskey, cherry, Negroni, but really it's a whiskey, cherry, vermouth because you add whiskey of your choice, uh, maraschino liqueur and sweet vermouth together in equal parts, add a little bit of a maraschino rim on that, and you'll get something that roughly resembles this guy. It's a, a sweet Negroni, doesn't really taste like a Negroni, I wouldn't call it a Negroni, but it's tasty, and you could also say that it's Hogwarts related, or you could say wizard chess as in like, you know, the wizards of the court, you know, cause like, <laughs> basketball, cause it's March Madness, naturally. 
Um, the next cocktail that we went to was inspired by Penn State and their win against Texas A&M for the Nittany Lions. That was a cocktail that was supposed to have a blue hue to it. It's gotten a little, actually, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put this one on the screen now because it's actually gotten a little more uh, purpley. It's got an interesting gradient to it now. Contrasted against my shirt, maybe. There's an interesting uh, split going on there. Uh, garnished with a couple of blueberries on it. It's supposed to be blue like them. We combined a couple things together. We combined some prebiotic raspberry soda together uh, with blue raspberry moonshine with some, I think it was some syrup as well. And uh, it wasn't as blue as we wanted it to be. So we added a bunch of blue curacao to it and it made it blue, but like, eh, it was a little lost on us. Tried a little bit of a uh, muddled blueberries. Didn't work out super well. But if we were to call it something different, it's either like the lion's roar, like the newtony lion, kind of like newts, because like newts had their little eyes. Those are represented by the blueberries or something like that. The cocktail after that was uh, based off of a victory from uh, Pittsburgh against Iowa State. Specifically from, uh, this cocktail was from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania from a book about Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania cocktails. Uh, and the cocktail that came out of that was something called the Fuss Fungal, which is kind of a variation on an old fashioned in the sense that you put rye whiskey in two, two ounces to one ounce of this burnt sugar molasses syrup, which offered a really, really awesome take on an old fashioned. It was so, so, so good. I would, if there was any, it was, the, if there was any takeaways from this one, Try a fuss fungal. It sounds weird, but it's a good one. And it's been sitting for a little while, but I want to see if it still tastes as good as it did previously. It's warm up a bit. A lot more whiskey than I than it was before. It was it's a very, very sweet old fashioned. It's a lot more rye whiskey forward than it was previously, when it was a little more cool. Um, but I can still taste that molasses. It was very good. PA representing two wins. Go pit. I'm also in Pennsylvania, so I'm inclined to agree. Pre uh, after that, we went to Furman College and their vi vi victory against Virginia, the Paladins versus the Cavaliers. They're from Greenville, South Carolina. We made a couple of green tea shots. I took one of them. It's easy. It's Jameson Irish whiskey or some other Irish whiskey. Mix it with peach schnapps, a splash of Sprite, and a splash of lemon juice. I had Meyer lemons. So if any time I say lemon juice, I mean Le Meyer lemons this time around. And it's pleasant. It's a good, it's a great, good shot. I realized like an hour later, if I was really gonna make it reminiscent of the team, I really should have made it purple somehow. And the way that I would have done that was adding a little bit of butterfly pea flower to it. It turns things purple, or it turns things blue and or purple. And if you mix that with the green color of the green tee shot, as you can see now, I feel like what would result out the other side is something blue. Or you muddle some blueberries in there. I don't know. If you're from Pittsburgh and need this as a cocktail idea, originally I got it from, I think it was Winbridge, Winbridge Brewery or something like that. I will post all these links and all the summaries of every single cocktail that we cover in my Discord later. When the VOD video comes out on YouTube, I will also have it in the description there because it's almost four hours since the same stream started and I'm likely to forget things sometimes. So my apologies, but don't worry. Future Cameron, Silver Cameron has got you. The cocktail that we made after that was from one, was two actually from Princeton. They won against uh, Arizona in the first round of the March Madness beginning block round one and then in the second round against the missouri tigers so they actually got two cocktails there are many different ways to make a princeton cocktail one originating from an 1895 book from i think cap capiller who essentially says take some gin take some orange bitters and take some tawny port or ruby port and combine them together layering the gin bitter combo on top of the port on the bottom. It can be nicely sweet. It's a great way to explore gin in a way that maybe you haven't tried it before. Some people say to keep it layered, some you mix it up together. The layering effect is really, really cool and it has this like clear transparency on top and this ruby red color on the bottom. And when you combine it together, it kind of looks like you were pouring like wine out of, a, out of a bottle, like a red scarlet wine out of a bottle. It's cool and it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Not my favorite, but. We move on from there. The next cocktail that we made was a shot that we that is called the Blue Jay, based off of the victory of Creighton against Baylor, the Blue Jays versus the Bear. This is the Blue Jay shot, and it uses a bit of milk in it, and in my case, a little bit of cream. And after a while, you can see it completely separated. Now, there is blue curacao on the bottom, and vodka, and cream up on top. And that is, that's a little wonky. It was a very smooth shot to take before it separated. I think it's probably curdled a little bit at this point. Um, that's on Absolute. That was on Absolute Vodka's website. And they described three has and making a single hole. So they are apparently not math engineers over at Absolute, but that's okay. 
This is basketball. This isn't math. Or maybe. After the Blue Jays shot, we had the Michigander Fall in a Glass, a wonderful cocktail that uses Kynar originally. I don't have Kynar, so this was a means for me to try and experiment with other Amaros and see how they interplay with it. You combine Apple Brandy, or like an a Laird's Applejack, with Kynar or some other Amaro equivalent. In this case, I used an Amaro Nonino. It was actually pretty good. And you combine it with honey syrup and what was the other piece of that? What was the other piece of this? Oh, and um, I think a little bit of lemon juice, if I'm correct in saying. And it was wonderful. Fall in a glass, they call it. And it's uh, it the the I got a little emotional for this cocktail because it was made by somebody who misses the seasons from Michigan. I think they were a Michigander who moved down to South Carolina. And when asked what was the thing you miss most about Michigan, he's like the sea, like the winter, or just the seasons in general. Because apparently in SoCal, it's always nice. And you know, there's a there's always a there's a, there's always a positive to every single negative, a negative to every single positive. It's just how the world is. And he says, not the engineer complaining about the math. Who doesn't math? They clearly only expected drunk people to read the recipe. Naturally, I mean, to be fair, if you said half a part to a half a part to a half a part, my brain would immediately think, oh, 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 so they're all equal, so one third apart each. But alas, semantics. That's for the birds to figure out. The blue jays, I mean, in this case. Well, after the Michigan Michigander, we found ourselves here at the Razorback. There is no proper definition of a Razorback cocktail. There just isn't. When you look at the Razorback cocktail, you get this weird combo of like vodka, Kahlua, Amaretto, and spiced rum or regular rum. And people don't seem to like that. If you ask the people of Arkansas, they're like, the hell are you talking about? We've never heard of this. I drink beer from my cooler and wine from my bag. And we enjoy our tailgates and we say, so when the when the game hits good and so with that in mind i found a couple of different sources of the um of what they called the arkansas razorback some of them included one of them included beer one of them included ginger one of them included raspberries and, and a bunch of other things and what we landed on was what i'm calling the scarlet scarlet what did i write on that board cardinal the white, I'll say the white and cardinal, the white and cardinal Razorback, which combines a full pint of lager beer. For me, it's Love City. If you were down south in Arkansas, it might be an Anheuser Busch. Combine that with like a dozen muddled like um, raspberries, and add two ounces or about sixty-ish milliliters of amaretto and a single ounce of spiced rum, or just whatever rum, or just like forego the rum. You don't really need the rum there. And combine that all together. If you pour the beer at the very end, you'll have a nice white head on top that contrasts with the cardinal color red on the bottom. And I think that's a good homage to the Razorback team. Cardinal. Cardinal indeed. And that I thought was pretty cool. And it tastes really good. And you can strain it if you want to. There are probably different ways to make it. This is just the way that I made it. And I think it's very, very tasty. And that's where we find ourselves this evening at the end of the bar with an X. This is all the cocktails that I have planned for this evening. This was fun. This was really cool. This really allowed uh, me in particular to exercise my creative ability to come up with a couple of cocktails, make, infer some ratios, and try a couple of new things. I was able to try uh, this beer for the first time. I was able to try that prebiotic soda for the first time. That was cool. This was fun. I had a lot of fun for this, and for that, I would like to extend my thanks to the audience as well because y'all are here with me, encouraging me, and enabling me to continue with it, and I appreciate with that. Love the research and experimentation, super entertaining, and cheers to that. Oh, Rich. Cheers, my friend. Absolutely. But that's all I've got planned for this evening, and uh, so with that, I'm all done. And he says, I loved learning about the fuss fungal. The fuss fungal, by the way, originally is a term, is a drink by the Slavic people from... I guess Pittsburgh, where you combine the spirits together um, with, oh, I don't remember what it was. I'm going to bookmark that chapter in the VOD so that nobody forgets about it. We'll try that. But that's all I got. So there's a lot more left of March Madness. March Madness is not over. We're only at the end of the second round. I don't plan on doing another one of these streams, but uh, this was this was fun. This was a fun way to get the creative juices flowing. And um, gosh, I appreciate all these different cocktails that I have and shots and whatnot that I can try. I feel like some of these are going to go into my coffee in the morning. We'll see what happens. In any case, that is all that I have planned for the evening. And for that, I appreciate y'all coming along for the ride and sticking with me until the bitter, bitter end. Everything froze for a second there. It's okay. My computer is apparently overloaded from running Spotify, Discord, and OBS. Wild. 
Who knows? In any case, March Madness will continue. Not on the next side, uh, not on the next episode of The Bar with an X, um, but in our hearts. In our hearts, in our phones, on our TV screens and whatnot, and in our b-balls. If y'all are into that kind of stuff, which uh, honestly, I might follow this one because I feel like I am personally vested in this. Which cocktail was my favorite? I would say that my favorite cocktail was, I love the Fuss Fungler and I like the Michigan Dur, but I also kind of like this one that we, that we created here too, together. That was cool. So if I had to pick a favorite, I can't really pick a favorite. The Fuss Fungler was pretty good though, in any case. To everybody out there, no matter where you are, if the sun is shining where you are, may you have a wonderful rest of your morning. If the court is reflecting the sunlight or the light light of the dome that you are playing your basketball in, may you have a wonderful rest of your evening, because I assume the basketball game is happening in the evening over there. No matter where you are, no matter where you live, the bar where the next exists in all of our hearts, from my heart to yours, thank you all for coming along, and I look forward to seeing you all next week when we do something completely different for cocktails. Until then, y'all, b-ball on. Cheers. Bye.